Right now in America this morning, as Christmas celebrations kick off around the world, a record-breaking travel weekend comes to a close. Millions taken to the roads and skies, but not every trip went as expected. How one young child was sent to the wrong city. Weekend violence, shootings at two malls leave one person dead, and holiday shoppers terrified. A suspect in one of the shootings now in custody, while in Florida, an urgent manhunt is underway. What police are saying about the suspect? Kicking off for the holidays, the NFL and NBA gearing up for a Christmas sports spectacular. We've got all the Christmas Eve highlights and a preview of today's games coming up. All of that plus, it's a Merry Christmas for Taylor Swift. The record the superstar now shares with Elvis. And just weeks after signing the biggest contract in sports history, Shohei Otani is putting his money to good use. See how he just surprised a teammate. And from Midnight Mass to Surfing Santas, how people around the world are celebrating on Christmas Day. It's Monday, December 25th. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Hey, Merry Christmas. Welcome. I'm Danny New. It's so good to have you with us. I'm Morgan Norwood. Rhiannon and Andrew are off this morning. And we begin with Christmas celebrations kicking off all around the, all around the globe. Yeah, here in New York City, St. Patrick's Cathedral, very famous spot, was packed with folks coming in for a little midnight mass. And then in Vatican City, thousands were in St. Peter's Basilica as the Pope delivered a message of peace. And NORAD has been tracking Santa as he makes his way around the globe. So far, it seems his ride has been pretty smooth. But with millions traveling, not everybody has been so lucky. ABC's Allison Cossack starts us off. This morning, Spirit Airlines conducting an internal investigation after an unaccompanied minor, a six-year-old boy, was sent to the wrong city. The child was traveling from Philadelphia to Fort Myers, but instead ended up in Orlando after being put on a different flight. The airline saying, as soon as we discovered the error, we took immediate steps to communicate with the family and reconnect them. It comes as the holiday travel rush ahead of the Christmas holiday broke records. Santa not the only one on the move. AAA says more than 115 million people traveled more than 50 miles from their homes. And with an estimated 7.5 million people taking to the skies, this will be one of the busiest air travel seasons ever, and it's come with some complications. Flight Aware says over the weekend across the country, there were more than 500 flight cancellations and more than 9,000 delays. On Friday alone, the TSA screening more than 2.7 million people. The weather for the most part has been cooperating, but there have been some issues. At Chicago's Midway Airport, nearly 40% of flights delayed this weekend due to intense fog. I did not think that I would be sitting in this airport for 14 hours. Southwest also canceling about four dozen flights. I'm missing Christmas. The next direct flight they could get me isn't until Wednesday. Passengers waiting hours for their bags, some choosing to leave the airport without them. Christina Bowes finally getting her suitcase a day late. I literally jumped up and down. Travel has been strong this year, surpassing pre-pandemic levels, despite many Americans saying they're worried about the economy. So far, the TSA has already scheduled 12% more travelers than it had by this time last year, and 1.5% more than in 2019. Danny and Morgan? Thank you, Allison. Well, unfortunately, gun violence made for a deadly Christmas Eve at a Colorado mall. One person is dead and three others injured after a shooting in Colorado Springs. Police say gunshots erupted after two groups got into some sort of fight at the Citadel Mall. This was Sunday afternoon. Multiple people are in custody. Investigators determined that there was no threat to the surrounding community. But the mall was shut down after the shooting and it is ex expected to reopen tomorrow. And meanwhile in Florida, police are still searching for the suspect in a deadly shooting at a mall outside Orlando. Holiday shoppers panicking as that gunfire rang out. Here's ABC's Doreen Shaw. The urgent manhunt for the Florida shooter opening fire in a crowd of holiday shoppers just hours before Christmas Eve. Ocala police searching for this suspect, Albert Shell Jr., wanted for murder and attempted murder after what they say was a targeted shooting at the Paddock Mall. Oh my God. Soraya Williams says she was with her mother at Bath and Body Works when she filmed this video seconds after hearing gunshots. There's no way that just happened. 
Officials say 911 calls began after 3 on Saturday afternoon for multiple shots fired. Video showing shoppers running and barricading in stores. Police swarming the shopping center, recovering a firearm, but the suspect escaping before police arrived. We heard two shots, and everybody just rushed into our store and just like ran straight out through the back. Police say the shooting killed 40 year old David Nathaniel Barrett, another woman surviving after a bullet pierced her leg. Jennifer Murty was wrapping presents at the mall when she heard shots. And I saw the shooter with the gun in his hand. He just fell to the ground. Police now asking for help from witnesses and threatening felony arrest to a person who they allegedly discovered on surveillance taking the suspect's red hat. There was a lot of people here shopping at the mall, which means there's a lot of witnesses that could potentially help us uh, bring this case to a successful resolution. And there's a $5,000 reward for anyone who can lead police to an arrest. As for the mall, it will be closed until after Christmas. Soreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Soreen, thank you. Well, the military says an American warship patrolling the Red Sea shot down four drones headed in its direction on Saturday. According to U.S. Central Command, the USS Laboon was targeted from areas controlled by Iranian-backed Houthi militants in Yemen. The Laboon was responding to attacks on at least two commercial tankers in the Red Sea Saturday. One of those vessels was hit and no injuries were reported. The Pentagon says there have been at least 15 attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea since mid-October. More fallout from the fighting between Israel and Hamas. The U.S. military also says a chemical tanker was struck in a separate incident in the Indian Ocean over the weekend. And officials say that that vessel was attacked by a kamikaze drone launched directly from Iran. And ABC's Liz Landers joins us with more on what is going on in the Middle East. Liz, good morning. Good morning, Danny. With many major airlines suspending flights to Israel, the war between Israel and Hamas has severely impacted tourism to the Middle East region during what would normally be a busy time of the year. It's a different kind of Christmas holiday today for millions around the world and in the Holy Land. I've never saw Bethlehem that sad because, you know, the war in Gaza affected us. That is the message from one shopkeeper in Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, a quiet empty town this holiday in the West Bank as the war between Israel and Gaza rages on. This year, Christmas is canceled. Palestinian security forces patrol holy sites during the Christmas season when tourism usually accounts for 70% of income. Officials say 70 hotels in Bethlehem were forced to close, impacting the local economy. The Latin patriarch of Jerusalem crossing into Bethlehem for what would normally be a time of celebration at the Church of the Nativity, instead urging a ceasefire. It is a very sad Christmas, as we, as we saw. Uh, there is no there is no atmosphere of feast because we are in a war a terrible war and the message of christmas is not violence it's peace prime minister netanyahu addressing israel saying they are deepening the war in gaza meantime president biden speaking with his counterpart over the weekend I had a long talk with netanyahu today and it's a private conversation i did not ask him and in Ukraine, that wartime nation also recognizing the holidays amid a somber backdrop in Kyiv. President Zelensky of Ukraine calling it a Christmas with a different mood, context and different taste. Zelensky also said that during this holiday time, it's not important how homes may be decorated, but instead how Ukrainians are protecting their homes during this two year long Russian invasion. Danny. Liz, thank you. And time now for your Christmas Day weather. And Merry Christmas. And it's a white Christmas in places like Kearney in Nebraska, all the way to Aberdeen, South Dakota. But it comes at a cost of the blizzard, gusty winds, and whiteout conditions. But the winners, when it comes to snow totals, winter in South Dakota seeing 12 to 18 inches. And on top of that, I've got icing all the way from Omaha, Nebraska to Thunder Bay there, seeing slick roads and slippery sidewalks. Remember the sidewalks, Penguin Shuffle, to stop you from falling. Back to you. Well, coming up, we are celebrating the life of the man who was declared the oldest working actor in the country. Also ahead, the family of a 27-year-old woman killed by police is speaking out why they say they're now suing the police department. And we've got two game-winning plays from Christmas Eve football and a preview of today's lineup. 
whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Mrs. Kessenick, that book you're waving about is hardly smart. It is considered by many critics to be the classic novel about the 1960s. It's pornography! No, 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 the Supreme Court says it's not. And its author, Mr. Mann... Is that is Mike Nussbaum in Field of Dreams. The actor died Saturday at the age of 99. He was known for his extensive career on stage as well as in roles in Fatal Attraction and... Men in Black with uh, the cat, Orion. Uh, in 2019, Actors' Equity claimed that he was the oldest working actor in the country. Such memorable roles, and he'll certainly be missed. Well, the Los Angeles Police Department is now facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit after a woman was shot to death by officers who were, who were responding to a call that she made for help. Yeah, her family says that there was no reason to kill her. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, a plea for justice in the death of 27-year-old Niani Finlayson. <laughs> At a vigil over the weekend, friends and relatives mourning her loss after she was shot and killed in a confrontation with Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies earlier this month. Deputies responding to Finlayson's home on a domestic violence call say they encountered her holding a large knife and threatening to stab her ex-boyfriend for pushing her daughter. Police claim they shot Finlayson to stop her from harming the man. Four shots in the back. It's ridiculous. Where are the training for these officers? My heart is so, so broken. I hate it for him, her children. I hate it. It's devastating. Finlayson's family disagreeing with the deputy's account of what happened and filing a $30 million lawsuit against the department and the county. Finlayson's lawyer says she was not a threat and only had the knife to protect her and her daughter from her ex-boyfriend. Officers should be trained that they are not supposed to shoot and kill when they don't know what's, who's there or what the surroundings are. The sheriff's department says the shooting is under investigation. Sometimes you just can't cry enough. It will never bring her back, but justice has to stand. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department says it has not officially received the family's lawsuit claim, but say they will release the body camera footage of the incident next week. Morgan, Danny. Thank you, Derek. Well, Hawaii was rattled by an earthquake described as minor, the 4.1 magnitude quake hit Saturday afternoon. It was centered off the southeast coast on the Big Island. You can see there, but thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. And that is the good news. Well, coming up, we've got the results of Sunday's big games. And speaking of sports, 
the $700 million man, how baseball superstar Shohei Otani used some of his money to surprise a teammate's wife. We have really good news. Oh my God, <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City, getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news, only on ABC News Live. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Back now with Santa's catching a few waves in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Look at that. They took a detour before Sunday night's big journey, making it to the 15th annual Surfing Santa's event. Now, a few hours earlier, more Santas hitting the streets of Madrid, Spain for an annual Red Cross charity run. You got Sprinting Santa, Surfing Santa. Santa can do it all. Got to work off the cookies, right? <laughs> well, there were some big NFL games on Christmas Eve starting down in the 305. The Dolphins and the Cowboys squaring off. But the name to know here is the kicker for the Dolphins, Jason Sanders. He put the team on his back and his quadriceps. That's the game winner right there. He hit five field goals against the Cowboys, including the game winner. With two seconds left, the Dolphins beat Dallas 22 to 20. And the Patriots and the Broncos got off to a little bit of a slow start, but things did finally pick up in the second half. New England scored twice in a six-second span in the third quarter. They had a 23-7 lead, but it was Denver rallying in the fourth, tying the game. But the Patriots, they had the last laugh here. Chad Ryland's 56-yard field goal right at the end. The Patriots went on to win 26 to 23. And look, the holiday sports are just ramping up, Danny. Yeah, we got more football action and, of course, a whole lot on the court. Once the presents have been opened later today, how about one more gift for sports fans? Some of the best matchups of the year. We got five Christmas Day games in the NBA. Two are on ABC, starting with Steph Curry and the Warriors traveling a mile high to take on the defending champs, the Denver Nuggets. The Warriors will likely still be without Draymond Green, who is suspended indefinitely for, you know. Then tonight, the Celtics and Lakers renew their historic rivalry, considered the league's greatest. The game's in L.A., so maybe this Laker fan will make another courtside appearance. And regardless of the outcome, I think we all know how King James is celebrating Christmas afterwards. Tonight, I'm looking forward to drinking a bottle of wine. Meanwhile, in the NFL, we got three games on tap. The Raiders are in Kansas City to take on their AFC West rivals, the Chiefs, starring Mahomes and the world's most famous future Hall of Fame boyfriend. Fans wondering two things. One, will Taylor Swift be there? Sources say yes. And two, will head coach Andy Reid dress as Santa again? Oh, do I hope so. Meanwhile, the Giants head down the New Jersey Turnpike to take on the Eagles, who, despite three straight losses, are favored to win by double digits. Go Boyds! And then tonight on ABC's Monday Night Football, we got a battle of the first-place teams in each conference. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens heading to the Bay Area to face the 49ers. Of course, the Niners got CMC, Christian McCaffrey, who does things like this. 
And this, and who Tom Brady says is his pick to be league MVP. But my pick for sports today, I am watching LeBron, mainly because my dog is named after LeBron, but also because LeBron's a goat. He is good. good my cat today. Pepper will be sleeping through the whole thing. <laughs> of course. All right. Well, Shohei Otani has already endeared himself to at least one of his new Dodger teammates. Baseball's $700 million man had a gift for the wife of L.A. reliever Joe Kelly, and it is a brand new Porsche. It was a thank you from Otani because Ashley Kelly's husband gave up his uniform, number 17, to the new guy. Mrs. Kelly lobbied for Otani to join the team and started a hashtag, OTake17. Her husband will now wear 99. See how it all comes back around for you? That's very kind. I remember when Chris Godwin did that for Tom Brady when he came to Tampa because he wore 12 and then he went to 14 for Brady. So, so it's like paying, okay. Yeah, it's a nice it's thing like to do. Like it's a little nice. gesture. Yeah, like welcome. All right, well, coming up, the new achievement for Taylor Swift, putting her in company with Elvis. Plus, there were more than presents under this tree. I guess nobody asked Santa for a snake for Christmas. What? Ugh. Ooh. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Give it to me. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. I'm Marcus Moore covering the wildfires in Greece. Wherever the story is, we will take you there. You're streaming with ABC News Live. Time now to check the pulse. And we begin with a Merry Christmas for Taylor Swift. Swift's 1989 Taylor's version returned to number one on the Billboard 200. Thus, that marks its 67th week that she's had an album in the top spot, which ties her with Elvis for most weeks by a solo artist, the number one album, but keyword solo artist because the overall top spot belongs to the boys from Liverpool, 132 weeks for the number one album. Congratulations to Taylor. And next, the age-old question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? We've debated this a long time about the 1988 Bruce Willis classic. Of course, it's an amazing action movie, but is it also kind of technically a great Christmas movie? Well, one expert who is a much respected authority on Christmas weighs in. No, no, I want an official red under cover. Now, should you want to get ready by the Lee Rifle? You'll shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs> That is, of course, Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. The actor openly declared Die Hard to be a Christmas film and said he even convinced the film cinematographer. Now we're going to head down under. And a family receiving an unexpected Christmas visitor. Take a look. Snake catcher is called to retrieve a carpet python. No. Found its way underneath no. the tree at one Australian home. No. Ugh, absolutely oh, I'm not. I'm so sorry. That's why you got to shake the tree. That's right. 
It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Back now and checking more top stories. Police in Colorado Springs say a, a mall fight led to gunfire, which left one person dead and three others injured. Multiple people in custody after shots were fired inside the Citadel Mall Monday afternoon. It's expected to reopen tomorrow. The largest migrant group in more than a year, about 6,000 people, is moving through Mexico ahead of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit. He is set to speak with Mexico's president about controlling the surge of people trying to enter the U.S. And in the Middle East, WHO officials say a humanitarian nightmare playing out across Gaza. Meantime, at least 70 people were killed in an Israeli attack on a refugee camp. Prime Minister Netanyahu said his military is intensifying operations. And today's weather, Christmas Day, rain in the northwest, heavy snow in the northern plains, at least a foot expected up there, and then more rain from the Midwest all the way to Florida, Morgan. And finally, Chevy Chase raised the bar for every dad looking to outdo the neighbors with their Christmas lights. But even the great Clark Griswold might finally have competition. Hey, that house looks familiar. How many lights go into your display? 25,000. Uh, just like the movie, everything has to be exact. For the last 11 years, Greg and Rachel Osterland of Wadsworth, Ohio, have erected an increasingly even more accurate recreation of the display from the 1989 classic, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. They've landed their uh, portions of their yard as well. Over the last decade, as the family has roped in neighbors and expanded the production, the house has actually become quite famous. They type in Griswold House. Our house is usually the one that shows up just like Chevy Chase's house. I think we're all in for a very big treat. And in fact, Greg and Rachel have even chatted with the movie stars, Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. We had a lot of fun discussing the house. She pulled it up on Facebook. This is your house? And yep, we're, this is what we do. So the cardboard cut out would not be complete without. But perhaps most impressively, over the last 11 years, they've collected donations and raised more than $50,000 for a nonprofit called Great Strides. It funds research for curing cystic fibrosis, which Greg was diagnosed with at six years old. Haven't felt this good in a long time just because of some of the research that they've done, some medicines that have come out. Joy to the world! But Greg says if they do find a cure for this disease, it's not like his family is ever going to stop bringing this much joy to the world. Then we're going to have to figure out what to raise money for next. My favorite thing about that couple, Greg and Rachel, Rachel had not seen the movie before I'm when they her. met. I hadn't seen it you either, but seen she's it? seen it now, right? M many times, yes. I would say, yes. <laughs> All right, everyone, that is what's making news in America this morning. Have a very Merry Christmas.
Right now in America this morning, as Christmas celebrations kick off around the world, a record-breaking travel weekend comes to a close. Millions taken to the roads and skies, but not every trip went as expected. How one young child was sent to the wrong city. Weekend violence, shootings at two malls leave one person dead and holiday shoppers terrified. A suspect in one of the shootings now in custody while in Florida, an urgent manhunt is underway. What police are saying about the suspect? Kicking off for the holidays, the NFL and NBA gearing up for a Christmas sports spectacular. We've got all the Christmas Eve highlights and a preview of today's games coming up. All of that plus, it's a Merry Christmas for Taylor Swift, the record the superstar now shares with Elvis. And just weeks after signing the biggest contract in sports history, Shohei Otani is putting his money to good use. See how he just surprised a teammate. And from Midnight Mass to Surfing Santas, how people around the world are celebrating on Christmas Day. It's Monday, December 25th. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Hey, Merry Christmas. Welcome. I'm Danny New. It's so good to have you with us. I'm Morgan Norwood. Rhiannon and Andrew are off this morning. And we begin with Christmas celebrations kicking off all around the, all around the globe. Yeah, here in New York City, St. Patrick's Cathedral, very famous spot, was packed with folks coming in for a little midnight mass. And then in Vatican City, thousands were in St. Peter's Basilica as the Pope delivered a message of peace. And NORAD has been tracking Santa as he makes his way around the globe. So far, it seems his ride has been pretty smooth. But with millions traveling, not everybody has been so lucky. ABC's Allison Cossack starts us off. This morning, Spirit Airlines conducting an internal investigation after an unaccompanied minor, a six-year-old boy, was sent to the wrong city. The child was traveling from Philadelphia to Fort Myers, but instead ended up in Orlando after being put on a different flight. The airline saying, as soon as we discovered the error, we took immediate steps to communicate with the family and reconnect them. It comes as the holiday travel rush ahead of the Christmas holiday broke records. Santa not the only one on the move. AAA says more than 115 million people traveled more than 50 miles from their homes. And with an estimated 7.5 million people taking to the skies, this will be one of the busiest air travel seasons ever, and it's come with some complications. Flight Aware says over the weekend across the country, there were more than 500 flight cancellations and more than 9,000 delays. On Friday alone, the TSA screening more than 2.7 million people. The weather for the most part has been cooperating, but there have been some issues. At Chicago's Midway Airport, nearly 40% of flights delayed this weekend due to intense fog. I did not think that I would be sitting in this airport for 14 hours. Southwest also canceling about four dozen flights. I'm missing Christmas. The next direct flight they could get me isn't until Wednesday. Passengers waiting hours for their bags, some choosing to leave the airport without them. Christina Bowes finally getting her suitcase a day late. I literally jumped up and down. Travel has been strong this year, surpassing pre-pandemic levels, despite many Americans saying they're worried about the economy. So far, the TSA has already scheduled 12% more travelers than it had by this time last year, and 1.5% more than in 2019. Danny and Morgan. Thank you, Allison. Well, unfortunately, gun violence made for a deadly Christmas Eve at a Colorado mall. One person is dead and three others injured after a shooting in Colorado Springs. Police say gunshots erupted after two groups got into some sort of fight at the Citadel Mall. This was Sunday afternoon. Multiple people are in custody. Investigators determined that there was no threat to the surrounding community. But the mall was shut down after the shooting and it is ex expected to reopen tomorrow. And meanwhile in Florida, police are still searching for the suspect in a deadly shooting at a mall outside Orlando. Holiday shoppers panicking as that gunfire rang out. Here's ABC's Doreen Shaw. The urgent manhunt for the Florida shooter opening fire in a crowd of holiday shoppers just hours before Christmas Eve. Ocala police searching for this suspect, Albert Shell Jr., wanted for murder and attempted murder after what they say was a targeted shooting at the Paddock Mall. Oh my God! Soraya Williams says she was with her mother at Bath and Body Works when she filmed this video seconds after hearing gunshots. There's no way that just happened. 
Officials say 911 calls began after 3 on Saturday afternoon for multiple shots fired. Video showing shoppers running and barricading in stores. Police swarming the shopping center, recovering a firearm, but the suspect escaping before police arrived. We heard two shots, and everybody just rushed into our store and just like ran straight out through the back. Police say the shooting killed 40 year old David Nathaniel Barrett, another woman surviving after a bullet pierced her leg. Jennifer Murty was wrapping presents at the mall when she heard shots. And I saw the shooter with the gun in his hand. He just fell to the ground. Police now asking for help from witnesses and threatening felony arrest to a person who they allegedly discovered on surveillance taking the suspect's red hat. There was a lot of people here shopping at the mall, which means there's a lot of witnesses that could potentially help us uh, bring this case to a successful resolution. And there is a $5,000 reward for anyone who can lead police to an arrest. As for the mall, it will be closed until after Christmas. Soreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Soreen, thank you. Well, the military says an American warship patrolling the Red Sea shot down four drones headed in its direction on Saturday. According to U.S. Central Command, the USS Laboon was targeted from areas controlled by Iranian-backed Houthi militants in Yemen. The Laboon was responding to attacks on at least two commercial tankers in the Red Sea Saturday. One of those vessels was hit and no injuries were reported. The Pentagon says there have been at least 15 attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea since mid-October. More fallout from the fighting between Israel and Hamas. The U.S. military also says a chemical tanker was struck in a separate incident in the Indian Ocean over the weekend. And officials say that that vessel was attacked by a kamikaze drone launched directly from Iran. ABC's Liz Landers joins us with more on what is going on in the Middle East. Liz, good morning. Good morning, Danny. With many major airlines suspending flights to Israel, the war between Israel and Hamas has severely impacted tourism to the Middle East region during what would normally be a busy time of the year. It's a different kind of Christmas holiday today for millions around the world and in the Holy Land. I've never saw Bethlehem that sad because, you know, the war in Gaza affected us. That is the message from one shopkeeper in Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, a quiet empty town this holiday in the West Bank as the war between Israel and Gaza rages on. This year, Christmas is canceled. Palestinian security forces patrol holy sites during the Christmas season when tourism usually accounts for 70% of income. Officials say 70 hotels in Bethlehem were forced to close, impacting the local economy. The Latin patriarch of Jerusalem crossing into Bethlehem for what would normally be a time of celebration at the Church of the Nativity, instead urging a ceasefire. It is a very sad Christmas, as we, as we saw. Uh, there is no, there is no atmosphere of feast because we are in a war, a terrible war, and the message of Christmas is not violence, it's peace. Prime Minister Netanyahu addressing Israel, saying they are deepening the war in Gaza. Meantime, President Biden speaking with his counterpart over the weekend. I had a long talk with Netanyahu today in this private conversation. I did not ask for peace. And in Ukraine, that wartime nation also recognizing the holidays amid a somber backdrop in Kyiv. President Zelensky of Ukraine calling it a Christmas with a different mood, context and different taste. Zelensky also said that during this holiday time, it's not important how homes may be decorated, but instead how Ukrainians are protecting their homes during this two year long Russian invasion. Danny. Liz, thank you. And time now for your Christmas Day weather. And Merry Christmas. And it's a white Christmas in places like Kearney in Nebraska, all the way to Aberdeen, South Dakota. But it comes at a cost of the blizzard, gusty winds, and wet out conditions. But the winners, when it comes to snow totals, winter in South Dakota seeing 12 to 18 inches. And on top of that, I've got icing all the way from Omaha, Nebraska to Thunder Bay there, seeing slick roads and slippery sidewalks. Remember the sidewalks, Penguin Shuffle, to stop you from falling. Back to you. Well, coming up, we are celebrating the life of the man who was declared the oldest working actor in the country. Also ahead, the family of a 27-year-old woman killed by police is speaking out why they say they're now suing the police department. And we've got two game-winning plays from Christmas Eve football and a preview of today's lineup. 
first thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Reporting from the Capitol, I'm Rachel Scott. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Mrs. Kessenick, that book you're waving about is hardly smart. It is considered by many critics to be the classic novel about the 1960s. It's pornography! No, 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 the Supreme Court says it's not. And its author, Mr. Mann, is that is Mike Nussbaum in Field of Dreams. The actor died Saturday at the age of 99. He was known for his extensive career on stage as well as in roles in Fatal Attraction and Men in Black with uh, the cat Orion. Uh, in 2019, Actors Equity claimed that he was the oldest working actor in the country. Such memorable roles, and he'll certainly be missed. Well, the Los Angeles Police Department is now facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit after a woman was shot to death by officers who were, who were responding to a call that she made for help. Yeah, her family says that there was no reason to kill her. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, a plea for justice in the death of 27-year-old Neani Finlayson. At a vigil over the weekend, friends and relatives mourning her loss after she was shot and killed in a confrontation with Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies earlier this month. Deputies responding to Finlayson's home on a domestic violence call say they encountered her holding a large knife and threatening to stab her ex-boyfriend for pushing her daughter. Police claim they shot Finlayson to stop her from harming the man. Four shots in the back. It's ridiculous. Where are the training for these officers? My heart is so, so broken. I hate it for them, her children. I hate it. It's devastating. Finlayson's family disagreeing with the deputy's account of what happened and filing a $30 million lawsuit against the department and the county. Finlayson's lawyer says she was not a threat and only had the knife to protect her and her daughter from her ex-boyfriend. Officers should be trained that they are not supposed to shoot and kill when they don't know what's who's there or what the surroundings are. The sheriff's department says the shooting is under investigation. Sometimes you just can't cry enough. It will never bring her back. But justice has to stand. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department says it has not officially received the family's lawsuit claim, but say they will release the body camera footage of the incident next week. Morgan, Danny. Thank you, Derek. Well, Hawaii was rattled by an earthquake described as minor. The 4.1 magnitude quake hit Saturday afternoon. It was centered off the southeast coast on the Big Island. You can see there, but thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. And that is the good news. Well, coming up, we've got the results of Sunday's big games. And speaking of sports, 
the $700 million man, how baseball superstar Shohei Otani used some of his money to surprise a teammate's wife. at stake. So much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year and you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for best news program in all of television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, wherever you stream your news, only on ABC News Live. Back now with Santa's catching a few waves in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Look at that. They took a detour before Sunday night's big journey, making it to the 15th annual Surfing Santa's event. Now, a few hours earlier, more Santas hitting the streets of Madrid, Spain for an annual Red Cross charity run. You got sprinting Santa, surfing Santa. Santa can do it all. Got to work off the cookies, right? <laughs> well, there were some big NFL games on Christmas Eve starting down in the 305. The Dolphins and the Cowboys squaring off. But the name to know here is the kicker for the Dolphins, Jason Sanders. He put the team on his back and his quadriceps. That's the game winner right there. He hit five field goals against the Cowboys, including the game winner. With two seconds left, the Dolphins beat Dallas 22 to 20. And the Patriots and the Broncos got off to a little bit of a slow start, but things did finally pick up in the second half. New England scored twice in a six-second span in the third quarter. They had a 23-7 lead, but it was Denver rallying in the fourth, tying the game. But the Patriots, they had the last laugh here. Chad Ryland's 56-yard field goal right at the end. The Patriots went on to win 26 to 23. And look, the holiday sports are just ramping up, Danny. Yeah, we got more football action and, of course, a whole lot on the court. Once the presents have been opened later today, how about one more gift for sports fans? Some of the best matchups of the year. We got five Christmas Day games in the NBA. Two are on ABC, starting with Steph Curry and the Warriors traveling a mile high to take on the defending champs, the Denver Nuggets. The Warriors will likely still be without Draymond Green, who is suspended indefinitely for, you know. Then tonight, the Celtics and Lakers renew their historic rivalry, considered the league's greatest. The game's in L.A., so maybe this Laker fan will make another courtside appearance. And regardless of the outcome, I think we all know how King James is celebrating Christmas afterwards. Tonight, I'm looking forward to drinking a bottle of wine. Meanwhile, in the NFL, we got three games on tap. The Raiders are in Kansas City to take on their AFC West rivals, the Chiefs, starring Mahomes and the world's most famous future Hall of Fame boyfriend. Fans wondering two things. One, will Taylor Swift be there? Sources say yes. And two, will head coach Andy Reid dress as Santa again? Oh, do I hope so. Meanwhile, the Giants head down the New Jersey Turnpike to take on the Eagles, who, despite three straight losses, are favored to win by double digits. Go Boyds! And then tonight on ABC's Monday Night Football, we got a battle of the first-place teams in each conference. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens heading to the Bay Area to face the 49ers. Of course, the Niners got CMC, Christian McCaffrey, who does things like this. 
And this, and who Tom Brady says is his pick to be league MVP. But my pick for sports today, I am watching LeBron, mainly because my dog is named after LeBron, but also because LeBron's a goat. He is good. good my cat today. Pepper will be sleeping through the whole thing. <laughs> of course. All right. Well, Shohei Otani has already endeared himself to at least one of his new Dodger teammates. Baseball's $700 million man had a gift for the wife of L.A. reliever Joe Kelly, and it is a brand new Porsche. It was a thank you from Otani because Ashley Kelly's husband gave up his uniform, number 17, to the new guy. Mrs. Kelly lobbied for Otani to join the team and started a hashtag, OTake17. Her husband will now wear 99. See how it all comes back around for you? That's very kind. I remember when Chris Godwin did that for Tom Brady when he came to Tampa because oh. he wore 12 and then he went to 14 for Brady. So, so it's like paying, okay. Yeah, it's a nice it's thing like to do. Of, like it's a little nice. gesture. I yeah. like that. Welcome. All right, well, coming up, the new achievement for Taylor Swift, putting her in company with Elvis. Plus, there were more than presents under this tree. I guess nobody asked Santa for a snake for Christmas. What? Ugh. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. I'm Lindsay Davis reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time now to check the pulse. And we begin with a Merry Christmas for Taylor Swift. Swift's 1989 Taylor's version returned to number one on the Billboard 200. Thus, that marks its 67th week that she's had an album in the top spot, which ties her with Elvis for most weeks by a solo artist, the number one album, but keyword solo artist, because the overall top spot belongs to the boys from Liverpool, 132 weeks for the number one album. Congratulations to Taylor. And next, the age-old question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? We've debated this a long time about the 1988 Bruce Willis classic. Of course, it's an amazing action movie, but is it also kind of technically a great Christmas movie? Well, one expert who is a much respected authority on Christmas weighs in. No, no, I want an official red under cover and I shoot you on a chair. Why don't you buy the Lego rifle? You'll shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs> That is, of course, Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. The actor openly declared Die Hard to be a Christmas film and said he even convinced the film cinematographer. Now we're going to head down under. And a family receiving an unexpected Christmas visitor. Take a look. Snake catcher is called to retrieve a carpet python. No. It found its way underneath no. the tree at one Australian home. No. Ugh, absolutely oh, I'm not. I'm so sorry. That's why you got to shake the tree. That's right. 
first thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Give it to me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Back now and checking more top stories. Police in Colorado Springs say a, a mall fight led to gunfire, which left one person dead and three others injured. Multiple people in custody after shots were fired inside the Citadel Mall Monday afternoon. It's expected to reopen tomorrow. The largest migrant group in more than a year, about 6,000 people, is moving through Mexico ahead of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit. He is set to speak with Mexico's president about controlling the surge of people trying to enter the U.S. And in the Middle East, WHO officials say a humanitarian nightmare playing out across Gaza. Meantime, at least 70 people were killed in an Israeli attack on a refugee camp. Prime Minister Netanyahu said his military is intensifying operations. And today's weather, Christmas Day, rain in the northwest, heavy snow in the northern plains, at least a foot expected up there, and then more rain from the Midwest all the way to Florida, Morgan. And finally, Chevy Chase raised the bar for every dad looking to outdo the neighbors with their Christmas lights. But even the great Clark Griswold might finally have competition. Hey, that house looks familiar. How many lights go into your display? 25,000. Uh, just like the movie, everything has to be exact. For the last 11 years, Greg and Rachel Osterland of Wadsworth, Ohio, have erected an increasingly even more accurate recreation of the display from the 1989 classic, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. They've landed their uh, portions of their yard as well. Over the last decade, as the family has roped in neighbors and expanded the production, the house has actually become quite famous. They type in Griswold House. Our house is usually the one that shows up just like Chevy Chase's house. I think we're all in for a very big treat. And in fact, Greg and Rachel have even chatted with the movie stars, Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. We had a lot of fun discussing the house. She pulled it up on Facebook. This is your house, and yep, we're, this is what we do. So the cardboard... Cut out would not be complete without. But perhaps most impressively, over the last 11 years, they've collected donations and raised more than $50,000 for a nonprofit called Great Strides. It funds research for curing cystic fibrosis, which Greg was diagnosed with at six years old. Haven't felt this good in a long time just because of some of the research that they've done, some medicines that have come out. Joy to the world! But Greg says if they do find a cure for this disease, it's not like his family is ever going to stop bringing this much joy to the world. Then we're going to have to figure out what to raise money for next. My favorite thing about that couple, Greg and Rachel, Rachel had not seen the movie before I'm when they her. met. I hadn't seen it you either, but seen she's it? seen it now, right? M many times, yes. I would say, yes. <laughs> All right, everyone, that is what's making news in America this morning. Have a very Merry Christmas.
Right now in America this morning, as Christmas celebrations kick off around the world, a record-breaking travel weekend comes to a close. Millions taken to the roads and skies, but not every trip went as expected. How one young child was sent to the wrong city. Weekend violence, shootings at two malls leave one person dead and holiday shoppers terrified. A suspect in one of the shootings now in custody while in Florida, an urgent manhunt is underway. What police are saying about the suspect? Kicking off for the holidays, the NFL and NBA gearing up for a Christmas sports spectacular. We've got all the Christmas Eve highlights and a preview of today's games coming up. All of that plus, it's a Merry Christmas for Taylor Swift, the record the superstar now shares with Elvis. And just weeks after signing the biggest contract in sports history, Shohei Otani is putting his money to good use. See how he just surprised a teammate. And from midnight mass to surfing Santas, how people around the world are celebrating on Christmas Day. It's Monday, December 25th. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Hey, Merry Christmas. Welcome. I'm Danny New. And so good to have you with us. I'm Morgan Norwood. Rhiannon and Andrew are off this morning. And we begin with Christmas celebrations kicking off all around the, all around the globe. Yeah, here in New York City, St. Patrick's Cathedral, very famous spot, was packed with folks coming in for a little midnight mass. And then in Vatican City, thousands were in St. Peter's Basilica as the Pope delivered a message of peace. And NORAD has been tracking Santa as he makes his way around the globe. So far, it seems his ride has been pretty smooth. But with millions traveling, not everybody has been so lucky. ABC's Allison Cossack starts us off. This morning, Spirit Airlines conducting an internal investigation after an unaccompanied minor, a six-year-old boy, was sent to the wrong city. The child was traveling from Philadelphia to Fort Myers, but instead ended up in Orlando after being put on a different flight. The airline saying, as soon as we discovered the error, we took immediate steps to communicate with the family and reconnect them. It comes as the holiday travel rush ahead of the Christmas holiday broke records. Santa not the only one on the move. AAA says more than 115 million people traveled more than 50 miles from their homes. And with an estimated 7.5 million people taking to the skies, this will be one of the busiest air travel seasons ever, and it's come with some complications. Flight Aware says over the weekend across the country, there were more than 500 flight cancellations and more than 9,000 delays. On Friday alone, the TSA screening more than 2.7 million people. The weather for the most part has been cooperating, but there have been some issues. At Chicago's Midway Airport, nearly 40% of flights delayed this weekend due to intense fog. I did not think that I would be sitting in this airport for 14 hours. Southwest also canceling about four dozen flights. I'm missing Christmas. The next direct flight they could get me isn't until Wednesday. Passengers waiting hours for their bags, some choosing to leave the airport without them. Christina Bowes finally getting her suitcase a day late. I literally jumped up and down. Travel has been strong this year, surpassing pre-pandemic levels, despite many Americans saying they're worried about the economy. So far, the TSA has already scheduled 12% more travelers than it had by this time last year, and 1.5% more than in 2019. Danny and Morgan? Thank you, Allison. Well, unfortunately, gun violence made for a deadly Christmas Eve at a Colorado mall. One person is dead and three others injured after a shooting in Colorado Springs. Police say gunshots erupted after two groups got into some sort of fight at the Citadel Mall. This was Sunday afternoon. Multiple people are in custody. and Investigators determined that there was no threat to the surrounding community. But the mall was shut down after the shooting and it is ex expected to reopen tomorrow. And meanwhile, in Florida, police are still searching for the suspect in a deadly shooting at a mall outside Orlando. Holiday shoppers panicking as that gunfire rang out. Here's ABC's Zorin Shaw. The urgent manhunt for the Florida shooter opening fire in a crowd of holiday shoppers just hours before Christmas Eve. Ocala police searching for this suspect, Albert Shell Jr., wanted for murder and attempted murder after what they say was a targeted shooting at the Paddock Mall. Oh my God. Soraya Williams says she was with her mother at Bath and Body Works when she filmed this video seconds after hearing gunshots. There's no way that just happened. 
Officials say 911 calls began after 3 on Saturday afternoon for multiple shots fired. Video showing shoppers running and barricading in stores. Police swarming the shopping center, recovering a firearm, but the suspect escaping before police arrived. We heard two shots, and then everybody just rushed into our store and just like ran straight out through the back. Police say the shooting killed 40 year old David Nathaniel Barron, another woman surviving after a bullet pierced her leg. Jennifer Murty was wrapping presents at the mall when she heard shots. And I saw the shooter with the gun in his hand. He just fell to the ground. Police now asking for help from witnesses and threatening felony arrest to a person who they allegedly discovered on surveillance taking the suspect's red hat. There was a lot of people here shopping at the mall, which means there's a lot of witnesses that could potentially help us uh, bring this case to a successful resolution. There's a $5,000 reward for anyone who can lead police to an arrest. As for the mall, it will be closed until after Christmas. Soreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Soreen, thank you. Well, the military says an American warship patrolling the Red Sea shot down four drones headed in its direction on Saturday. According to U.S. Central Command, the USS Laboon was targeted from areas controlled by Iranian-backed Houthi militants in Yemen. The Laboon was responding to attacks on at least two commercial tankers in the Red Sea Saturday. One of those vessels was hit and no injuries were reported. The Pentagon says there have been at least 15 attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea since mid-October. More fallout from the fighting between Israel and Hamas. The U.S. military also says a chemical tanker was struck in a separate incident in the Indian Ocean over the weekend. And officials say that that vessel was attacked by a kamikaze drone launched directly from Iran. ABC's Liz Landers joins us with more on what is going on in the Middle East. Liz, good morning. Good morning, Danny. With many major airlines suspending flights to Israel, the war between Israel and Hamas has severely impacted tourism to the Middle East region during what would normally be a busy time of the year. It's a different kind of Christmas holiday today for millions around the world and in the Holy Land. I've never saw Bethlehem that sad because, you know, the war in Gaza affected us. That is the message from one shopkeeper in Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, a quiet empty town this holiday in the West Bank as the war between Israel and Gaza rages on. This year, Christmas is canceled. Palestinian security forces patrol holy sites during the Christmas season when tourism usually accounts for 70% of income. Officials say 70 hotels in Bethlehem were forced to close, impacting the local economy. The Latin patriarch of Jerusalem crossing into Bethlehem for what would normally be a time of celebration at the Church of the Nativity, instead urging a ceasefire. It is a very sad Christmas, as we, as we saw. Uh, there is no there is no atmosphere of feast because we are in a war a terrible war and the message of christmas is not violence is peace prime minister netanyahu addressing israel saying they are deepening the war in gaza meantime president biden speaking with his counterpart over the weekend I had a long talk with netanyahu today and it's a private conversation i did not ask him and in Ukraine, that wartime nation also recognizing the holidays amid a somber backdrop in Kyiv. President Zelensky of Ukraine calling it a Christmas with a different mood, context and different taste. Zelensky also said that during this holiday time, it's not important how homes may be decorated, but instead how Ukrainians are protecting their homes during this two year long Russian invasion. Danny. Liz, thank you. In time now for your Christmas Day weather. And Merry Christmas. And it's a white Christmas in places like Kearney and Nebraska, all the way to Aberdeen, South Dakota. But it comes at a cost of the blizzard, gusty winds, and wet out conditions. But the winners, when it comes to snow totals, winter in South Dakota seeing 12 to 18 inches. And on top of that, I've got icing all the way from Omaha, Nebraska to Thunder Bay there, seeing slick roads and slippery sidewalks. Remember the sidewalks, Penguin Shuffle, to stop you from falling. Back to you. Well, coming up, we are celebrating the life of the man who is declared the oldest working actor in the country. Also ahead, the family of a 27-year-old woman killed by police is speaking out why they say they're now suing the police department. And we've got two game-winning plays from Christmas Eve football and a preview of today's lineup. 
whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Mrs. Kessenick, that book you're waving about is hardly smut. It is considered by many critics to be the classic novel about the 1960s. It's pornography! No, 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 the Supreme Court says it's not. And its author, Mr. Mann... Is that is Mike Nussbaum in Field of Dreams. The actor died Saturday at the age of 99. He was known for his extensive career on stage as well as in roles in Fatal Attraction and... Men in Black with uh, the cat, Orion. Uh, in 2019, Actors' Equity claimed that he was the oldest working actor in the country. Such memorable roles, and he'll certainly be missed. Well, the Los Angeles Police Department is now facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit after a woman was shot to death by officers who were, who were responding to a call that she made for help. Yeah, her family says that there was no reason to kill her. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, a plea for justice in the death of 27-year-old Niani Finlayson. <laughs> At a vigil over the weekend, friends and relatives mourning her loss after she was shot and killed in a confrontation with Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies earlier this month. Deputies responding to Finlayson's home on a domestic violence call say they encountered her holding a large knife and threatening to stab her ex-boyfriend for pushing her daughter. Police claim they shot Finlayson to stop her from harming the man. Four shots in the back. It's ridiculous. Where are the training for these officers? My heart is so, so broken. I hate it for them, her children. I hate it. It's devastating. Finlayson's family disagreeing with the deputy's account of what happened and filing a $30 million lawsuit against the department and the county. Finlayson's lawyer says she was not a threat and only had the knife to protect her and her daughter from her ex-boyfriend. Officers should be trained that they are not supposed to shoot and kill when they don't know what's, who's there or what the surroundings are. The sheriff's department says the shooting is under investigation. Sometimes you just can't cry enough. It will never bring her back, but justice has to stand. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department says it has not officially received the family's lawsuit claim, but say they will release the body camera footage of the incident next week. Morgan, Danny. Thank you, Derek. Well, Hawaii was rattled by an earthquake described as minor, the 4.1 magnitude quake hit Saturday afternoon. It was centered off the southeast coast on the Big Island. You can see there, but thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. And that is the good news. Well, coming up, we've got the results of Sunday's big games. And speaking of sports, 
the $700 million man, how baseball superstar Shohei Otani used some of his money to surprise a teammate's wife. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? How <laughs> cute. <laughs> yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Back now with Santa's catching a few waves in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Look at that. They took a detour before Sunday night's big journey, making it to the 15th annual Surfing Santa's event. Now, a few hours earlier, more Santas hitting the streets of Madrid, Spain for an annual Red Cross charity run. You got sprinting Santa, surfing Santa. Santa can do it all. Got to work off the cookies, right? <laughs> well, there were some big NFL games on Christmas Eve starting down in the 305. The Dolphins and the Cowboys squaring off. But the name to know here is the kicker for the Dolphins, Jason Sanders. He put the team on his back and his quadriceps. That's the game winner right there. He hit five field goals against the Cowboys, including the game winner. With two seconds left, the Dolphins beat Dallas 22 to 20. And the Patriots and the Broncos got off to a little bit of a slow start, but things did finally pick up in the second half. New England scored twice in a six-second span in the third quarter. They had a 23-7 lead, but it was Denver rallying in the fourth, tying the game. But the Patriots, they had the last laugh here. Chad Ryland's 56-yard field goal right at the end. The Patriots went on to win 26 to 23. And look, the holiday sports are just ramping up, Danny. Yeah, we got more football action and, of course, a whole lot on the court. Once the presents have been opened later today, how about one more gift for sports fans? Some of the best matchups of the year. We got five Christmas Day games in the NBA. Two are on ABC, starting with Steph Curry and the Warriors traveling a mile high to take on the defending champs, the Denver Nuggets. The Warriors will likely still be without Draymond Green, who is suspended indefinitely for, you know. Then tonight, the Celtics and Lakers renew their historic rivalry, considered the league's greatest. The game's in L.A., so maybe this Laker fan will make another courtside appearance. And regardless of the outcome, I think we all know how King James is celebrating Christmas afterwards. And tonight I'm looking forward to drinking a bottle of wine. Meanwhile, in the NFL, we got three games on tap. The Raiders are in Kansas City to take on their AFC West rivals, the Chiefs, starring Mahomes and the world's most famous future Hall of Fame boyfriend. Fans wondering two things. One, will Taylor Swift be there? Sources say yes. And two, will head coach Andy Reid dress as Santa again? Oh, do I hope so. Meanwhile, the Giants head down the New Jersey Turnpike to take on the Eagles, who, despite three straight losses, are favored to win by double digits. Go Boyds! And then tonight on ABC's Monday Night Football, we got a battle of the first-place teams in each conference. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens heading to the Bay Area to face the 49ers. Of course, the Niners got CMC, Christian McCaffrey, who does things like this. 
and this, and who Tom Brady says is his pick to be league MVP. But my pick for sports today, I am watching LeBron, mainly because my dog is named after LeBron, but also because LeBron's a goat. He is good. good my cat today. Pepper will be sleeping through the whole thing. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Well, Shohei Otani has already endeared himself to at least one of his new Dodger teammates. Baseball's $700 million man had a gift for the wife of L.A. reliever Joe Kelly, and it is a brand new Porsche. It was a thank you from Otani because Ashley Kelly's husband gave up his uniform, number 17, to the new guy. Mrs. Kelly lobbied for Otani to join the team and started a hashtag, OTake17. Her husband will now wear 99. See how it all comes back around for you? That's very kind. I remember when Chris Godwin did that for Tom Brady when he came to Tampa because oh, he wore 12 yeah. and then he went to 14 for Brady. So, so it's like paying, okay. Yeah, it's a nice it's thing like to do. Like it's a little nice. gesture. I yeah, like it. welcome. All right, well, coming up, the new achievement for Taylor Swift, putting her in company with Elvis. Plus, there were more than presents under this tree. I guess nobody asked Santa for a snake for Christmas. What? Ugh. Ooh. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. Reporting from the border of Texas and Mexico, I'm Mireya Villargal. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time now to check the pulse. And we begin with a Merry Christmas for Taylor Swift. Swift's 1989 Taylor's version returned to number one on the Billboard 200. Thus, that marks its 67th week that she's had an album in the top spot, which ties her with Elvis for most weeks by a solo artist for the number one album, but keyword solo artist because the overall top spot belongs to the boys from Liverpool, 132 weeks for the number one album. Congratulations to Taylor. And next, the age-old question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? We've debated this a long time about the 1988 Bruce Willis classic. Of course, it's an amazing action movie, but is it also kind of technically a great Christmas movie? Well, one expert who is a much respected authority on Christmas weighs in. No, no, I want an official red under carbon ice. Do you want to get ready by the lead rifle? You'll shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs> That is, of course, Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. The actor openly declared Die Hard to be a Christmas film and said he even convinced the film's cinematographer. Now we're going to head down under. And a family receiving an unexpected Christmas visitor. Take a look. Snake catcher is called to retrieve a carpet python. No. That found its way underneath no. the tree at one Australian home. No. Ugh, absolutely I'm not. I'm so sorry. That's why you got to shake the tree. That's right. This is ABC News Live. 
the crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Hi, <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, on the brink, now streaming on Hulu. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Back now and checking more top stories. Police in Colorado Springs say a, a mall fight led to gunfire, which left one person dead and three others injured. Multiple people in custody after shots were fired inside the Citadel Mall Monday afternoon. It's expected to reopen tomorrow. The largest migrant group in more than a year, about 6,000 people, is moving through Mexico ahead of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit. He is set to speak with Mexico's president about controlling the surge of people trying to enter the U.S. And in the Middle East, WHO officials say a humanitarian nightmare playing out across Gaza. Meantime, at least 70 people were killed in an Israeli attack on a refugee camp. Prime Minister Netanyahu said his military is intensifying operations. And today's weather, Christmas Day, rain in the northwest, heavy snow in the northern plains, at least a foot expected up there, and then more rain from the Midwest all the way to Florida, Morgan. And finally, Chevy Chase raised the bar for every dad looking to outdo the neighbors with their Christmas lights. But even the great Clark Griswold might finally have competition. Hey, that house looks familiar. How many lights go into your display? 25,000. Uh, just like the movie, everything has to be exact. For the last 11 years, Greg and Rachel Osterland of Wadsworth, Ohio, have erected an increasingly even more accurate recreation of the display from the 1989 classic, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. They've landed their uh, portions of their yard as well. Over the last decade, as the family has roped in neighbors and expanded the production, the house has actually become quite famous. They type in Griswold House. Our house is usually the one that shows up just like Chevy Chase's house. I think we're all in for a very big treat. And in fact, Greg and Rachel have even chatted with the movie stars, Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. We had a lot of fun discussing the house. She pulled it up on Facebook. This is your house? And yeah, we're, this is what we do. So the cardboard cut out would not be complete without. But perhaps most impressively, over the last 11 years, they've collected donations and raised more than $50,000 for a nonprofit called Great Strides. It funds research for curing cystic fibrosis, which Greg was diagnosed with at six years old. Haven't felt this good in a long time just because of some of the research that they've done, some medicines that have come out. Joy to the world! But Greg says if they do find a cure for this disease, it's not like his family is ever going to stop bringing this much joy to the world. Then we're going to have to figure out what to raise money for next. My favorite thing about that couple, Greg and Rachel, Rachel had not seen the movie before I'm when they her. met. I hadn't seen it you either, but seen she's it? seen it now, right? M many times, yes. I would say, yes. <laughs> All right, everyone, that is what's making news in America this morning. Have a very Merry Christmas.
legendary singer Shaka Khan and known to the world for mega hits like Ain't Nobody. And Through the Fire. Was born Yvette Marie Stevens. She grew up in Chicago's Hyde Park neighborhood. Her fond memories recounted in the fan favorite song, Back in the Day. Mama was kids Thanks to her grandmother, Shaka began singing jazz as a child. And by age 20 in 1974, Tell Me Something Good was released. Tell me something good. She was front and center as lead vocalist for R&B funk man Rufus. But her 1978 hit, I'm Every Woman, is what put Chaka on the map as a powerful solo artist. While she continued to perform with Rufus, Chaka's solo career blossomed with hits like I Feel For You, written by Prince himself. Decades later, with more than 20 albums, 10 Grammys, and thousands of songs under her belt, including 2019's Light Sugar, Shaka Khan was finally inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year, receiving the award for musical excellence. God bless you. I got a chance to sit down and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with the queen of funk herself. Oh, the queen has entered the room. What a pleasure, Hi. what a pleasure, what Thank an you. honor. Thank you. So good to meet you. Hello. So good pleasure to meet you. Well. DeMarco, pleasure to meet you. Meet you DeMarco. Have a seat, have a seat. No one deserves this honor more. When I first learned that you were about to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all. I was shocked because I thought it would have happened mm -hmm. 25 years ago. Well, I've been up for like, I don't know, six, seven times. We began with Rufus and myself. This is your night, Chaka. Thank you so yeah, much, my God. Look at that. Thank <laughs> you, I love you. I'm just happy that it's finally just could happen. And now it's for a Musical Excellence yes. Award? Yeah. That's very special. Yes, that's big. And what does that mean, just to be in that category? Well, it means that someone has recognized the fact that I, I, I take great care. I don't play. I don't play cards. I don't play games. I don't play. I wonder, do you play cards? <laughs> I don't believe she plays any games. While accepting her Rock and Roll Hall of Fame award, she acknowledged fellow Rufus band member, Tony Maiden. I love this woman. Who she says nurtured her as an artist and helped propel her journey into superstardom. I used to be called Rufus. Without him, and the band Rufus, I would not be where I am today. I think it all for me. Here is where we talked about some of the younger artists she shared the stage with at the ceremony. One highlight was singing her hit, Sweet Thing, with her. Let me rock it, cause I feel for you. Shaka Khan, won't you tell me what you wanna do? Do you feel for me the way I feel for you? Shaka Khan, let me tell you what I wanna do. I wanna love you, wanna hug you, wanna squeeze you too. Let me take you in my arm, let me feel you with my time, Shaka. Cause you know that I'm the one to keep you warm, Shaka. I make it more than just a physical dream. But let me rock you, Shaka, cause you make it make you wanna scream. And says it was a thrill performing alongside Common for a special rap rendition of I Feel For You. Both her and Common say Shaka has been and still is a significant influence on their work as artists. And then you just celebrated your 70th birthday, by mm -hmm. the way. This year, yeah. And look good. Well, thank you. I know people want to know what's the secret. They ask you all the time. I have a good heart. A good heart. A good heart. It's your heart. It's your heart. What you're about. Hmm. All right, so let's go back. Mm. Let's go back 50 years ago, uh, even if we can go back a little <laughs> further than that. Too far. <laughs> Not too far, right? I don't remember much. <laughs> no, so a south side of Chicago girl. Mm. You grew up there singing, performing. Mm. Uh, I heard you used to compete against the emotions and talent yeah. shows. Mm -hmm. Mom made your clothes. Yeah, she made our dresses. There were four of us. Two girlfriends on the block and my sister and I. We were called the Crystalettes. 
and she took us around to various talent shows in the city. Our biggest competition were the emotions. The emotions. Either they would win or we would win, or they would win, and it was like that. So when did you know that you had this powerful voice, that there was something different about you? Was it someone who spotted you out, or, or did mom say, wait a minute, there's something different about you? Well, my great-grandmother said to me, she was a spiritualist, she said to me, one day, everyone will know your name. I was like, seven or eight. And I hear you often give uh, credit to God for your voice. I absolutely do. It's my gift. It's a gift he gave me. And you've influenced so many people. The list goes on and on. Mary J. Blige, uh, Prince and Whitney Houston, God rest their souls. They have said that you are and were an inspiration. When you think about working with Prince, what was that like as a friend? He's most missed. Him and Whitney, funny name, those two people. Mm -hmm. I could really say they were really good friends of mine. You know, it's hard to cultivate friendships in this business. Mm. This isn't a business that is conducive to that, you know, to having a good friends that you trust. But these two people, somehow we cut through the sound barrier mm -hmm. and the barrier of time and lack thereof and became you know, beloved. You're so real. What keeps you humble? Everybody that I know who's ever interviewed you, who's ever been to a concert, ever came in contact with you, they mm. say she is a real sister. What keeps you grounded? Because I am like everybody else. Fundamentally, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And anybody that doesn't get that is tripping. It's straight tripping. And there are a lot of people that think that they are God. Mm. But that's just craziness. At what point do you think was the turn when you started to become this, this bigger than life, this powerhouse? Was it when you were, you know, with Rufus or, or leaving Rufus? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not that interested in that. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing it because I have to. But I think that's why people love you. That's mm. why they can't get enough of you. Perhaps. That's right. probably right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to do something. I want to uh, uh, name a song mm -hmm. since we're going to go back in, in, in memory lane. And I just want your first thoughts. Okay. Through the fire. Through the fire, through the limit, to the wall. Beautiful song. David Foster. It was an instrumental. Mm -hmm. And it was called Shaka. So he wrote words to it and sent it to me. How could I not do it? He named a song after me. I said, yeah, I'll sing it. <laughs> you gotta do it. Yeah. And it's a lovely song. It's a beautiful song. Do you love what you feel? feel yeah, do you love what you feel? Rufus. It's still in the show. One of my favorites, Sweet Thing. Love me now, I'll go crazy. Oh, oh, sweet Thing. Oh, you know you. Okay, okay. <laughs> Come on, that's my favorite. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> okay. Uh, we call it, you know, we rehearse it and stuff. Let's do Greek thing. Discreet thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Neat thing. <laughs> we joke. Because some of those songs I will be singing for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah, you have to. They're classics. They're classics that so many of us... It's like having, you know, a husband for a really long time. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> All right, I'm Every Woman. This has become an anthem. Valerie Simpson and Nick Ashford wrote the song for me. For a long time, I took that song personally, and I felt very uncomfortable singing it. How dare I say, I'm Every Woman? <laughs> it's not an added thing. I said, it's not about you, Missy. <laughs> I am bragging, cause I'm the one. You just ask me. See, you're saying collectively, we are all, we are every woman. Ain't nobody. That's a great song. That's just a freaking ace in the hole. Uh, uh. Rocking on David, that. When yeah. I said that you start rocking. Hawk Walensky, David Hawk Walensky, 
who was a keyboard player with Rufus, came up with that. Hmm. I wish I'd written that sucker. I felt like I did. <laughs> you know? You he knew yours. me. He, he knew me very well. Mm -hmm. You know? And so he knew just how to, you know, put my voice out there in, uh, what, in a platform, you know, that I would. And I still enjoy singing that song. Tell me something good. Tell me something good. Tell me that you love me. It's a great song. Stevie also channeled me on that one. Is there a gospel song that you go to? I time? love Kim Burrell singing Holy Ghost. <laughs> don't give me stuff. Oh, don't stop. Don't I stop. I have to. Don't stop. <laughs> Child, oh. I have to. Mm. She is a musician's singer. Mm -hmm. She ain't no dope. Mm. I am in awe of her. And to get your blessing, too. Oh. Uh, I don't know about all that, but I'm telling you, she moves me. I love her. I think I'm sitting in church right now, <laughs> and I'm just a little biased because I love me some Shaka Khan. I think we all do. But we've heard so many artists who tried to mimic you, who sampled or tried to cover some of your pieces. Is there one or two in particular that you say, okay, you know what? They got it right. You know, the girl that sang Funk for Jamaica. Mm. I feel it inside my soul. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Again, again. I thought it was me. I was driving my car. I must have been in L.A. I had to pull over. I said, when did I do this? He said, wait a minute. When did I do this? And then as I kept listening, I heard her, Tom Brown, on trumpet. It's amazing. You've released 22 studio albums, 10 of them gold and platinum. Mm -hmm. Your recorded music has produced more than 2,000 catalog song placements. Have we heard the best nope. of Chaka Khan? I still got some. No, I got some. I got some. First quarter next year? You got some for it. Well, we, we're probably going to get back together. <laughs> You're going to talk to me about that. <laughs> oh, no, I'd love to. I'd love to do that. Mm, yeah. So what, what keeps you going? What keeps things fresh Good for you? Good music. Good songs. It is the language of the angels. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that doesn't like some kind of music. Do you? I love all music. I feel the same way you do. I love music, too. <laughs> I need it. as I use it as medicine, mm -hmm. as mood alteration, you know, and for many things, healing. Mm -hmm. I heal with it. I, I heal. When we come back, Shaka shares her take on technology influencing the music industry and discusses her experience with substance abuse. Was it hard to open up about that? At, at no, one point? because I no. I'm a grown ass woman. We'll also find out who she'd choose to play herself in a Shaka Khan biopic. And we'll take a little trip down memory lane to when Shaka took the dance floor by storm. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. The year 2023. High stakes, high emotion, high drama. Now, Wednesday night, it's the year 2023 with Robin Roberts. I'm getting ready to kiss 2023 goodbye. Wednesday night on ABC.
With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there streaming free on abc news live reporting from the capitol i'm terry moran wherever the story is we'll take you there you're streaming with abc news live In 2015, at 62 years old, Shaka appeared on season 21 of ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Lucky audience members got treated to a live performance of the unforgettable hit that launched her solo career. Well, what are you saying to artists? Because I know when I think of, of Shaka Khan and many of us, we know that voice is real. Mm. That voice is real without technology. Yeah, God gave it to me. All of that. Mm. What do you think about those who use technology to enhance? It's <laughs> a free country. <laughs> they do whatever they like. No, I, 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 I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't live with myself. I mean, like, if I pitched, used pitching or some crap like that, mm -hmm. I'd rather sit in that studio all damn day long until I get it right. You know. But it hasn't changed over the years. If anything, it's gotten better. And I don't even know if I can say it's gotten better. It's what, still music? great. You know, your voice. Oh. Your voice. Oh, you think? Yes, yes, ma'am. So it probably does have a dimension to it. That. Yeah, because I had listened to my old stuff. I sound like a bumblebee. <laughs> my vibrato is very fast. You know, and uh, I, I, I'm more high end, in indie. I have, now my, you know, my tone is. Well, you were rocking fuller. in. You were a hit then. Are you hard on yourself? Very. Is that good or bad? I think it's good. I think it's a good thing. I care that much. For the most part, on the surface, Shaka's career has appeared to be charmed and without public struggles. But according to Shaka Khan's memoir, Through the Fire, she says she began experimenting with drugs after reconnecting with her estranged father as a teen. Shaka says that drug and alcohol use escalated to cocaine and heroin while on the road touring with Rufus, and even continued while she grew up as a solo artist. She says it was a pattern of abuse that lasted for years, but also says, fortunately, it was a habit she was eventually able to kick. You had a memoir uh, through the fire, and you've been very open uh, about substance abuse yeah. and all of that stuff. Uh, what, cocaine, heroin, alcohol. What can people take away from that part of your life? Because a lot of times Well, we... here's the deal about that sort of mm -hmm. thing. We are all on a journey, OK? We are all here to experience life. That was part of my life experience. It's as simple as that. I wasn't trying to kill myself. I wasn't trying to hurt myself. I was trying to alter 
some aspect of my thinking or my fields of vision or whatever, it's pretty experimental, mm -hmm. <laughs> purely experimental and fun. And who are we to judge? Exactly. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care what you're doing, as long as it don't spill off on me. You know, that's yours. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I, I, did, I did what everybody does. Mm -hmm. Everybody experiments with something at some point in life. It, it may not be drugs. It could be something far worse than that. People experiment with some stuff that they should not be messing with at all. And they experiment with people. Was it hard to open up about that at, at no, one point? No, because I, because, no. I'm a grown ass woman. No. I love you so much. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you, you keep it real. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your mom a grandmother, mm -hmm. and a great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Go figure. I'm like, first of all, I'm asking myself, when did I have time <laughs> to, <laughs> <laughs> to make two kids, <laughs> you know? Because when my body at work, I look back on it and say, well, what the heck? <laughs> But you look great. You really look good. You don't look like a great girl. And not to say that, you know, I'm, well, I'm I don't feel crapping like on great grandmothers or anything. Well, because like to that. say what, you know, you're supposed to look like or what it's supposed to be happening with you. You've done gospel music, country, RB, <laughs> blues, you name it. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite genre? Do you have one or you just say I don't have like a, I love them all. Just, hey, I'll sing Chinese folk music. Just give me the right way to pronounce it, <laughs> right pronunciation. And you'll do it. Yeah, I did a tribute to Gandhi about last two years ago. Mm. Yeah. And that was challenging. I love those half tones. And I love it. If someone's going to star in the biopic movie of Shaka Khan, who would play that role? Who could you see playing that role? My daughter. Your daughter? She looks just like me, and she can sing her little behind off. She get it She's from my mom. She's a firehouse. She's a firehouse. She's really amazing. And let's talk about uh, your foundation. You get a foundation. You've done so much work. Uh, I do a kids. lot of yeah. I do a lot of work with several foundations. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to start an initiative that starts out with meditation. Cause that's it's vital and it's so beautiful. It's so much fun and it's so easy to have peace and clarity, mm. you know? And so this is something that I want to share. I mean, people my age are only around for a couple of reasons. One of them is to impart wisdom. I could talk to you all day. I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't do that. I, my life would be for nothing. I mean, not for nothing, but it would be less. Mm. Live. So when did you start meditating? Is this something new? I just new? started. You I just started. just started. Wow. I mean, look, Stevie started back in what? In the 70s? Mm -hmm. Transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation. meditation. And he's a very good friend, old friend. And I've wanted to do this for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that it's very important that we heighten our, our thinking process and our, our mental stuff has to come up to a higher level. And directly, what does it do for you? Does it relax you? Do it, you feel more at peace? Yes, all of those things. After I'm finished with all these interviews today, I'm definitely going to do a session. <laughs> You're going to take a little yeah. time to relax, Hell huh? yeah. <laughs> I'll go back and go in. <laughs> and go in. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. I also want to talk about, you have a fragrance out. Yes. Instantly, I was addicted. And you it's know, and that means so much to me. If you love it, I knew I hit that mark. See, I, all my fragrances throughout life have been male. Male fragrances. I didn't, I never like. Yeah, you told me you like men's cologne. Chicky perfumes. I never wow. like. So, so you um, like more spice, more earth. wood, earth, yes. Earth, tobacco, mm -hmm. leather. I want to, yeah. And uh, patchouli, mm -hmm. you know. So. I wore a lot of oils, you know, in this uh, coming up in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, 
So all we did was just, you know, get a combination of the stuff that I was wearing. Because, you know, smell transcends you. Like and music transcends you. Yeah, they music, never forget what you smell like. And smell mm -hmm. are very, very, very strong emotional transmitter. And, and here's the, the, the packaging, which is what I like. Everybody can be a rock star. Look at this. You remember we used to sing in, look, most girls used to sing in brushes, hair brushes. I remember doing that. Over the years. Mm -hmm. Every, or lack thereof. <laughs> no, 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 great fashion. Every single time you hit the stage is something different, yet it's still Shaka Khan. How do you keep reinventing yourself, but yet maintaining? Oh. Cause I, cause my baseline is comfort. <laughs> oh, it's comfortable, yeah. huh? I mean, the tops were just the bras, and we sold some rabbit hair on it. I don't know, you know, it's comfort. What do you want people to remember about you? To gain from listening to your music in 2055, you know, 2085. I have no way of even. I can't guess even. Wow, people remember. I just hope that they remember that I love but my intent is love. Always was love. She's a good old girl. Congratulations, Queen. God I'm bless so you. Proud of you. Thank I love you. you like a sister. I really Thank do. you thank so you, much. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. at stake. So much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner. Oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Reporting from Memphis, I'm Steve Osinsani. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. I loved Snow White. It was so good. I remember going to see Bambi and Fantasia. The Little Mermaid in 1989. I was on a play date and I was never the same. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Tonight, the memories and the magic. 100 years of Disney. He probably, when you think about it, is the most famous name in the world. You would go through those doors at Disneyland, through the gates, and the rest of the world just went away. Generations of people have experienced our stories with friends and family. They're shared experiences. And of course, Disney is the ultimate storyteller. Ah! Stories through the lens of hope and joy and love. Now. The stories behind the stories you've never heard. I didn't know how to dance, so I just faked it. <laughs> I faked it pretty good. What it took to make Walt Disney's dreams come true. Let it go. From movies. Let it go. 
changed the whole movie. The musicals, that completely changed my life. Television. Justin, Brittany, Roy, love me. To theme parks. How did he do that? And experiences around the world. Pirates of the Caribbean. It's the best ride I've ever been on. Disney is for the legacy. It's about what happens years to come. I mean, who's done what he's done? Well, I'm so proud, I think I'll bust. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Let's go. For 100 years, we've been wishing. I wish that my little Pinocchio might be a real boy. I wish they could stay here with us for always. Genie, I wish for you to make me a prince. I wish. So it's no coincidence that this is the movie arriving as Disney celebrates its 100th anniversary. I play Asha in Disney's Wish. So She's grown up to believe that anything is possible and that your dreams can come true. Something that defines all our films in some ways and connects them. You know, there's really no greater power than a person with a true wish in their heart. It drives them. And it's also something that we know involves a lot of hard work. And so this film celebrates that inspiration and also that work. That inspiring work started 100 years ago when a 21-year-old animator named Walt Disney came to Los Angeles from Kansas City with a wish in his heart to become part of the motion picture business. I arrived here in August 1923 with uh, $40 in my pocket and a coat and a pair of trousers that didn't match. And he's going to try to find a job, and he fails. I tried to get a job in Hollywood, working in the picture business so I could learn. There was uh, nothing open. Disney had a lot of setbacks and failures starting out, and so it wasn't like he was this Midas that he would later be described as. I thought the cartoon business was established in such a way that uh, there's no chance to break into it. So Walt takes matters into his own hands, literally. Walt wanted to create something new, something for which he could make a name in the animation business. He produced a short called Alice's Wonderland, taking a real live girl and placing her in an animated world. It was actually Walt appearing in his first cartoon. The Alice comedies are the first large success that Walt has. The 100th anniversary of Disney dates back to the day when Walt, working with his brother Roy Disney, signs a deal to do 12 Alice comedies. Well, the Walt Disney Company officially begins on October 16th, 1923. Walt has modest professional success, and he also finds happiness in his personal life. Lillian Bounds was hired as a secretary to do a whole range of things the little studio. Soon, romance ensued. And they are eventually married. But Walt soon suffers a career setback. These Alice comedies run out of gas. His distributor, they want a new kind of cartoon. So Walt has to create a new character. That first character he creates might not be the one that people are thinking of. It's a rabbit named Oswald. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. This is the Walt Disney Animation Research Library. In our collection, we house over 65 million pieces of artwork. This is a cleanup animation drawing from the first Oswald the Lucky Rabbit short titled Trolley Troubles. He was a 
a very playful, fun character. He could pull his legs off. He could pull his ears off. He could do whatever he needed to do for whatever the story was. Oswald has a fairly successful run. But then he gets snared by a business deal that he'd made. And through some contractual, we'll call it complication, he wasn't able to retain or hold on to the rights to Oswald. He felt that he had created the character and also the personality of Oswald. It was a devastating moment for Walt in his life, something that really shook him to the core. But uh, as we've learned about Walt, Walt was an unbelievably resilient person. When he had a, a pitfall, he rose the occasion because it's not like he didn't expect that in life. He never assumed it would all be easy. And Walt Disney had a very difficult childhood. You know, my grandpa had humble, hum humble beginnings, and he never forgot that. When he was just nine years old, he'd wake up every morning at 3.30 to deliver newspapers. Walt's dad instilled in him the work ethic to not just throw the paper, but go and put it behind the storm door. I mean, he had this incredible sense, this, this it embedded in him, this work ethic. So down but not out, Walt is determined to own outright the next character he creates, a mouse, not a rabbit, of similar stature. I'd always fool around a lot with little mice, uh, and they were always cute characters, and so I, I decided it would be with a mouse. Oh, and then the name came. I had a Mortimer first, and my wife shook her head, and then I tried Mickey, and she said, nodded the other way, and that was it. This is a very important artifact in animation history. This is the earliest known drawing of Mickey Mouse. Walt and the brilliant animator of iWorks worked together to animate Mickey shorts. After months of rejection, Walt makes a deal with a little-known distributor. Mickey Mouse makes his first public appearance at the Colony Theater in New York City in Steamboat Willie. It's the first cartoon ever with synchronized sound. <laughs> now, that early synchronization of music and animation, what a potent and powerful combination that is when animation comes to life brings us worlds we could never have dreamed of it made such a smash hit because of the synchronized sound and also because of the personality of the character in the animation and the timing is right for a character like mickey mouse he comes into public consciousness during the Great Depression. People want escapism. They want positivity. Well, Mickey Mouse is the ultimate optimist. You cannot defeat Mickey Mouse, which is certainly a characteristic that Walt Disney himself had. Walt always said that Mickey Mouse was his alter ego. Walt even did Mickey's voice early on. Pluto, you don't want to get thrown off, do you? Be quiet, I'll let you out. So Walt's Mickey, and Mickey is Walt. You could never have imagined what Mickey Mouse would be. You could never imagine that he would be uh, the most ubiquitous figure in American culture. I am excited to see Mickey. It's always uh, nice to meet a world leader uh, who has bigger ears than me. But. Mickey Mouse is not enough for Walt Disney. It's not enough for him creatively. So he comes up with an idea. There had never been anything like it in the history of animation. Everybody said, Walt, you're crazy. Many in Hollywood laughed at Disney, saying this was the film that was going to bankrupt the Walt Disney studio. They didn't have names for the dwarves. They had one called Big O Ego. <laughs> news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, 
This is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I can see is the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. We hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now, just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Live reporting, breaking new exclusives. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. You're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is Secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Uh -oh. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> Generation Gap. Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. When the 
announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner, all oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. By the mid-1930s, Walt Disney was looking ahead in terms of his artistry and what the studio could do. And so Walt wants to make something that's never been done in American cinema before, the first feature-length animated movie ever made. And he has an idea of what audiences might like. Everybody knew Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was a very popular Grimm's fairy tale. I had the sympathetic dwarfs. I had the prince and the girl, the romance. I just thought it was a perfect story. In 1934, he brings virtually everybody in the studio together, and Walt Disney proceeds to tell the story of Snow White. It goes on for hours. He acts every part. He does all the voices. It's a magic wishing apple. But everybody had been telling Walt that this isn't going to work. Everybody said all those bright colors that they'd seen in the fast-moving uh, shorts were going to hurt your eyes. The late Ward Kimball was an animator who worked on Snow White. Walt was wise enough to know that with Snow White, you couldn't have a gag every five seconds. He wanted realism with Snow White. It had to have believability. But Walt faces a big challenge early on. Of course, our artists at that time were really up to what we were trying to get on Snow White. Back when they were starting to experiment moving human characters, there was a style called rubber hose animation. A very embarrassing attempt at doing human animation. But this brought about change. Walt recognized he needed live action reference models. The model for Snow White was a woman by the name of Marge Belcher. Thanks to Marge's reference, her movement, her sensibilities, the artists were able to transform her into a much more lifelike, believable character. One of the things Walt Disney realized animation could do was that it could really develop individual personalities. This is a departure from the original Grimm's fairy tale, where the seven dwarves were identical and had no names. So they're batting around all sorts of names. Flabby, awful burpy. I'm glad they didn't go with Baldy either. <laughs> Blabby. Scrappy, cranky. Stuffy, flabu. They really settled on dwarfs with characteristics that everybody has. <laughs> this funny face is sneezy. He has hay fever. So Grumpy moves in a grumpy way. When bashful's bashful, he's really bashful. And that's what then makes them alive. The gestures we make, the way we think, the crinkles of our face, you're endeared to them for that. When Walt began Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, it was a small little studio, and he knew everyone by name. But through the course of creating Snow White, the numbers grew, quadrupling in size. And ever the innovator, Walt takes cinematography to new heights with the multi-plane camera. It's an invention created at his studio. Basically, it is a camera with several layers of glass. When the camera travels through it, it feels three-dimensional. And nobody anywhere was trying that sort of experimentation. But as production gets underway, the goal of having Snow White finished by Christmas of 37, it's like a pipe dream. It's running behind schedule, and much of that is due to Walt's relentless pursuit of perfection. At one point, Walt Disney was watching some rough footage, and he said, I don't like the finger on Grumpy. Reanimated. Walt's standards added to the cost. They originally think they can make this movie for $250,000, but the budget is approaching $1.5 million. And they didn't have a million and a half dollars, and they had to go and borrow money. 
We had the family fortune. We had everything wrapped up in Snow White. Many in Hollywood laughed at Disney. Saying, oh, it's not going to work. It's Disney's folly. This was the film that was going to bankrupt the Walt Disney Studio. We take you now to the world premiere of Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This aisle is lined by hundreds and hundreds of people. That shows you the anticipation of Snow White. But there was also anticipation and nerves for Walt Disney himself. We're very happy that all these people are turning out. And I hope they're not too disappointed. You have to imagine yourself sitting there at this fabulous premiere and the first shot of Snow White, thanks to that special camera Walt Disney is using, takes you in. Your mind is blown. You've never seen anything like it. I hope, I hope, it's home to Murphy Go. The night of the premiere, when I saw it, this vast audience of Hollywood producers and moguls laughing at the right places. But the question was, if a drawing can make you laugh, that's fine. But can a drawing make you cry? When Snow White was laying on the funeral bier with the dwarves in tears. I heard people blowing their noses, and they were sitting all around us. And when the prince kisses Snow White, and she revives, and the music swells up. I don't think they were aware that something as simple as an animated cartoon could actually touch them that deeply, but it did. It's a huge, massive success. What was Disney's folly is now Disney's triumph. And it becomes the highest grossing movie of the sound era to that point. The industry is so impressed, Walt Disney is given an honorary Oscar. And seven little Oscars. Isn't it bright and shiny? Well, I'm so proud, I think I'll bust. <laughs> and so the movie industry will never be the same again. And neither will the Walt Disney Company. He went on subsequently to do Pinocchio and Fantasia and Dumbo and all of these great, great animations. All the risks that Walt took, they gave us what we have now. Flounder, hurry up. It's still hard for me to fathom that I'm Ariel. You're, You're not, not getting, getting cold, cold fins, fins now, now, are you? <laughs> Walt's vision is that foundation that we all stand on to create these beloved characters for the audiences. And even today at the company's corporate headquarters, look what's built into the architecture. The dwarves, they're holding up the company. The characters upon whom this empire was built. So just as Walt invented feature-length animation in America, he's about to take another huge gamble, hoping to completely reinvent the amusement park. You would go through those doors at Disneyland, through the gates, and the rest of the world just went away. And yet, nobody believed that Disneyland could be a thing. This theme park, it's a stupid idea. It's not going to succeed. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines from southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news.
It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. You're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. And the magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all, that's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good morning, America. We want you to know every morning. We're right here, and we got gotcha. you. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is Secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Uh -oh. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> 
Generation Gap, Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war for nonstop live coverage. Stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. Disney's been around for 100 years, and every year something new is coming out of the ground, a brand new experience that was totally unexpected. If you go to Avengers Campus in Disney California Adventure, of course you're going to get to meet some of your favorite Avengers. And if you look up, you will see Spider-Man swinging over the campus. Oh yeah! People usually have no idea that there was a robot involved. This is a good friend. We call him Mark II. This is the robot that really informed the final design for what became Spider-Man that's now being thrown 65 feet in the air at Disney California Adventure. We're always looking to the future, and I think that's the way Walt would have wanted it. Mind-blowing, magical attractions with your favorite stories and characters coming to life. They've always been a hallmark of Disneyland. But the initial idea of the park started with a simple dream that Walt had for his daughters. I felt that there should be something built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. As Walt began to conceptualize what he wanted to do with Disneyland, he looked at other amusement parks. During the 1940s, the most American amusement parks were these Coney Island type ventures. Walt would describe them as crowded or cluttered. In 1951, Walt Disney visits Tivoli Garden, which is in Denmark. Walt loves the look of this European amusement park, the landscaping, the beautiful architecture, the bright colors, and how clean it is. Walt sees that and understands that this might be a way to transform how amusements work in the United States. So in 1954, Walt buys 160 acres of orange groves in Anaheim, California. Walt was a man of many obsessions. He was always thinking, how do I make this the best space that I can possibly make it? Walt liked the idea of a single entrance to Disneyland. Here, guests start their visit with a stroll up Main Street to a central hub. And from the hub, you can then decide what land you're going to visit. And this is known as the hub and spoke layout. And since this is a storybook world, Walt taps the best craftsman Hollywood has to offer. A lot of the early designers for Disneyland came from motion pictures creating sets for live action movies. They had designed Victorian main streets and jungles, and they had designed Western forts. And so those people kind of knew what to do right off the bat. They didn't need a lot of training. And one of the last living Imagineers who can talk about the creation of Disneyland is 92-year-old Bob Gurr. I started in 1954, the year before the park opened, with the very first job Walt gave me, which was designing the body for the little Autopia car. I was charged with providing nine Autopia cars for the parade. The opening day of Disneyland was July 17th, 1955. That day, Walt rode into the park on a train, a train that's still operating today at Disneyland. My name is Mark Gonzalez, and I am a steam train engineer for the Walt Disney Company. A uh, little after I got my job here, I read through a biography that I got of Walt Disney and realized that he liked trains. And he would even build them himself. Uh, first in miniature form, he set up in his own backyard. And then, of course, at Disneyland, 
he would get into the cab of his locomotive and just circled the park. And a lot of times, people didn't realize that they were being pulled by Walt Disney to be in the same seat that Walt was in, to operate the same throttle. That's something magical. It's really nice. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Later, during the production of Mary Poppins, Walt toured the park with his leading lady, Julie Andrews. While I was in Hollywood, Walt said, I'd love to show you Disneyland because I'd never been. And to be sitting beside Walt Disney, driving around Disneyland is quite an experience because people went crazy. They tried to touch his sleeve. People kept saying, God bless you, Walt, and uh, thank you, Walt, for all you do, and we love you. But Walt is never satisfied and wants to bring his attractions to new audiences on the East Coast. This is where the early planning is taking place for our so-called uh, Disney World project. And so in the early 60s, he selects Central Florida as home to his next big dream. It was 27,440 acres, twice the size of New York. It was 27,000 acres of swamp. And people all thought we were crazy to do that. But sadly, Walt does not live to see his dream realized. This is Beach Rogers in the KFWB newsroom. We have a bulletin from Burbank, which is going to sadden the entire world. Walt Disney dead at the age of 65 this morning. That was a great sense of loss uh, of a friend, of, um, of a monumental gentleman. His dreams were larger than most people's. Attention is focused on all that land in Florida. After Walt died in 66, it was a big decision for Roy Disney, who was then the chief executive officer of the company, to, to say go. The responsibility is now ours to carry out Walt Disney's imaginative plan. It was wonderful to see it actually open and just see some of the expressions on people's faces. Walt Disney came to Central Florida when it was nothing, and he put in the infrastructure for the largest tourist destination on the planet. And back in Anaheim, Disneyland has expanded to two parks, adding Disney California Adventure in 2001. Walt Disney had a knack for doing the unexpected, and next, his belief in the power of television would launch a whole new chapter for the Walt Disney Company. If you can change someone's life, what else can you ask for? From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. I've been described this way, dry and mighty. <laughs> Let's talk dirty. When you got number two. You do do. Excuse me. <laughs> Sex always end this way. Let me guess, these are things that end with crying? <laughs>
Michael Strahan hosts The $100,000 Pyramid, Wednesdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. National forests are good places to get away, but sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. All I could see was their feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. We were definitely against the clock. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Are you associated in some way with show business? Uh, yes. Are you beloved by millions and millions of children? The answer to that would have to be yes. I think it's Walt Disney. You're right. Walt Disney often made appearances on popular shows like What's My Line? Quick to grasp an understanding of the value and power of television as a way to market himself and his creations. Not only did he understand it, he built the company on television. But what a lot of people may not know is how savvily Walt would use this new medium to help finish building his theme park in the early 50s. And the way he did that was to make a deal with ABC. Disneyland will combine the facilities and creativeness of two great organizations, the Disney Studios and the American Broadcasting Company. Disney said, I will give you television content and you give us the money to finish Disneyland. But Walt sees something else of value in the deal beyond ABC's half a million dollar investment. Not only does he get the money, but he also gets to promote Disneyland through the show that he does. So on July 17th, 1955, Walt hosted a very special television show on ABC that helped open the park and really introduce the finished product. In this timeless land of enchantment, the age of chivalry, magic, and make-believe are reborn and fairy tales come true. Eight weeks of rehearsals, there were gonna be 29 cameras, there was a cast of all stars. Ronnie Reagan, come on in. Yeah, how about that son of yours? I've been buttering up to him all morning. But it was a fiasco. There were technical glitches all over the place. The cameras are in the other direction, Danny. I don't know whether the cameras are picking me up or not. He's looking for a microphone. He looks all confused. And then it's time for ABC to recoup and they're going to do it with groundbreaking Disney-branded children's programming. And some of that content goes on to become enormously influential from a pop culture standpoint. And now your host, Walt Disney. You know you're on television. You don't know about television, do you? Sunday night meant Wonderful World of Color with Walt Disney. The family would gather around the television every Sunday night and watch Walt talk about all of his dreams and his visions. He was a good salesman. He could get you excited about anything. That was part of his charm, I think, his, his infectious enthusiasm about what he was doing. This is the Carousel Theater host. But nothing's more synonymous with Disney television than what comes next. Who's the leader of the club that's made for you and me? M-O-G-K-E-Y, M-O-U-R-C. And every kid in America knew that song, because every kid in America watched that show. The Mickey Mouse Club, it becomes wildly popular. It's a variety show that has song and dance numbers. It also has the stars of the Mickey Mouse Club, young kids speaking directly to the cameras. And now, Mouseketeers, we proudly present Symphony versus Jazz. You wanted to sit with them and sing their songs and essentially experience the same joy that they're experiencing and projecting to an audience. They all wear the little Mouseketeer hats. They all have their names right here. Nancy! Bobby! 
Come on. My mom told me a story once that I was so crazy about the show that she caught me behind the television unscrewing the back of the television. I was thinking that if you got into the back of the TV, you could get into the show. The Mickey Mouse Club of that era had tapped into something that would become a hallmark of Disney television, young people on journeys of friendship, discovery, adventure, and fun. And it really becomes a secret sauce decades later when they launched the Disney Channel, an all-new Mickey Mouse Club. All these giant stars came out of the Mickey Mouse Club. Justin, Carrie, JC, Brittany, Christina, Roy. The one thing that the Mickey Mouse Club didn't lack was talent. You've obviously heard of the Justins and the Britneys. They call me Air Britney. Ryan Gosling, Harry Russell, J.C. Chasse. Christina Aguilera. Who's the leader of the club that's made for you and me? We're in a club. The shows that Disney Channel does after 2000 understand what the club is. The club is school. The whole class got my back on this one right here. I'll do it. I will run for class president. Hi, I'm Christy Carlson Romano, and I am the voice of Kim Possible for Disney Channel. I have never been captured that fast. This is almost as embarrassing as cheerleading practice, Ron. I do remember having chats about what a tween was. What are you talking about? We are tweens. I think that word was kind of a new phenomenon to identify not just children, but more importantly, the female tween demographic. Once again, cheerleading saved my life. That became something that was so vital to the success of this programming block. And the young girls depicted on these programs, they were far from damsels in distress. I was being polite. I happened to handle conflict just fine. These shows depicted strong, confident female characters that didn't need saving. They were stars. They were treated as stars. And that changed everything. When did you realize that you were famous, really famous? It was the day after the show came out, and someone had stopped me and was like, oh my gosh, there's Miley Cyrus, I want an autograph. And that's when life just kind of changed. What if they found out I was Hannah Montana? No one would treat me the same. Disney took all the knowledge that they had, and from 2000 onward, they were on a roll. Does anyone know the chocolate slide? In High School Musical, I really think of as kind of the Disney Channel apotheosis where everything they'd learned about tweens and music and characters comes together for a film that nobody can stop watching. The moment that I knew that High School Musical was going to be something special was when we were in the gymnasium and we were filming We're On This Together. And I said, folks, we're gonna have a monster here. Get ready for your lives to change. And boy, did they. We were like the Taylor Swift of, you know, the moment. With High School Musical, we've been able to reach so many kids. And yet, I just think giving kids hope is an amazing thing to do. I think that's the most gratifying thing about all of it. Honestly, if you can change someone's life, what else can you ask for? What you ask? How about a park and a place that not even Walt Disney would have gambled on? I went on the ride with Orlando, who was in Pirates of the Caribbean, so, you know. That's a level. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We have really good news. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted. 
babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> A big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is Secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. Generation Gap, Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. The sun never sets on a Disney park because we have Disney parks around the world. I have a life bucket list goal to go to every Disney park in all of the world. From Orlando to Tokyo, there are actually 12 Disney parks at six Disney resorts located around the world. So Katie has her work cut out for her. Michael Eisner becomes the CEO of Disney and brings over a whole management team. The new management at Disney is now in the hands of Michael Eisner. Isn't that right, Mickey? Eisner loved the parks. Michael Eisner figured if two million tourists are coming over from Europe to go to the Disney parks in America, why not give them a park in Europe so they don't have to travel that far? We decided between Spain and France, Spain seemed a little less in the center. So Euro Disney or Disneyland Paris opened. My name is Doris Hardoon. I was the executive creative director and the producer. I've worked on all the parks around the world, and whenever you do go to another culture, it's only respectful to understand what bridges over certain story elements that the Disney storytelling has. The castle at Disneyland Paris, Le Chateau de la Belle Bois Dormant, which means basically Sleeping Beauty Castle. The art that you find in the castle at Disneyland Paris really relied on craftspeople from France who make stained glass. So it is really an authentic fantasy castle. As head of Walt Disney International during the early 2000s, Bob Iger oversaw the planning and construction of Hong Kong Disneyland with an eye toward mainland China. By 2016, he was Disney's CEO, cutting the red ribbon to open Shanghai Disneyland and says it's still one of his top achievements. We didn't want to just build Disneyland as it existed in other places in the world and basically just put it right there in the, in the middle of Shanghai. I'm at the grand opening of the Shanghai Disney Resort on the tallest, largest castle Disney has ever built. We were mandated to kind of break the mold it was a magic kingdom, but we were asked to try to really dream up new concepts that actually matches the culture. We wanted to build something that felt like it belonged there. <laughs> and it belonged to the people of China who visited. One of the things I'm most proud of and love so much is using technology to make the experience so much better, so much more immersive. And that's what we did at Shanghai Disneyland. 
with the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. We were terrified to design a new Pirates of the Caribbean ride because Pirates was Walt's attraction. It's the last attraction that Walt worked on personally. This little miniature here is taken first from a sketch. We make these sketches to figure out the types and the characters. Walt was incredibly passionate about Pirates of the Caribbean. In fact, it was envisioned originally as a walkthrough experience. We're working on a full-scale pirate. This will animate when we have it in the show, you know. Happy hearty, yo! Ho! Ho, ho! He was very proud of it at the time, developing more and more animatronics. You see, our whole 40-some-odd years here has been in the world of making things move. How we started that attraction and where it is today has completely evolved. Started first as a ride that Walt created, then it was inspiring a film. <laughs> and then to the pirates that we see today. In Shanghai, we really focused on creating the story around the Pirates of the Caribbean that our guests know and love. <laughs> Katy Perry remembers going to Disneyland Shanghai with her fiance, Orlando Bloom. I went on the ride with Orlando, who was in Pirates of the Caribbean. A craftsman is always pleased to hear his work is appreciated. And as she says, if you want a mind-bending experience, go on this unbelievable ride with a guy who was in the movie. And so, you know, that's a level. It blew my mind, the technology, what comes to life. You must go to fire. I was so blown away. I mean, they really outdid themselves. Disney stories are, they're truly universal. They translate around the world. Creating wonderful memories for people around the world every day, every day. And from memories to music. Speaking as a Disney songwriter, it's the hardest one to write. From Lin-Manuel Miranda to Adina Menzel, how their songs made us love Disney stories even more. All that music, once it's in your head, you'll never get rid of it. But who would want to? That completely changed my life. Those songs slap. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is OK. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Reporting on the flooded streets of Treasure Island, I'm Ginger Z. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. When I think of Disney, one word that comes to mind is magic. Dreams. Wonder. Supercalifragilistic. Asking about my first happy Disney memory is probably the same as asking about my first memory. It's all Disney. All the risks that Walt took, they gave us what we have now. 
And Disney at 100 has a lot that he never dreamed of. Or maybe he did. His dreams were larger than most people's. Like, how are you going to get singing, talking animals to Broadway? And these days, the magic's not just on stage, but exploding everywhere. I left the meeting and I was like, they want me to be the Mandalorian! <laughs> you also have to look at tomorrow and what possibilities exist there. It's opened the whole, whole new world. <laughs> OMG! Almost anywhere you go in the world, you could say to someone, sing me a Disney song. We don't talk about Bruno, no, 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 no. Music is such an emotional storyteller, and what Walt did so beautifully was really set up the power of the musical in storytelling. My all-time favorite Disney song is Under the Sea. Once Upon a Dream from Sleeping Beauty. Chim Chim Cheree. It just makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. That's lucky, too. God, it was a great tune. So easy to move to. 95-year-old Richard Sherman is a bona fide Disney legend. He and his brother Robert were hired as Walt Disney's own staff composers in 1960. But Walt referred to them simply as the boys. Well, just amazing. The piano they played on is still in Walt's original office, preserved exactly as it was on the Disney lot in Burbank. Every major song that Bob and I wrote at the Walt Disney Studios, we demonstrated first on this piano. So there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day. All that music, you just once it's in your head, you'll never get rid of it. The Sherman brothers have written many of the wonderful songs for motion pictures and television shows. But also for the parks, including this unforgettable earworm song. It's a big world, but it's a small world. It's a small world after all. That's it. It's a world of laughter, a world of tears. At any given time on Earth, It's a Small World is playing somewhere thanks to the Disney parks around the world. The secret of the Sherman Brothers is they play with expectations in their melody. They will sing, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Every time they say go down, the interval jumps up. I actually stole that move uh, for a song in Hamilton when King George goes, oceans rise, empires fall. <laughs> That's a straight, Sherman Brothers move. I think that Walt intrinsically used music in a way to help the emotion of the storytelling. Every song drives the story forward, where you're never stopping for a song. That quality of capturing the Disney ethos of the innocence of a child through music and through songs. It's a tradition future Disney storytellers have carried into the films of the animation renaissance period. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? For my character of Ariel, my focus was to make her as real and authentic and as vulnerable as possible. And we do that with our song, Part of Your World. Wish I could be part of that world. When Ariel sings what we now call the I Want song. I want to be where the people are. Ariel tells us what she wants, and then we're on her side to go get it. You want to find that vocabulary, that specificity. What's a fire, and why does it, what's the word, burn? 
in an I Want song, you're really opening up the world of this character and the journey that he or she is going on. Speaking as a Disney songwriter, it's the hardest one to write. I've been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember. When I was writing for Moana, finding the want is really tricky and specific. The conflict for Moana is that she loves where she is. What is that inner voice that is telling her to venture beyond the reef? Be the line where the sky meets the sea, it calls me. And no one knows how far it goes. And for how far I'll go, I actually went to my parents' house and locked myself up in my childhood bedroom. I went to where I was when I was 16 and wanted to get out of where I was. Some Disney songs would not only move a story forward, but would change the story's entire trajectory. Maybe you've heard of a little movie called Frozen. Let It Go changed the whole movie when we heard that song. Elsa was originally written as this very, very conventional nemesis character. And then when Bobby and Kristen wrote Let It Go, there was so much pathos and compassion that it dawned on everybody that she could be so much more of a complex, complicated character. So Bobby had found exactly the right kind of emotion she'd be feeling. She's a perfectionist. She spent her whole life working so hard to live up to her parents' uh, expectations for her. It's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break the loop. It is a song of transformation. We had it written in the outline as Elsa's badass song. Let it go, let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. We have to be willing to take the risk and let people see and hear us. And I think that's really what Let It Go is all about. Never bothered me anyway. I'm a creature of the theater, remember? I think it's a natural progression for a Disney musical to then sort of make its way onto the stage. In 1994, Disney CEO Michael Eisner brings the big screen to Broadway. Going to Broadway started with Beauty and the Beast. giving audiences stories and songs reimagined for the stage. But it was not an immediate hit for some people. The community of Broadway, however, did not like this idea at all. The fear that some big behemoth was gonna come in. People thought, oh, theme park entertainment. And it wasn't theme park entertainment. And now, of course, Disney has become an enormously influential and important force in theater. It's opened the whole whole new world. <laughs> a whole new world. Don't you dare close your mouth. Aladdin is here. Mary Poppins played here. Lion King played here. The animated film The Lion King is charging onto Broadway. Celebrating record-breaking success. Broadway's third longest-running show, now in its 26th year, features music beloved in the film by Le Boheme and Elton John. Certain things like that have happened certain times in my career where one phone call, one decision, one gut feeling has made my life better. And The Lion King, I took my boys to see it, and it was just amazing. And I see it on a taxi cab, The Lion King, I think, oh, God, I'm with that. The moment that the animals start walking through the audience at the beginning is always a, a spine-chilling thing for me, goosebump time. That completely changed my life. It introduced my music to a whole brand of different kids, and it's... Um, it's wonderful to be involved in something like that. It's the circle of and many of these songs are performed in school plays across the country, thanks to a Disney Musicals in Schools program. It's a new generation discovering the music. Come on and whisper what it is you want. You ain't never had a friend like me. Walt was a futurist. He always thought about the good things that are going to happen. And that's the kind of songs we write for him. When I got to first meet Richard Sherman, 
And he went to to undertell me the story, which is now very well known, that Walt would invite them to his office on Friday afternoons. He'd always say, play that for me. Feed the birds. And this was his favorite song. I wept. It was just the most beautiful thing I ever heard. It's about generosity. It's about charity to our fellow man. Feed the birds, toppence a bag, toppence. It was just a beautiful, soulful summary of everything meaningful in what, what artists do. And I think it spoke to Walt. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Say goodbye to the folks. Bye bye. Coming up, the American Idol turned superstar who got her start on a Disney cruise ship. So I was on a Disney Wonder cast seven. I yeah. remember it like yesterday. I remember every step. <laughs> when Disney is in you, it's in you, and it'll never leave. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. We hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know which animal. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Sent a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. I've been described this way, dry and mighty. <laughs> Let's talk dirty. When you got number two. You do do. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Sex always ends this way. Let me guess, these are things that end with crying? <laughs> Michael Strahan hosts The $100,000 Pyramid. Wednesdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. <laughs> We take our guests to places they've never experienced or seen before, and that is timeless. It's classic, and it can be forever. Take the fan favorite Jungle Cruise attraction that opened in 1955 at Disneyland, based on a concept from Walt Disney himself. The Jungle Cruise gave Walt a chance to give the United States a taste of what it would be like to go to these exotic places around the world. Animals that made you feel like you were on a riverboat safari. 
that was the way that most people got to see Africa back then. Walt Disney was an adventurer, an explorer, and a traveler. And that's one reason why, in 1948, Walt produced the first nature documentary with a storyline, Seal Island. The story of Seal Island is going to be a story about how these seals survive and their struggles. On these long journeys, her life is in constant danger from her mortal enemies, the killer whale and the shark. Walt understands that narrative is one of the ways to capture an audience's interest. And here's one who decided to slip away and see the world on his own. He creates characters, and he creates narrative. What's father doing about this? Nothing. Seal Island was the first documentary in a series called True Life Adventures. Which helped inspire people to be able to imagine what else was out there in the world. In all, Walt Disney produced 13 True Life documentaries and shorts, eight won Academy Awards. Walt Disney. And to this day, anytime you turn on television, you're going to find nature movies that probably owe their life to Walt Disney. Over the years, Walt explored the world with his family. And in the summer of 1966, he took them all up north on a cruise off the coast of British Columbia. Treasured memories were made because this turned out to be Walt's last vacation. Walt's daughter, Diane, later reminisced about the experience. It was all my children, my sister and brother-in-law and their little baby. I didn't sense any illness. He seemed good to me. It was one of the most wonderful times. And then later realized it was the last one. The last one. Some 32 years after his passing, in keeping with Walt's love of travel and adventure, the Walt Disney Company decides to get into the cruise business with its first ship, the Disney Mansion. A cruise ship built entirely for families. Disney had, I, I would say, a lot of bravery for going out in this well-established market to offer something that didn't exist. Back in the 80s and 90s, before Disney was on the scene, most cruise ships are marketed towards singles, eager to find Mr. or Ms. Wright. The demand driven by the popular ABC show The Love Boat, with its famous theme song and brimming with before they were superstars. Don't you get a little tired being tied down to just one girl? Families did not want to go because of the image of cruise ships of being one great singles holiday. Gambling was the economic driver of the cruise ship business. They told us if we didn't have gambling, it wouldn't survive. But the Disney magic defies the odds and is an immediate success. We did better than ships that had gambling. We had a lot of kids in teenage areas for the whole family, and we had shows and a big hit. We did it the Disney way. And the Disney way at sea helped launch the career of a future American Idol finalist and Oscar winner for her role in Dreamgirls with the show-stopping number, and I am telling you, I'm not going. I'm you, I'm you, I'm you, just hold it. You started on a Disney cruise ship before mm -hmm. Idol. Yes, I was on a Disney Wonder cast seven. I remember every step, every note. Jennifer Hudson honed her craft as a performer on the Disney Wonder. And the dream girl came back to celebrate the Disney dream. At Kristen V, Disney dream. May God bless this ship and all who sail on her. There are five Disney cruise ships currently traversing sea lanes around the world. The magic and the wonder the dream and the fantasy. The newest addition is the Disney Wish. The Disney Wish is 144,000 gross tons. It's about three football fields long. Or as long as the Eiffel Tower. It is something that is like the building of the pyramids. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's a kit of parts of steel <laughs> that you lift and you hoist onto this foundation of the ship, and then you weld it all together. 
when you have a ship. And the fleet is growing to eight ships. Currently, we're working on the new ship that will port in and out of Singapore. It's called the Disney Adventure. Bringing magic to new guests, just another way for us to tell our stories in new ways. When we come back, how the new stories involve supersizing it with superheroes, creating all kinds of new magical kingdoms. To be a part of something like Black Panther that really changes what is possible with black story in Hollywood has been monumental. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is Secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Uh -oh. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. Generation Gap. Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. You hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. I've got to hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. I'm looking for a great warrior. To infinity and beyond! Almost every transaction that occurs at the company or by the company has its roots in, in some form of storytelling and creativity. Soon after stepping in as CEO in 2005, Bob Iger takes some bold steps to expand the Disney family with some major IP acquisitions. Case in point, striking a deal with CEO Steve Jobs, Disney acquires Pixar in 2006. And the news today was about our parent company, Disney, which announced it has purchased the animation giant Pixar. Oh, oh, pick me, pick me! Everybody <gasps> Pixar always seemed like it was part of the Disney family. Yeah, good job! It took what Disney did so well in the animation space and just took it to a different level. Get up, Sully! <laughs> they reminded us of 
some of the brilliance of Walt Disney from the earliest days. Reach for the sky. And on Disney's watch, Pixar would carry on that tradition with cutting edge computer animation on such fan favorites as Wall-E. <laughs> First Disney animation art film since Fantasia and up. So long, boys. I'll send you a postcard from Paradise Floor. And not only did movies like Toy Story and Finding Nemo do huge numbers at the box office, they also created characters that have now found their home at Disney Hollywood Studios in Orlando. I grew up going to Disneyland, Disney World. I still can't quite believe that the stuff that we do, that I get to help make, is now part of that. It's crazy. Every classic Disney character, Minnie and Donald and Goofy and, and all those princesses, and there also is Woody and Buzz and their dads. And when I saw that once, my daughter said, that she burst out in tears. She said, why are you crying? She says, Dad, you'll be there for the rest yeah. of time. But with Woody and Buzz in the stable, the company soon set its sight on a very different blend of superheroes. When I was first told that Disney was interested in acquiring Marvel, and I really thought it felt like destiny calling. Starting with 2012's Avengers, all the way to next year's Deadpool 3 with Ryan Reynolds, it's been a pretty spectacular acquisition. I got places to be, a face to fix, and oh, bad guys to kill. Marvel was far cry from Disney in terms of storytelling sensibility. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. I'm always angry. Excitement and action and characters that were not just unique, but in so many ways, superheroes. And millions of stories that could be told from thousands of characters. Their priority was to actually stay true to the comic books. And I think there was a little bit of a perfect storm with uh, social media and Comic-Con and a very vocal, excited, geeky audience. Excelsior! With a perfect callback to the comic books, which led to a billion-dollar line. Avengers! Assemble. No! Each of these films live in the same universe, which is pretty wild. To be a part of something like Black Panther that really changes what is possible with black story in Hollywood has been monumental. Yeah, like just being a part of something that is impacting people around the world and making people look at Africa through lens of pride really shifts the mindset, especially for generations to come, of young black boys and girls that look like me. Somehow, Kevin Feige's managed to kind of create really beautiful arcs and, you know, entertaining stakes. It's just the magic of Marvel. And then in 2012, Disney buys Lucasfilm from George Lucas. It's one of the most iconic opening images married to music in all of modern cinema you know immediately what it is. George Lucas and Star Wars created one of the all-time great mythologies of the modern world in Star Wars. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. To have an opportunity to be involved with that great mythology was something that I thought would be wonderful for the company. There hadn't been a Star Wars movie since 2005. <laughs> I really think there's been this opportunity to let the audience know that we're exploring new characters and going to different places. Under Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams takes the helm, directing and co-writing The Force Awakens in 2015, creating a host of new exciting heroes and bringing back all the beloved characters, too. And eventually, a new Star Wars trilogy takes shape. It's like, no, this is the real thing. We're actually doing it. That's Chewbacca, that's Peter Mayhew, that's Anthony Daniels, that's Harrison, Carey, Mark. I think that, for me, made it feel, that's what made it feel very real. When Han Solo appeared on screen, and there was a roar in that room, I've never heard anything like it. There was George's Star Wars, and now this the new generation. And by the way, these are original fans, grown up now, uh, making up their own stories. And then it too, that galaxy far, far away. Ladies and gentlemen, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge 
is now open. Finds its way right into our backyard. So in essence, to take something that has been so beloved for more than four decades, and then to create a world that you can experience and walk through at Walt Disney World and Disneyland is not an easy feat, I would not think. Walt Disney World houses yet another immersive experience born from a blockbuster, Pandora, the world of Avatar. No! Avatar, the original, is still the highest grossing movie of all time with nearly $3 billion globally. And its sequel, Avatar The Way of Water, currently ranks at number three, both with eco-conscious messages about how fragile our planet and its creatures are. Avatar became symbolic of the plight of indigenous people everywhere is the same. They're losing their habitat, they're losing their culture, they're being pushed out of their ancestors' territories. He's holding a mirror up to us and some of the unthinkable things we're doing to our fellow creatures, to the earth, to people. So it's no surprise Pandora's theme park of choice was Disney's Animal Kingdom in Orlando. Animal Kingdom is a celebration of the natural world, of that which is wondrous right here in our world. Now, some people just see the movie and maybe go to Pandora at, at Disney World and just, they just love the experience. But some people are reminded this is something worth fighting for. Next, more to love on the networks. Everything from dancing to deals. You have a deal. You got a deal. <laughs> to drama. We were a show that was unafraid to go there. And later, your exclusive sneak peek inside something somewhere brand new. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. What You Need to Know, a third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? How <laughs> <laughs> cute. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. My very first memory of Disney um, is bittersweet. 
I was 11 years old. I won a contest. I got an all-expense-paid trip to Disneyland uh, with some chaperones and stuff. Um, so what they didn't tell me, though, is that it was just for the day. So we flew all the way to Southern California, got to Disneyland, got in line for the Pirates of the Caribbean, went on the Pirates of the Caribbean, and then went home. Did that hurt? So while the magic of Walt Disney has lived in the hearts of millions for 100 years, the company's 1995 acquisition of media group Cap Cities brought two major television networks into the Disney fold, ESPN and ABC. So, people you trust, shows you love, like who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, final answer. He's won a million dollars! And later, Shark Tank. You have a deal. You've got a deal. When I think of classic game shows, I think about TV dinners and TV trays. It just feels like classic Americana. All under the Disney roof. Fox trots to touchdowns. To late night. Jimmy and they're raising the roof, too. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Pure excitement from ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Touchdown! Alabama wins! I'm not sure it's radiating through the TV enough. This place is electric. Sports hits everybody. Pull up, pull up! Got him! She got him! And that's what we're here to show or tell you about. ESPN with an unparalleled portfolio of major sports rights. It's on the way. No good. He hooked it. What we've been able to do because Disney has put forth the cash to give us those rights is it's hard to even quantify. You bet. All this and the NBA with transcendent stars like LeBron James. Iguodala up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James. LeBron James with the rejection. Some of my favorite moments are speaking with athletes when they've reached the pinnacle. Talking to LeBron James after they won the title in the bubble. And uh, stay well until next right. time, okay? That COVID-safe 2020 bubble at Walt Disney World, a point of Disney Prime. It made possible that season's NBA playoffs on ESPN, where hoops are always in the conversation. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. And since 2006, Monday Night Football, the NFL's crown jewel. With ESPN innovations like the Manning Cast viewing option. I host a TV show from a basement. When I know that ESPN is presenting Monday Night Football, really pretty cool. Chris Berman, host of the landmark franchise NFL Primetime, where Robin Roberts was a rising star. Robin was a delight from the minute she walked in, and she's a delight as we see her on TV now. This is Good Morning America. GMA, the leader in morning television, seven days a week. The View, part of an array of award-winning daytime programming. Meanwhile, ABC found sitcom success by shining a primetime spotlight on contemporary families. Modern Family. Who would like to help me with a magic trick? Well, Fresh off the boat. I want more than okay for us, too. Eight seasons of the incisively funny Blackish. The SVP of our new urban division, Andre Johnson. Oh. Wait, <laughs> did they just put me in charge of black stuff? We were a show that was unafraid to go there. And Quinta Brunson's Abbott Elementary. Where is your class, by the way? Out in the hallway in a single file. Really? Mm-hmm. Abbott Elementary is a gift that just keeps on giving and giving, and I love it. And an Emmy for Cheryl Lee Ralph. <laughs> That people watch the show, then they say, you know what, let me go help this classroom. These ripple effects are amazing. In dramas, there'd be the storytelling pyrotechnics of Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder from creative powerhouse Shonda Rhimes with her Grey's Anatomy soon to embark on a 20th season. So pick me. Choose me. Love me. Grey's Anatomy was and is a cultural phenomena. It's about not diversity, but authenticity. And your characters just reflect what it, we see in America. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the television landscape should look like the world we see outside. From ABC News. Good evening, and welcome to 2020. ABC News, honoring the memory of a true legend, Barbara Walters. Did you ever order anyone killed? 
Bold, straightforward journalism and innovative storytelling day and night from the best team in the business. We have to signal every night that, that we hear everyone. You look in the mirror, do you see the same face? No, I, I see a lucky man. Next, how would Disney, a company closing in on 100 years, reinvent itself in a digital world? Two words, Baby Yoda. This is ABC News Live. The crushing of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner. Oh, Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. <laughs> National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. There's a lot of satisfaction in developing ideas into realities. Walt had a vision when it came to providing entertainment for families that no one had had before at that time. He wanted to essentially improve and, as he used to say, plus up the experience. I wanted something that I could, that could grow, something I could keep plussing with ideas. You know today how everybody says this plus and that plus? Well, Walt, ahead of his time, once again. Walt created a legacy that had the company embrace the opportunity that disruption actually creates. Disney Plus is one of the most recent disruption in terms of the way people are consuming entertainment. Meet them where they are or where they want to go. Good morning, America. Welcome to launch day of Disney Plus. Disney Plus was launched in November of 2019, and it was joining an already crowded streaming field, but maybe had the edge in one way, nearly 100 years of content to offer. Be able to open up an app, and there was Mickey of 1928, and Han Solo of 2015. I love the idea of essentially opening up our library to the world. I'm all off. 
and I like warm hugs. My kids rely on Disney Plus as their go-to experience. Oh my gosh. So you can have the Little Mermaid and then you can have Beauty and the Beast. Well, some, well, some people, people use, use their, their imagination. imagination. What's really cool is that Disney Plus has also brought in a lot of older people. I've had people like said, I waited until I was in my 50s to see that movie. Now I watch it with my grandkids. But there would need to be all kinds of exciting content. That was a big reason why Disney bought 21st Century Fox. We're going to Disney World! Giving Disney Plus access to so many great movies and TV shows, like The Simpsons. Oh, it's so beautiful! And at launch, Disney Plus had two fully original scripted series, a high school musical spinoff starring Olivia Rodrigo. It's a fresh start. Everyone's on the same page. And the other, a Star Wars space western, dreamed up by co-creators Dave Filoni and John Favreau. What I like about this new platform is that there's no expectations about what it is. You can't compare Disney Plus to a movie, and you can't really compare it to a TV show. It's its a, its, its own lane. The pressure was on them to put their Disney Plus original on the map. Pedro Pascal was one of the first to get a call. I drove out to John Favreau's office, and it was just exploding with Star Wars imagery of the best kind, and asked him which one of these creatures or robots would I be. And they had assumed that I understood that they were talking to me about the main role. I left the meeting, and I was like, they want me to be the Mandalorian! I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. It's the first live-action series that Star Wars has ever had, and streaming networks take different kinds of risks. Never tell me the odds. With the big movies, they tend to stand alone. They tend to be big events. On Disney+, Plus. A story was going to be told every week. This is the way. George was so inspired by serialized storytelling, Flash Gordon and those kind of influences. It was fascinating to see how easily Star Wars transitioned into this kind of storytelling. One idea that breaks through, Baby Yoda. Everybody has fallen in love with the child, also known as Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda was everywhere. He was on late night talk shows. The big breakout star of that series is Baby Yoda. Everyone had a stuffed Baby Yoda. I have a stuffed Baby Yoda. Say what? Ooh. <laughs> Marvel would use the creative opportunity of Disney Plus to put its beloved characters into familiar TV show formats. And when Disney Plus came around, you could tell something in a way that we could never tell on, on a movie screen, could never tell in a comic book. With WandaVision, Lizzie Olsen plays Wanda Maximoff. Each episode is a nod to a, a different decade of sitcom, using the tropes of television as a part of the story. I think it's just here under the sea! Stories were as varied as a Pakistani-American superhero in Miss Marvel, a first-ever Marvel series with a Muslim lead character. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world. And She-Hulk gave audiences something they hadn't seen before. There was something so surreal about seeing this giant green Hulk woman walking into a courtroom and really doing like a legal comedy series. Jennifer Walters, attorney at law. Breaking the fourth wall and the Disney Plus menu itself. All right. Then I would like to give my closing argument. So what's next? For the first time ever, the inspired idea that's laying the groundwork for an all-new Disney experience. I want to go inside that casita, don't you? This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. We got really good news. <laughs> Congratulations, you're breaking. 
I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> I you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. The year-long Disney 100 celebration started in January of 2023, and what a celebration it's been. Please, can't we go back to page one and do it all over again? <laughs> I hope I don't have to do it over again. <laughs> Disney cast members and creators know they're standing on the shoulders of the innovators who've come before. Those innovators are being celebrated with the biggest exhibit the Walt Disney Archives has ever produced. This is Disney 100, the exhibition, which is a 15,000 square foot traveling exhibition. Packing and shipping 100 years of history from the Disney vault in California, that is no easy feat. It involves 16 trailers with 44 crates crossing thousands of miles, starting in Philadelphia to Chicago, with more cities to come. The Walt Disney Archives are enormous. We have brought 250 pieces we also have 14 interactives that we've created specifically for this exhibit. Hi, Mountain Tears! We decided we wanted to have Walt host this exhibition, so Mickey comes in and makes Walt appear. Let the show begin! Here's my pal Walt! It's a, a pretty special technological marvel that hasn't been seen before. We keep moving forward. We're always exploring and experimenting. Not surprisingly, one of Walt's first creations also makes a cameo. Well, it started with the rabbit. It started with Oswald. The Oswald story is a story that I love to tell. Over the years, the rights to Oswald ended up in the hands of Universal. In 2006, Bob Iger was our new CEO, and one of the first things he did was to get Oswald back. Nice to meet you, Oswald. Through an interesting negotiation, we had the opportunity to actually get the rights to Oswald in a trade. You can see Oswald on Disney Plus with new animation now, too. And so bringing Oswald back is a way to unify the whole century. What Walt left us was that remarkable legacy of Disney storytelling. And he handed it off to us, the next generation of filmmakers, storytellers, to whatever happens next. For 100 years now, Disney has been creating the unexpected. 
and we're going to continue to do that in some ways that I think are going to completely surprise our guests. Zootopia, for example, is coming to Shanghai. We have new frozen lands in Hong Kong and coming to Paris. Throughout everything that we do, we're going to continue to tell brand new stories. Just look at it, Mama. And one of those new stories is what's next for beloved Princess Tiana, who at the end of 2009's The Princess and the Frog is opening a New Orleans restaurant. And in the parks, she's seen embarking on a new mission. I am so excited to share with you this first look inside Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Our story takes you on a magical journey. Guests are going to join Tiana and her jazz-loving friend, trumpeteer Lewis, on a journey through the bayou. Why, the bayou is the best jazz school in the world. We spent probably close to three years doing research in New Orleans. For us to bring the story to life, the journey was about food, about music, about history, about culture, the foliage. So you really get a taste of what it's like to be in the bayou during Mardi Gras season. Disney also recently released drawings of a possible tropical America's themed land and animal kingdom. It shows a familiar Encanto-like house. I want to go inside that casita, don't you? I don't even know what that would look like, but some genius Disney Imagineer does. Ah, you wish you could have seen more, so see more. Walt Disney taught us to think of the world differently. The company today is still keeping that legacy alive, but they're expanding too. So what he founded 100 years ago, it's going to be around for a long time. That was his secret, that he was still a child inside and saw things through a child's eyes. He's a genius and also a great human being, a kind man on top of everything else. Well, my greatest reward, I think, is that uh, I've been able to build this wonderful organization and uh, also to have the public appreciate and accept what I've done all these years. That, that is a great reward. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the daily news podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year, and you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. 
Reporting from the tarmac of LaGuardia Airport, I'm Trevor Alt. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. At its core, music is about connection, connecting to others, to our future, to our past, and for some, even connecting to a higher power. I'm Phil Lipoff, and this is The Playlist. We are showcasing three amazing acts for you who use their art to uncover something bigger than themselves. A contemporary Christian songwriter with soul to spare. A musical legend who is embarking on a meaningful second act. But first, a trio proving three is certainly not a crowd. Lady A has dominated country music charts for years, and now they're taking fans along for a new creative endeavor, one that's both personal and reflective. Picture perfect memories scattered all around the floor. It's simple, but it's true. Yeah, it's crazy what a song can do. Right out of the gate, Lady A took the music industry by storm. With their 2008 debut album and first number one hit, I Run To You. Since then, the trio has earned 15 top 10 hits on Billboard's Hot Country chart, three platinum albums, and five Grammy Awards, cementing Hillary Scott, Charles Kelly, and Dave Haywood as country music royalty. We sat down with the band to see how they make that magic. We didn't have to wait long. Kicking into those signature harmonies before our interview even began. When you guys got together and started making music, how did the harmony work? Is it a discussion every time you do a song, or do you just slip into it like you just did? I mean, that, that happens a lot, like especially in the that. writing room. <laughs> um, when we're working on something and we've found the chorus, and then it's like once we all land in together in harmony, we're like, okay, we're on to something. That's what we fell in love with, was there's some kind of blend in our voices with, right. mm -hmm. you know, you know, kind of the gritty voice, soulful voice, just kind of all combining. What if I never get over you? Like, the way it just kind of all sounds like a Lady A thing on, the, on a lot of our courses and stuff. But yeah, I mean, we do think about it. For all three members of Lady A, the connection to music began when they were young. I grew up in a musical home, we all did. You know, whether it's siblings that played and started bands together or whether parents played and instilled that, you know, into us. I mean, I, I was into everything when mm. I grew up, but Hootie and the Blowfish was mm. up there for me. That album, top to bottom. Um, Crack, Crack, Crack Review. Review. Yeah, yeah just absolutely. Just unbelievable. Mm. Uh, and I had this video of, of me um, singing and holding my hand when I was like 12 or 13 years old. <laughs> So when Darius, you know, had signed over at the same label, I, I, I sent, it, sent that video to, uh, to our label head, and I said, can you please share this with Darius? Like, I just think he'll think it's hilarious. Before y'all were friends, And now right? we're like best yeah. friends. After more than a decade together, in June of 2020, the band decided to undergo a name change, officially becoming known as Lady A, shedding the former name that referenced the pre-Civil War era. It puts a little sound in an empty space. The power of musical connection is at the core of Lady A. Just last year, they released What a Song Can Do, a tribute to the lyrics that changed their lives. It can make you dance, make you cry, make you want to give one more try. It'll make you give your heart and get it back, change your mind just like that, when it's like every single line was written for you. How many songs have you listened to where you're like, oh my God, they're speaking oh, yeah. directly to me. Ain't it crazy what a song can do? Well, it really sparked that song. Hillary always says it. Uh, she's like, there's songs out there that say how I'm feeling better than I can express it. And I can't think of how many songs do that for me. I kind of want to like just play it while we're here. Sure. Yeah, we'll play it. Let's I mean, do it. Do it. I mean, it's, we it's, have a guitar. Yeah, well, at first, well, it's like a, uh, it was like, I could tell if it was a set piece, but um, so the chorus. Yeah. It can make you dance and make you cry Make you want and give it one more try 
And start a band and kiss that girl and break some rules. Ain't it crazy what a song can do? <laughs> Hillary, Charles, and Dave understand what a song can do. For their fans, this tour is a chance to reach out to the band and request your favorite song. Wanted to kind of get back to our catalog and be like, what do the fans want to hear? Not just the singles, but what deep cuts? Because we always have songs that we call the ones that got away. Our first song we ever wrote called it, um, oh, All, All We Never Need. Just songs like that where you're like, gosh, we haven't played these in a long time. 10 albums and more than 100 songs recorded. Their latest release, Love You Back. You can love a memory, but a memory, I can't love you back. We write about 80% of our music, and but over the years we've learned, you know, when you when you get sent a great song, you don't say no just because you didn't write it. Anytime we get sent a song, same thing with this, this current single, Love You Back, you know, it was a male lead, and I immediately was like, how do we make this a Lady A song? And I was like, gosh, this is, would break your heart even more if you get both perspectives. And we always feel like it's our little secret weapon as a group with multiple leads. Does it affect the way you write? Wanna hold you Love that. So like a song like I Run, I Run To You, for example, our co-writer Tom Douglas was training for the National Marathon and he, he got just this poem that he started writing on one of his runs. I run from hate, I run from prejudice. And so he presented us with these lines that were already there in this poem. But then, you know, we have other songs where I'll come in, we'll have titles in our, like a running note in our phone where you hear something or someone you love says something in a conversation, you see it in a movie. Need You Now, for instance, you know, I had like just this melody. It's a quarter after one, I'm all alone. Da 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 da, -da. And then it was like, Quarter after one, what, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you, you're missing somebody. And then someone yells out, and I need you now. And you're like, oh, that's it. And that was the reaction when Dave, who plays multiple instruments and harmonizes, but usually doesn't take lead vocals, came to Hillary and Charles with an out-of-the-box idea. I had written a song for my wife for Mother's Day. I was trying to think of a unique gift. Um, and this kind of idea poured out, and I was like, well, she loves music, she loves singing too, and I wrote her a song. And then I was like, well, let me just show it to the guys and see if they like it at all. Um, and they were like, yeah, why don't we put it on the record? A beautiful love song called Working On This Love. Get to working on this love we made. He's got a great voice, and it's like, you know, it's, it's fun to finally show the fans, hey, you know, I can, I can carry the lead as well. It was fun to flex a different muscle, for sure. At this point, they know each other so well in the studio that they lean on each other in life as well. Charles, you've talked openly about the last year or so yeah. of, of battling alcoholism. How did these two people in your life help you through that? I say it all the time. I mean, I would like to think I could have overcome it on my own, maybe. But like the immediate support I got from my bandmates, from everybody on my team that works with me in the, in the community, and most importantly, my wife, it, it made the road so much easier for me. And I just feel like I've been given this kind of second chance at life and, I, I, and really purpose, I should say, that, you know, I just, I feel so much gratitude to, towards my bandmates. Now, happy, healthy, and on tour. Playing the hits, of course, taking requests from fans, and one from us as well. All right, here we go. Two, three, four. You can love a memory, but a memory I can't love you back. I love how when you ask them to talk about their harmony, they'd prefer to sing it than describe it. We thank them for being on the playlist. Coming up next, Christian meets contemporary meets pop. Lauren Daigle is pushing the boundaries of what it means to be a Christian singer. And it's earned her a place in the spotlight. The Louisiana native was named Billboard's top Christian artist of 2023 and the top female Christian artist of the year. 
with a nod to the way she works with gratitude and purpose. I sat down with a two-time Grammy winner to talk about writing lyrics with the hope of making human connection and creating a space of love and understanding. Two, three, she Things for these people out here. A quick but meaningful prayer. Tonight. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Moments before Lauren Daigle takes the stage. The audience on this night in Philadelphia, a mix of Christian music lovers and fans who just can't get enough of her voice. You say I love when I can feel a thing. Her 2018 breakout hit, You Say, introduced Lauren to the world. When I am the song rocketing to number one on the Hot Christian Songs chart and staying there for a record-setting 100 weeks. It also became the first Christian song to hit number one on the adult contemporary chart and number five on adult pop songs. You Say was the crux of when I was trying to figure out, do I want to stay in this industry or do I want to go home? Because it was just so polarizingly different. I love different. it how that's a crossroads and it's got a half a billion streams on Spotify. I know. <laughs> Everybody should have such a crossroads. <laughs> I, I hope it happens again. <laughs> You Say So Widely Embraced, Lauren immediately found a larger audience outside of Christian music. Her voice compared by some music critics to Adele's. The hit song and the album it's on, Look Up Child, solidified the contemporary Christian singer as a global star. I hear you say, look up, child. Her dynamic voice and innate ability to write chart toppers. Look up, child, Lauren Diego earned her two Grammys in 2019. I just think it's such a gift. This community of music, I love it so, so much, and I'm just incredibly grateful. All the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, though, a long way from her humble beginnings in Lafayette, Louisiana. My brother used to say, Mom, make her stop screaming. She screams all over the house. But I didn't know, I didn't know what it was. I would lay on the ground there was um, like a radio or whatever, and I'd lay on the ground and just wait. I'd be like, how much longer until one of the, their songs comes on? Her favorites, Celine Dion and Whitney Houston. The best voices yeah. in the business. Oh, so that's, yeah. couldn't get enough. Whitney just, still to this day, I'm like, oh my God, I, is there ever going to be another voice like that? Lauren found her voice in high school, homebound for two years with an immune deficiency that she calls an extreme form of mono. My mom, to like kind of keep me out of depression because I was... Turning a leaf, she was like, would you want to sing? The first time that I realized I had like a voice or anything like that was I was singing at church and it was a tiny church, like 100, 200 people, right? And my, I was scrubbing toilets to, uh, I was somebody's maid in exchange for voice lessons. And right. I remember thinking, I was a little high school student, right. I didn't have any money. And I just thought I will work to get voice lessons. Once she did, Lauren's sights were set on American Idol. Lauren tried out in 2010, then again in 2012. She didn't make it to Hollywood, but not long after that, found herself back up for a male lead singer in a band, auditioning for a record label. And the morning of the showcase, he gets this appendectomy. They asked me to step in and sing lead. So I stepped in and sang lead and then got signed right after that. Her 2015 debut album, How Can It Be, spent six weeks at number one on the Billboard Christian Albums chart and eventually went platinum. The title track, How Can It Be, a hit. Three years later, the 2018 release of her Grammy-winning Look Up Child. You're not threatened by the war, you're not shaken by the storm. Lauren is a prolific writer, surprising us by revealing where she writes so many of her songs. Half of my songs. Really? Oh, a thousand percent. In the bathroom. One thousand percent. Rescue, written in the bathroom. Stop. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great song. Lauren chooses her words carefully, looking to write about what she calls a deep human connection. And if you can, like, tap into what people long for, what people care about, what people desire, yeah, it allows you to see yourself 
in the audience. It allows you to say, oh, you feel that? I feel that too. Oh, you care about this? I care about that too. That ability to connect through her lyrics and live shows landed Lauren an invitation, also in 2018, to sing on The Ellen Show. Please welcome Lauren Daigle. Out of the shadows, for the gallows. A triumphant television performance, but then something she never saw coming. I get this call from my manager and she's like, your phone might be blowing up soon. She's like, yeah, I mean, um, some radio stations are not playing your song or that might be a possibility. And I was like, oh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And then when it became personal is when I was like, wow, this is unbelievably painful. Now that you save me. Backlash from some in the Christian community for singing on a show with an openly gay host. It was the total antithesis of what I was putting out into the world, right? I'm like, oh, I want right. an environment for people to feel accepted and loved and, and feel like finally a place I can let my hair down because people are kind here. And then the opposite was happening. Five years after that painful moment, her latest self-titled release with powerful songs like Thank God I Do. Other songs on the album showcasing her Louisiana influence, like New. I don't see the old you, I just see the new. And Inherited, about loving what is passed down, even the lines on your face. I have tears for the sorrow you lived. I try to love the way you do. Everybody thinks it's me, but I inherited from you. And then this, seven years after disappointment on American Idol, invited back to surprise a contestant singing her Grammy-winning song. It was very real. It was very live. Right. It was very honest. We wrote this song. And it's called Thank God I Do. Real and honest. That's what Lauren says she strives for in life and in her music. Ultimately, she says, it's about that human connection. Like yesterday, I was singing at this event, and all I did was see a dad hold his son like this and just close his eyes. And he just sat there with his eyes closed. I don't know where he's going. I don't know what it is that he's experiencing, but I do know that there's something deep within that says, oh, yeah, me too. And that, that moment, the evolution of the pin to the page to a live setting, it's like, it's one of my favorite things. I love it so much. That's what it's all about, the evolution from the pen to the page right to the fans. Singer-songwriter Lauren, thank you for that. Well, it's a new chapter in a musical journey that has spanned decades, and he's actually a hero of one of the artists you just heard from, Lady A. Coming up, Darius Rucker talks about writing a good song no matter the genre and who he's dedicating his new album to. Everything about it is about me. It's about me growing up. It's about, you know, every song that we mentioned in there is a song that meant a lot to me. And that 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 is one of, that's one of the most I've, I've written a lot of songs and I'm but one of the songs I'm most proud of is so I sang because I've never been as about as honest as I could be right there. If I would speak. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is what would you do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Okay, it's time to start the countdown. Say. So, what will the year 2024 bring? 2024? 2024. Woo, good question. What will Elon Musk be doing in 2024? In 2023, the only thing we could agree on is Taylor Swift. You know what we're going to be able to agree on in 2024? Taylor Swift again. <laughs> <laughs> Counting down to the year 2024 with Robin Roberts. Right before New Year's Rockin' Eve. What do you say we get this party started? Sunday night on ABC. Reporting from the Carter Presidential Library, I'm Faith Abube. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live.
So if Darius Rucker's music career had ended in the 90s after his turn as lead singer of Hootie and the Blowfish, it would have been considered a remarkable success. But his second act as solo country artist for the past 15 years is the stuff of legend. Closing out 2023 with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I met with Rucker to discuss his unique musical journey in his new album, Carolyn's Boy, dedicated to his mom, he tells us, who didn't live long enough to see it all unfold. Well, I ain't gonna work today. Just wanna sit around and play. Country music powerhouse Darius Rucker churning out huge hits like Beers and Sunshine. Yeah, they only be yes, I need is Beers and Sunshine. All right. And for the first time. His cover of Wagon Wheel becoming a smash hit. Streamed more than 600 million times. And only one of four country songs ever to be certified diamond, meaning 10 million units sold. It's an amazing and rare achievement, especially when you hear how his country career began 15 years ago in Nashville. I was told to my face by several people that uh, they didn't think their, their audience would ever accept a black country singer. Ever was the word. Ever. Even my, the guy who uh, signed me was told that if he signed me, he'd be the laughing stock of country music because it's just never going to work. And he took his chance, and we went out, and we did what we did. Just like he did almost two decades before that with his first iconic Grammy-winning band, Hootie and the Blowfish. With Rucker's distinctive voice, the band's debut release, Cracked Rear View in 1994, produced three top ten hits right out of the gate. Hold My Hand. Let Her Cry. Just let her cry. If the tears fall down my like Then, Only Wanna Be With You. I only wanna be with you. All of that, just a few years after his biggest supporter, his mom, died of a heart attack when he was 26. When she died, Hootie and the Bullfish became a mission. It be, you know, I wanted it before. I wanted, you know, I was willing to go play all the clubs and do all the things. But like, when she died, it, be, it was my sole focus was making sure that we got a shot. And when my mom died, that intensified like crazy. After winning two Grammys and playing with Hootie and the Blowfish for more than a decade, Darius turned to Nashville, releasing his debut solo country album in 2008. His first single, Don't Think I Don't Think About It. Don't think I don't think about it. Now, his 2023 album release, simply called Carolyn's Boy, is dedicated to his mom, who truly believed his success would happen but never got to see it. At the end of the day, you're just your mom's boy. You're just your mom's son. What does it mean to be your mom's son? <laughs> it means to be kind, it means to care, it means to work hard. You know, she was just special. She, we didn't have, we grew up with not much, but she was always helping people and always making sure we were, you know, helping people. The new album's lead single, written during the pandemic, over Zoom. The only BS I need is beers yeah. and sunshine. Um, how does something like that happen? Because everybody hears BS all day long, yeah. but they don't think beers and sunshine. Exactly. And I think when we were writing that song, we had been on lockdown for a couple months. It was early in, in the pandemic, and it was just started out being about that. And when we came up with that line, we went around and around about it. And I, I, you know, I actually said, they're not going to play it on the radio. Well, just because it's BS? Because the word BS. Yeah, but... And we, but then we... The, it just worked, and it was just so right. It was exactly what we wanted to say. You know, the only BS I need is beers and sunshine. From a young age, Darius had eclectic music tastes. Growing up in an all-black neighborhood and everything, I, I took a lot of grief, especially for my cousins who, who also lived in the neighborhood. Who would, you know, come over to the house and I'd be singing, you know, Charlie Pride or Charlie Rich or something, or, or singing some Kiss record. And, you know, they'd come in and start, you know, why are you singing that white boy music? Why are you listening to that? My mom would always, I remember one time she grabbed my cousin Frank by the collar and just threw him against the door and told him, you he better <laughs> leave me alone and let me listen to whatever I want to listen to. That's right. And, you know, and, and I always say, if I didn't have her doing that, if she was part of the chorus of you can't do this, I wouldn't be here. 
his biggest defender showering him with unconditional love, leading to this deeply personal song in 2014, So I Sang. No one believed in me as much as mama. See, she worked overtime to buy my first guitar. I had to stop playing that song because yeah. I cried almost every time we right. played it. Everything about it is about me. It's about me growing up. It's about, you know, every song that we mentioned in there is a song that meant a lot to me. And that 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 is one of, that's one of the most, I've, I've written a lot of songs, and I'm, but one of the songs I'm most proud of is So I Sang because I've never been, more, that's about as honest as I could be right there. Pop, country, whatever Darius is writing, he says he writes to connect. That's the genius of, of music. Yeah. Is that we, you can write about something that people do every day, but you do it the right way and with the right words and the right melody, and, you know, people love it because they can relate to it. Like Sarah off Carolyn's Boy. You happened to put Sarah together with Ed Sheeran. Yeah. I'm curious how that came about and what it was like to write with him. We just kept talking about we're going to write someday. And finally, I just said, forget it, and got in a plane and flew to England when he was off. And we started writing. And the first song we wrote, he asked me in the middle of the song, he said, who's your first love? And I told him it was my fifth grade girlfriend. The beginning of that is so beautiful. Sarah, I know it's been about 30 years since I heard from you. I just love that. I mean, 30 years later, does it blow your mind that that's what you do for a living, that that's what you get to do for a living? You have no idea. <laughs> and this is as honest as I can be with you. It's, I've been, Hootie and the Bullfish, we've been playing for 40 years, almost. We've been a band almost 40 years. And ever since I was four, all I wanted to do was sing. And now you can reach out to people. Yeah. Like anybody, get a call from Darius. Yeah, sure, let's go right. Yeah. And then and then it becomes this bigger playground for you. And that's that's a great thing. That's what it is. It's it's a playground that just happens to be my job. And I love it. That love and his tremendous success now helping to pave the way for other black country artists. One of the things I'm most proud of, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my success and it's great and I'm, I hope I could get to play as long as I want until I want to retire. But seeing Kane Brown you know, seeing Mickey Guyton, seeing seeing the Warren Treaties, I'm so proud of that because I know one one of the catalysts was that was when they told me it wouldn't work on my first record. We had three number ones in a, in a top five, and that proved that you're wrong. And one of his favorite moments of the last 40 years validation that loving a band like Kiss as a black child in the South was, as his mom told him, just fine. If that was that was one of the full most circle. full circle moments of my you? life. When Kiss gave us that grant. You got well, grief for listening to Kiss. I got so much grief for listening to Kiss for my family. So much grief. Because I love Kiss. I, you know, I listened to them all the time when I was, it was for a couple of years. And when they gave me that their second Grammy, that was a, such a full circle moment. It was the, unbelievable. The other one was Tupac, right? Tupac. Tupac and, and Kiss. Tupac and Kiss. And Kiss and Makeup for the first time since 79. Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah. It was unbelievable. It's mind It was unbelievable. And yet believable. If you're a fan of his voice, his ability to write hit songs, and you know how his mother made him feel like anything was possible. I grew up in the church in the South, and my spirituality is very important to me. It was just part of our life. Does it make you believe that your mother is seeing all Absolutely. of this? Absolutely. You know that in I your heart. I believe 100%. I really believe in my heart that she's the reason. You know, she got to heaven and she pulled her strings and did the manipulations, and, you know, here we are 30 years later, and I'm still getting to talk to you. You know, that's pretty crazy. That right there is the crossroads of gratitude and extreme talent. That's where Darius Rucker lives. And that's our show. You can watch episodes of the playlist right here on ABC News Live and streaming on Hulu. I'm Phil Lipoff. Until next time, the music never stops. Thanks for watching. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news.
Give it to me. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Legendary singer Shaka Khan, and known to the world for mega hits like Ain't Nobody, and Through the Fire. was born Yvette Marie Stevens. She grew up in Chicago's Hyde Park neighborhood. Her fond memories recounted in the fan favorite song, Back in the Day. Thanks to her grandmother, Shaka began singing jazz as a child. And by age 20 in 1974, Tell Me Something Good was released. Tell me something good. She was front and center as lead vocalist for R&B funk man Rufus. But her 1978 hit, I'm Every Woman, is what put Chuck on the map as a powerful solo artist. While she continued to perform with Rufus, Chaka's solo career blossomed with hits like I Feel For You, written by Prince himself. Decades later, with more than 20 albums, 10 Grammys, and thousands of songs under her belt, including 2019's Light Sugar, Shaka Khan was finally inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year, receiving the award for musical excellence. God bless you. I got a chance to sit down and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with the queen of funk herself. Oh, the queen has entered the room. What a pleasure, <laughs> what a pleasure, what Thank an you. honor. Thank you. So good to meet you. Good. So good to pleasure meet you. DeMarco, well. pleasure to meet you. Yes. Have a seat, have a seat. No one deserves this honor more. When I first learned that you were about to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all. I was shocked because I thought it would have happened 25 years ago. Well, I've been up for like, I don't know, six, seven times. We gave him with Rufus and myself. This is your night, Chaka. Thank you so yeah, much, my God. Look at that. Thank <laughs> you. I love you. I'm just happy that it's finally just could happen. And now it's for a Musical Excellence yes. Award? Yeah. That's very special. Yes, that's big. And what does that mean, just to be in that category? Well, it means that someone is recognized the fact that I, I, I take great care. I don't play. I don't play cards. I don't play games. I don't play. I wonder, do you play cards? <laughs> I don't believe she plays any games. While accepting her Rock and Roll Hall of Fame award, she acknowledged fellow Rufus band member, Tony Maiden. I love this woman. Who she says nurtured her as an artist and helped propel her journey into superstardom. I used to be called Rufus. Without him and the band Rufus, I would not be where I am today. I think you are the one for me. Here is where we talked about some of the younger artists she shared the stage with at the ceremony. One highlight was singing her hit, Sweet Thing, with her. Don't you hear me? Don't you hear Let me rock it, let me rock it, Shaka Khan. 
Let me rock you cause I feel for you Shaka Khan, won't you tell me what you wanna do Do you feel for me the way I feel for you Shaka Khan, let me tell you what I wanna do I wanna love you, wanna hug you, wanna squeeze you too Let me take you in my arm, let me fill you with my time Shaka, cause you know that I'm the one to keep you warm Shaka, I make it more than just a physical dream But let me rock you Shaka, cause you make it make you wanna scream And says it was a thrill Performing alongside Common For a special rap rendition Of I Feel For You Both her and Common say Shaka has been and still is a significant influence on their work as artists. And then you just celebrated your 70th birthday, by mm -hmm. the way. This year, yeah. And look good. Well, thank you. I know people want to know what's the secret. They ask you all the time. I have a good heart. A good heart? A good heart. It's your heart. It's your heart. What you're about. Hmm. All right, so let's go back. Mm. Let's go back 50 years ago, uh, even if we can go back a little <laughs> further than that. Do we go too that. far? <laughs> <laughs> Not too far, right? I don't remember much. <laughs> no, so a south side of Chicago girl. Mm. You grew up there singing, performing. Mm. Uh, I heard you used to compete against the emotions and talent yeah. shows. Mm -hmm. Mom made your clothes. Yeah, she made our dresses. There were four of us. Two girlfriends on the block, and my sister and I. We were called the Crystalettes. And she took us around to various talent shows in the city. Our biggest competition were the emotions. The emotions. Either they would win or we would win, or they would win, it was like that. So when did you know that you had this powerful voice, that there was something different about you? Was it someone who spotted you out, or, or did mom say, wait a minute, there's something different about you? Well, my great-grandmother said to me, she was a spiritualist, she said to me, one day, Everyone will know your name. I was like seven or eight. And I hear you often give uh, credit to God for your voice. I absolutely do. It's my gift. It's a gift he gave me. And you've influenced so many people. The list goes on and on. Mary J. Blige, uh, Prince and Whitney Houston, God rest their souls. They have said that you are and were an inspiration. But when you think about working with Prince, what was that like as a friend? He's most missed. Him and... Whitney, funny name, those two people. Mm -hmm. I could really say they were really good friends of mine. You know, it's hard to cultivate friendships in this business. Mm. This isn't a business that is conducive to that, you know, to having a good friends that you trust. But these two people, somehow we cut through the sound barrier mm -hmm. and the barrier of time and lack thereof and became, you know, beloved. You're so real. What keeps you humble? Everybody that I know who's ever interviewed you, who's ever been to a concert, ever came in contact with you, they mm -hmm. say she is a real sister. What keeps you grounded? Because I am like everybody else. Fundamentally, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And anybody that doesn't get that is tripping, is straight tripping. And there are a lot of people that think that they are God. Mm. But that's just craziness. At what point do you think was the turn when you started to become this, this bigger than life, this powerhouse? Was it when you were you know, with Rufus or, or leaving Rufus? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not that interested in that. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing it because I have to. But I think that's why people love you. That's mm. why they can't get enough of you. Perhaps. That's right. probably right. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to do something. I want to mm -hmm. uh, uh, name a song mm -hmm. since we're going to go back in, in, in memory lane, and I just want your first thoughts. Okay. Through the fire. Beautiful song. David Foster. It was an instrumental. Mm -hmm. And it was called Shaka. So he wrote words to it and sent it to me. How could I not do it? He named a song after me. I said, yeah, I'll sing it. <laughs> you gotta do it. Yeah. And it's a lovely song. It's a beautiful song. Do you love what you feel? Yeah, yeah. do you love what you feel? Rufus. <laughs> it's still in the show. One of my favorites, Sweet Thing. Love me now, I'll go crazy. Oh, oh, sweet Thing. Oh, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> Come on, that's my favorite. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
we call it, you know, we rehearse it and stuff. Let's do Greek thing. Discreet thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Neat thing. <laughs> we joke. Because some of those songs I'll be singing for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah, you have to. They're classics. They're classics that so many of us... It's like having, you know, a husband for a really long time. <laughs> oh. <You know. laughs> All right, I'm Every Woman. This has become an anthem. Valerie Simpson and Nick Ashford wrote the song for me. For a long time, I took that song personally, and I felt very uncomfortable singing it. How dare I say, I'm every woman. It's not an added thing. I said, it's not about you, Missy. <laughs> I ain't bragging, cause I'm the one. You just ask me. See, you're saying collectively, we are all, we are every woman. Ain't nobody. That's a great song. That's just the freaking ace in the hole. <laughs> Rocking on David, that. When yeah. I said that you start rocking. Hawk Wolinski, David Hawk Wolinski, who was a keyboard player with Rufus, came up with that. Hmm. I wish I'd written that sucker. I felt like I did. <laughs> you know? You he knew me. He, he knew me very well. Mm -hmm. You know, and so he knew just how to, you know, put my voice out there in uh, what in the platform, you know, that I would and I still enjoy singing that song. Tell me something good. Great song. Stevie also channeled me on that one. Is there a gospel song that you go to? I time? love Kim Burrell singing Holy Ghost. Stop. Oh, don't stop. Don't I stop. have to. Don't stop. <laughs> Child, oh. I have to. Mm. She is a musician's singer. Mm -hmm. She ain't no dope. Mm. I am in awe of her. And to get your blessing, too. Oh. Uh, I don't know about all that, but I'm telling you, she moves me. I love her. I think I'm sitting in church right now, <laughs> and I'm just a little biased because I love me some Shaka Khan. I think we all do. But we've heard so many artists who try to mimic you, who sampled or tried to cover some of your pieces. Is there one or two in particular that you say, okay, you know what? They got it right. You know, the girl that sang Funk for Jamaica. Mm. I feel it inside my soul. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I thought it was me. I was driving my car. I must have been in L.A. I had to pull over. <laughs> I said, when did I do this? He said, like, wait a minute. When did I do this? And then as I kept listening, I heard her, Tom Brown, on trumpet. It's amazing. You've released 22 studio albums, 10 of them gold and platinum. Mm -hmm. Your recorded music has produced more than 2,000 catalog song placements. Have we heard the best nope. of Chaka Khan? I still got some. No, I got some. I got some. First quarter next year? You got some for it. Well, we, we're probably going to get back together. <laughs> you going to talk to me about that. Oh, no, I'd love to. I'd love to do that. Mm, yeah. So what, what keeps you going? What keeps things fresh Good for you? Good music. Good songs. It is the language of the angels. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that doesn't like some kind of music. Do you? I love all music. I feel the same way you do. I love music, too. <laughs> I need it. as I use it as medicine, mm -hmm. as mood alteration, you know, and for many things, healing. Mm. I heal with it. I, I heal. When we come back, Shaka shares her take on technology influencing the music industry and discusses her experience with substance abuse. Was it hard to open up about that at, at no, one point? No, because I, no. I'm a grown-ass woman. We'll also find out who she'd choose to play herself in a Shaka Khan biopic. And we'll take a little trip down memory lane to when Shaka took the dance floor by storm.
I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. All I could see was their feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. We were definitely against the clock. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. The year 2023. High stakes, high emotion, high drama. Now, Wednesday night. <gasps> Amazing. The absolute wildest year. We're breaking it all down. Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Barbie. Can you get all that in there? And the stories that make you go, huh. You kidding? Can we say that on ABC? <laughs> Deal with it. It's the year 2023 with Robin Roberts. Getting ready to kiss 2023 goodbye. Wednesday night on ABC. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner, oh, Crooks 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. More Americans choose ABC News, America's number one news source. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News live. I just want to say. In 2015, at 62 years old, Shock appeared on season 21 of ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Lucky audience members got treated to a live performance of the unforgettable hit that launched her solo career. What do you say to artists? Because I know when I think of, of Shaka Khan and many of us, we know that voice is real. Mm. That voice is real without technology. Yeah, God gave it to me. All of that. Mm. What do you think about those who use technology to enhance? It's a free country. <laughs> <laughs> they do whatever they like. No, I, 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 I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't live with myself. I mean, like, if I pitched, used pitching or some crap like that, mm -hmm. I'd rather sit in that studio all damn day long until I get it right. 
you know. But it hasn't changed over the years. If anything, it's gotten better. And I don't even know if I can say it's gotten better. It's what, still music? great. You know, your voice. Oh. Your voice. Oh, you think? Yes, yes, ma'am. It probably does have a dimension to it. That. Yeah, because I had listened to my old stuff. I sound like a bumblebee. My vibrato is very fast. You know, and uh, I, I, I'm more high end in in the. I have, now my you know my tone is. Well, you were rocking fuller. in. You were a hit then. Are you hard on yourself? Very. Is that good or bad? I think it's good. I think it's a good thing. I care that much. For the most part, on the surface, Shaka's career has appeared to be charmed and without public struggles. But according to Shaka Khan's memoir, Through the Fire, she says she began experimenting with drugs after reconnecting with her estranged father as a teen. Shaka says that drug and alcohol use escalated to cocaine and heroin while on the road touring with Rufus, and even continued while she grew up as a solo artist. She says it was a pattern of abuse that lasted for years, but also says, fortunately, it was a habit she was eventually able to kick. You had a memoir, uh, Through the Fire, and you've been very open uh, about substance abuse yeah. and all of that stuff. Uh, what, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, what can people take away from that part of your life? Because a lot of times Well, we... here's the deal about that sort of mm -hmm. thing. We are all on a journey, okay? We are all here to experience life. That was part of my life experience. It's as simple as that. I wasn't trying to kill myself. I wasn't trying to hurt myself. I was trying to alter some aspect of my thinking or my fields of vision or whatever. It's pretty experimental, mm -hmm. <laughs> purely experimental and fun. And who are we to judge? Exactly. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care what you're doing, as long as it don't spill off on me. You know, that's yours. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I, I, did, I did what everybody does. Mm -hmm. Everybody experiments with something at some point in life. It, it may not be drugs. It could be something far worse than that. People experiment with some stuff that they should not be messing with at all. And they experiment with people. Was it hard to open up about that at, at no, one point? No, because I, because, no. I'm a grown ass woman. No. I love you so much. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you keep it real. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your mom, a grandmother, mm -hmm. and a great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Go figure. I'm like, first of all, I'm asking myself, when did I have time to, <laughs> <laughs> to make two kids? <laughs> yeah? Because when my body work, I look back on it and say, well, what the heck? <laughs> But you look great. You really look good. You don't look like a great girl. And not to say that, you know, I'm, well, I'm I don't feel crapping like on great grandmothers or anything. Well, like who's that. to say what, you know, you're supposed to look like or what it's supposed to be happening with you? You've done gospel music, country, RB, <laughs> blues, you name it. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite genre? Do you have one or you just sing? I don't have it. I love them all. Just, hey, I'll sing Chinese folk music. Just give me the right way to pronounce it, <laughs> right pronunciation. And you'll do it. Yeah, I did a tribute to Gandhi about last two years ago. Mm. Yeah. And that was challenging. I love those half tones. And I love it. If someone's going to star in the biopic movie of Shaka Khan, who would play that role? Who could you see playing that role? My daughter. Your daughter? She looks just like me, and she can sing her little behind off. She get it She's from a my mom. house. She's a fire house. She's really amazing. And let's talk about uh, your foundation. You get a foundation. You've done so much work. Uh, I for do kids. a lot of yeah. I do a lot of work with several foundations. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to start an initiative that starts out with meditation. That's 
it's vital. And it's so beautiful. It's so much fun. And it's so easy to have peace and clarity. Mm. You know? And so this is something that I want to share. I mean, people my age are only around for a couple of reasons. One of them is to impart wisdom. I could talk to you all day. I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't do that. And my life would be for nothing. I mean, not for nothing, but it would be less. Mm. Live. So when did you start meditating? Is this something new? I just new? started. You I just started. just started. Wow. I mean, look, Stevie started back in what? In the 70s? Mm -hmm. Transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation. meditation. And he's a very good friend, an old friend. And I've wanted to do this for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that it's very important that we heighten our, our thinking process and our, our mental stuff has to come up to a higher level. And directly, what does it do for you? Does it relax you? Do it, you feel more at peace? Is yes, all of those things. After I'm finished with all these interviews today, I'm definitely going to do a session. <laughs> I'm you got to take a little time to relax, Hell huh? yeah. <laughs> I'll go back and go in. <laughs> and go in. Yes. I love that. Mm. I also want to talk about, you have a fragrance out. Yes. Instantly, I was addicted. And it's you know, and that means so much to me. If you love it, I knew I hit that mark. See, I, all my fragrances throughout life have been male. Male fragrances. I didn't, I never like, yeah, you told me you like chicky, mint chicky perfumes. I never wow. like. So, so you uh, like more spice, more earth. wood, earth, yes. Earth, tobacco, mm -hmm. uh, leather. I want to, you know, and uh, patchouli, mm -hmm. you know. So I wore a lot of oils, you know, in this uh, coming up in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, so all we did was just... You know, get a combination of the stuff that I was wearing. Because, you know, smell transcends you. Like and music transcends you. People never forget you. it. Yeah, they music, never forget what you smell like. and smell mm -hmm. are very, very, very strong emotional transmitters. And, and here's the, the, the packaging, which is what I like. Everybody can be a rock star. Look at this. You remember we used to sing in, look, most girls used to sing in brushes, hair brushes. I remember doing that. Over the years. Mm -hmm. Every, or lack thereof. <laughs> no, 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 great fashion. Every single time you hit the stage is something different, yet it's still Shaka Khan. How do you keep reinventing yourself, but yet maintaining? Oh, because I, because my baseline is comfort. <laughs> oh, it's comfortable, yeah. huh? I mean, the tops were just the bras, and we sold some rabbit hair on it. I don't know. You know, it's comfort. What do you want people to remember about you, to gain from listening to your music in 2055, you know, 2085? I have no way of even, I can't guess even how people remember. I just hope that they remember that I love but my intent is love. Always was love. She's a good old girl. Congratulations, Queen. God I'm bless so you. Proud of you. Thank I love you. you like a sister. I really thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>
Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's time for GMA Life. Tis the season for finding cash with a holiday edition of Show Me the Money. Get ready to shop this store and save. Lori's got the perfect holiday shopping ideas, all from Crate and Barrel. Trading screens for stories. Charlie and Kate Gibson with their new initiative to get kids reading. Then, one of the biggest surprises in morning TV history, as we give a big round of applause for an extraordinary team of healthcare heroes. Hello, and welcome to GMA Life. I'm Ashton Singh. And I'm Lori Bergamato. Right now, we're backstage in the GMA Green Room. Coming up on GMA Life, I'm giving you my top picks from Crate and Barrel. Plus, Charlie and Kate Gibson have tips for getting your kids reading. And we're honoring the healthcare heroes of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. So important. But first, time for Show Me the Money, Holiday Edition. Yes. Helping people find their lost cash, DeMarco Morgan played Santa for some Chicago Christmas shoppers. Take a look. Nothing captures the magic of the season quite like Chicago's Chris Kendall Market. More than 50 vendors from all around the world are spreading that warm holiday cheer. Hot chocolate, please. And while it is the season of giving, these shoppers are also hoping it could be the season of receiving. Our festive Show Me the Money booth, manned by Santa's helpers from the Illinois State Treasurer's Office, looking up names to see if anyone has any unclaimed money hidden in their stockings. And if you find money, you get the idea. This woman ringing in 42 bucks, money she's already putting to good use. We bought some chocolates that were paid for on behalf of the state treasury. Thank you. Show me the money! (laughs) This couple rejoicing after learning they too have some amount of missing money owed to them from an employer. Well, you know what? God is good all the time, And all the time. Turned out to be 26 bucks. And this woman flying away with a sleigh full of cash. Four twenty-five, twenty-four. High five, mama! Wow! Wow! That's gonna help. That money from an old savings account she thought she closed. So how can this happen? Let's ask Illinois State Treasurer Michael Frerix. People may have multiple accounts at a bank, and they call to close them all, but the bank only closes one of them. Sometimes there's a mistake. But there's no mistake about the Santa size surprise waiting for the local Salvation Army. Denisha Paluska. Yes. Is that your name? That is my I'm name. I'm DeMarco from Good Morning America. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Why do you do what you do? Love people. Love God, love people. And when we see a need, we just want to meet it. And you know that when you give back, it comes back to you. Oh, yes. Well, look at this check right here. So this is 63000 $786.17, and it's for all of the Salvation Army of Greater Chicago oh chapters. Oh, my goodness. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Bravo, Thank right? You. Happy yes. holidays. The Treasury says most of that money, donations that for some reason never made it to the Salvation Army. Now, some of that 63000 going directly to her Chicago Community Center. Words can't express how grateful we are. This is going to make a tremendous difference. We see families who just don't even have simple, basic things. So this is this is tremendous. So thank you. <laughs> now, the cool thing about this, you can search for money for friends, family members, even loved ones who have passed away. All you have to do is go to missingmoney.com, and it's free. If somebody asks for a fee or a percentage, Run and run fast. Thank you, DeMarco. And now to Will Gans. He's visiting the most Christmassy town in the United States. 
Welcome to Christmas Town. We are so excited to be here from the Alpine Coaster winding its way through the mountains to the largest Nutcracker Museum in the world. We came to see why 3 million visitors annually call this their home away from home for the holidays. There's Christmas magic in these mountains. Magical. Festive. Wonderful. <laughs> With more than half a million Christmas lights, making this the most Christmassy cosmopolis south of the North Pole. Good morning, America, from Leavenworth, Washington. Nestled in the foothills of the towering Cascade Mountains of the Pacific Northwest, the business of Christmas is booming. This last weekend was a 20% gain from the pedestrian counts over last year. Decorating starts in early October, taking a team more than 1,000 hours, with lights weighing a total of 6,000 pounds. Erica Bowie and her family, now three generations strong, run Leavenworth Reindeer Farm. I'm able to see 1,000 people a day that come to me and they go, I can't believe you get to live on a reindeer farm and do this for work. What would you say is the biggest misconception people have about reindeer? Reindeer do not eat carrots. What? Reindeer need soft foods to eat. The Gingerbread Factory celebrating 35 years of sweet success. We just keep baking. We have a light out the door and we're shipping as well. Do you have a favorite creation that you've made? Yes. And? It was a Seahawks stadium. And the gumdrop on top? We've become a lot of people's family traditions. It's an incredible joy. And the fact that we get to be a part of these folk stories is an honor and a privilege. Christmas is not a date, it's a state of mind. And the good news is that all of those lights that you're seeing up there, they stay up through the end of February. So your Christmas celebrations can continue well into the new year here in Leavenworth. Thanks so much, Will. When GMA Life returns, I'm taking you shopping at Crate and Barrel. You're gonna need those deals, Lori. Plus, we've got tips for motivating your kids to read more. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Give it to me. Hit me with them good vibes. Bitches on my phone lives. Everything is so fine. Little bit of sunshine. Dance some more, just a little bit. Breathe some more, just a little bit. Smile a little more in a minute. Ah, 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 ah. Across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year, and you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Welcome back to GMA Life. Time for Shop This Store. In the heart of Manhattan's Flatiron District, we are getting a first look at Crate and Barrel's beautiful and sprawling new headquarters. Let's shop. Don't miss out on Crate and Barrel's in-house line of cookware and glassware, like this hip large wine glass. It's dishwasher safe, it's been a top seller for them for over a decade, and it can fit an entire bottle of wine. Be sure to check out The Kitchen by Crate. In particular, this ceramic frying pan is top reviewed 
and it has a non-stick diamond infused surface, meaning it releases food with unprecedented ease. This 23,000 square foot location also boasts some exciting new offerings like in-house floral arranging and monogramming services where you can personalize virtually any textile right here in the store like this barrel chair. It comes in five different colors and it's amazingly comfortable. Wish they made this in my size. It's no surprise that this is a go-to spot for holiday decor and tis the season for scoring the best they have to offer like this best-selling cypress garland. Reviewers love the feathery fronds and how realistic it looks. I might take this one home with me. Thank you, Lori. Now to the hosts of the Bookcase podcast, Kate and Charlie Gibson. They're sharing tips for getting kids around the country more access to books and motivated to read. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. With that familiar tune and friendly smile, Fred Rogers built a legacy of storytelling and sparking curiosity in young kids on his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I'm an elephant and I stomp my foot. Can you do it? I sure can. So who better to talk to than Emma Lee? She's the assistant director of the Fred Rogers Institute at St. Vincent College. Fred talked a lot about there's a, a world of difference between insisting on someone's doing something and establishing an atmosphere in which they can grow into wanting to do it. It's hard to force somebody to read, and that's not really what we want to be doing, right? Okay, so how do you do it? One is Fred talked a lot about unhurried time. This is a day that we can just relax. It's so easy to get overly signed up for everything, but protecting some unhurried, quiet time is, I think, step one. The very best thing that caregivers can do is let your children see you love reading. That's what Fred did on the show. Kids now get seduced by screens. How can you counteract that seduction? that occurs without, as you said, commanding it. Start training yourself that when you have that drive to grab your phone, maybe grab a book, your child will see that. And over time, that will start to influence what they wanna do with their free time. So some takeaways here, if they will help. Number one, read to your kids. Number two, make sure there is time set aside for quiet maybe a half hour of TV and then equal quiet time with reading available. Are you gonna run home and read it immediately? Next, my Kate met with Kate DiCamillo, who has won just about every award a children's author can win. She's written three dozen books, The Tale of Despero, Because of Win Dixie, the Mercy Watson series, just to name a few. They met at Red Balloon Bookshop in Minneapolis, along with some kids and their parents. Kate DiCamillo started by reading to them from her new book, The Puppets of Spellhorst. Once there was a king and a wolf and a girl with a shepherd's crook. Reading is like a glass bottom boat ride. When somebody's reading aloud to you, it's just like you're looking at the world together and you can see the world hidden inside of the world that we already know. I mentioned to Kate that research shows that more than 60% of low-income families can't afford books and don't have any around the home. You can, and I will tear up talking about this, anywhere in this country, walk into a public library and they will bend over backwards to find the right book for you. Anybody has access to that. That's the first thing I say. And the second thing I say is let them see you reading for your own pleasure. And so takeaway number three, use the library. If you can't get to the library, call the library. The library has lots of ways to get books to you. Number four, let your kids see you take out some books from the library for yourself. Number five, have your children, as soon as they are able, read to you. Sometimes when I'm talking to a room full of kids and adults, I'll say to the kids, go home and read to your adult. Like you're cooking dinner and your kid is reading to you. It's the best, what a gift. Another idea from research, takeaway number six, use the screens. Download some books you choose with your children on their phone or on your tablet. Make screen time, reading time. That is a great question. Okay, who's gonna top that one? As Kate talked with the kids at Red Balloon Bookshop, one boy told her about a great idea that his teacher employed to get his students to read. We had 
a reading chain in my class. We have these little paper slips. You write your name and you write the book in down and then you staple them together and then you hang them up. So everything that the whole class has read is in a chain around the classroom? We're trying to make a circle around it. I love it, I love it. And it will make it the whole way to get pizza party. <laughs> oh. When GMA Life returns, one of the biggest surprises in morning TV history. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. The Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Hollywood. This was the craziest story. Amanda Lemmick, Hollywood movie producer. Lala Kent, reality star, Vanderpump Rules. Hollywood. Vanderpump Rules, it's about these young, hot 20-somethings. This is the juiciest time in reality show history. How could I not have been smarter? How is my daughter having to pay for my stupidity and me not wanting to see red flags? <laughs> Who is Randall Emmett, really? Over 30 lawsuits. It was awful to everyone. My first interaction with Randall was him in his underwear. A bag of cocaine. Totally naked. The N-word being used is where I draw the line. Randall and Lala's relationship started to fall apart. To have your daughter living her life that way it made me feel very sad. I hate Randall Emmett. I have to put up a big fight. I do hope he gets what he deserves. The Randall Scandal. Love, Loathing, and Vanderpump. Only on Hulu. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day. On the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crooks 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. I'm Rob Marciano in Tampa, Florida, reporting in Hurricane Adalia. Wherever the weather may take you, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to GMA Life. It's time for the biggest surprise. Are you ready, friends? I'm ready. In morning TV history. We're celebrating the healthcare heroes of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Take a look. The team at Memorial Sloan Kettering work every day to care for cancer thrivers. The role even more critical, as new research shows early onset cancer rates rising nearly 80% globally in three decades. It's urgent in the sense that it's not what we would typically know to see. Dr. Tracy Gosselin leads the over 5,000 nurses and support staff who make up MSK, one of the top cancer hospitals in the country. Healthcare is hard work. The advent of technologies, new treatments, new ways of doing things makes some of it easier, yet some of it also harder. As a dedicated nurse on the front line for 30 years, Tracy understands the gravity of the job. During her daily rounds, the A team. Tracy's known for her famed selfies and prioritizing personalized patient care. Can they afford their medications? Can they afford co-pays? It's a lot about how does that funding look to do it better. For Jillian Allegretti, it's her role as a care coordinator that gives the patient a chance to take control. I work alongside all the nurses, ensuring patients are scheduled for the right treatments. What's your day-to-day -day like so that I can work your appointments around your life? What you don't know about Jillian 
is that she's a breast cancer thriver, treated at Memorial Sloan Kettering six years ago. I was 24. Cancer can go to anybody at any time and at all times. I work in the exact infusion unit that I was given chemo. It's the staff, her now co-workers, who stood by Jillian's side during her procedures and surprise proposal on the final day of chemo. Once, these were people that saved my life, and now I get to work with these superhumans that go out of their way to do everything for patients. Also on both sides, 27-year-old Joshua Morales. Hello, how you doing, honey? I'm good. Now a door attendant at the hospital. I'm taking your mind off. You being nervous about waiting in the waiting room, getting your blood drawn, and the results of it. Joshua only three years old when he was admitted to MSK as a high-risk leukemia patient, enduring multiple life-saving rounds of chemo and a bone marrow transplant. A lot of people see me, they say, hey, listen, this guy's like in good shape, but when I tell them I'm a patient, they never believe it. Both Joshua and Jillian grateful for the compassionate care they received and that they're now able to give helping others thrive. It helped me get through my situation, so I want to be the same way to support somebody healthy. The why we do this every day is deeply personal. I think it's a higher order calling of caring for humanity during a pretty tough time in someone's life. Wasn't that incredible? Amazing. Here now, <laughs> Joshua and Jillian. And joining us, it's, it's, it's so wonderful to hear about both of their journeys in that piece. And also joining us is Dr. Vickers. He is the president and CEO of Memorial Sloan Kettering. You can clap for him, too. Yes! <laughs> oh, you're a good one. And Kenneth Griffin, the founder and CEO of Citadel and also head of the philanthropic group uh, Griffin Catalyst. I'm going to talk a little bit more about you in just a moment, Kenneth. But I just want to talk to these two right now, don't we both, Larry? Yes, we do. Joshua, Joshua. <laughs> we saw you as a three-year-old yes. there as a patient at MSK. Now you're there, you're greeting patients <laughs> as they get out of their cars with a big smile. Why did you think this was the right role for you? Uh, I felt like the perfect full circle moment, you know, uh, being on both sides of the ball, a uh, patient and an employee now. Uh, it's cool to give care now and receive mm -hmm. care when I was a child. So the same feeling that they gave me when my, me and my parents walked through the door, and the warm welcomes and everything is the same way I could give back, the same warm welcomes and ease people's mind when they come through the door. Like you also. said, full circle. Full yes. circle. Mm -hmm. And Jillian, one of the <laughs> nurses that treated you when you were going through your own fight, mm -hmm. like the warrior that you are, is with us today. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how she inspired you to go full circle and now do that same work that they all did with you on your journey. After my diagnosis, it was always my dream career to work at Memorial Sloan Kettering. And seeing how all these nurses every day, all the coordinators, everybody that welcomes you, I just really wanted to be a part of that team. Yeah. And now that I'm on that team, I sometimes like stand back and just feel really honored to work with these amazing people and, and you that know, you know saved firsthand. my life. Yeah. yeah, you know firsthand how pivotal their roles were yes. in, in, in yeah. saving your life. Yes. Yeah. And you get to do that now. Yes, and I'm very grateful and it's it's very surreal sometimes that I, I full circle like he said and I, I kind of get to give back. It's awesome. Nurses in, in, in the position that you're in as well. So many unsung heroes. Yep. So many unsung heroes. And we're, we're singing your praises right now. And somebody who's going to help us do that. I want you to know more about this gentleman right there. Kenneth is head of Citadel Investment Firm and Griffin Catalyst and has devoted his philanthropic efforts to going after solutions to large scale problems with the potential, the potential for life changing impact. And he has said he wants to see cancer eradicated. Yes, please. Believes in the importance of patient care. So guess what, everyone? Kenneth, bless you for that. Guess what, everyone? You're not just here to be recognized. You are here for so much more. We have a big surprise in store. Are you ready to hear the largest gift ever going to Memorial Sloan Kettering? The largest gift ever. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah.
We're gonna need your help. We're gonna need your help. So on the count, we'll show the amount in three, two, two one. Oh. Get it. Generosity Memorial Sloan Kettering is receiving the ultimate gift of $400 million. What do you think about that, everybody? Is that good? It's unbelievable the difference that it will make in so many lives. Kenneth, why was this so I'm sorry? Why was this so important for you to donate in such a large number that will make such a huge difference? So so all of us here dream of the day that we end cancer. Yes. And this gift is coming from both David Geffen and from me to MSK. And, and Dr. Vickers, your, your leadership of MSK and your team, just extraordinary. And I'm, I am certain that MSK will play an important role in ending cancer in our lifetime. But until that day, the team at MSK, the team that all of you are part of, give the patients that are enduring cancer hope dignity and compassion in their care. And we know that cancer is more than just a disease. It's a moment of incredible emotional challenge. And all of the work that you do to help our, the patients at MSK beat cancer and find their lives again is God's work. Thank you so much. David and I are so honored to be in a position to support the great work of MSK. Yeah. You feel the emotion from, from everybody that, that is here. There's nobody that has not uh, been impacted, both personally, with families and friends and things like that. It's, it's, it's impacted everybody. Dr. Victors, just talk about $400 million. How is that going to help your team achieve what it is that you all want to achieve? As I was talking to Ken earlier, uh, this gift is transformative. Not only is the largest, but it means so much at this time. And so I personally want to thank Ken for being here and David, if he's watching, for allowing these resources to move toward what I think is a treasure in American, American health care. Morris Sloan Kettering is a place that lives daily knowing that each person who comes to those doors, their life is threatened by a diagnosis, not just a chronic illness, but it's threatened very much. And we tell them each day we have this and we're going to allow you to thrive, as you said. So this transformative gift will continually allow us to, first of all, take care of our people, which is first our patients. Mm -hmm. Secondly, our 20,000 memorial individuals, our faculty and doctors, our nurses, our staff, our researchers, who all play this role in discovery. It will continually allow us to take the programs in this golden age of cancer care to transform outcomes and patients' lives at a place like Memorial because of resources like this. Yeah. And thirdly, it will allow us to create facilities that are state-of-the-art to really create the patient experience that we know patients have along this journey. Not only the outcomes that are really special at Memorial, but the experience of going through knowing that we care about you as much as we do care about the outcomes. Oh. And so, Ken, David, this is a phenomenal gift. I couldn't have dreamed of something greater. And you hear from our staff, you hear from the lives that we touch and that we will touch, that this will immensely allow us to do it even more so. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Now to our celebration of 100 years of Disney magic. GMA is joining forces with Disney and the Make-A-Wish Foundation to grant 100 wishes. Yes, meet Lincoln. He was just four years old when he was diagnosed with leukemia. He's now seven and in remission, and his wish of going to Disney World with his family came true. Oh, I love that for him. That's all for GMA Life. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. This was the craziest story. Amanda Lemmick, Hollywood movie producer. Lala Kent, reality star, Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules, it's about these young, hot 20-somethings. This is the juiciest time in reality show history. How could I not have been smarter? How is my daughter having to pay for my stupidity and me not wanting to see red flags? <laughs> Who was Randall Emmett, really? Over 30 lawsuits. It was awful to everyone. My first interaction with Randall was him in his underwear. A bag of cocaine. Totally naked. The N-word being used is where I draw the line. Randall and Lala's relationship started to fall apart. To have your daughter living her life that way it made me feel very sad. I hate Randall Emmett. I have to put up a big fight. I do hope he gets what he deserves. The Randall Scandal. Love, Loathing, and Vanderpump. Only on Hulu. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. news breaks. It's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Music is powerful and can be deeply personal, a way to find your place or even your purpose. I'm Phil Lipoff and this is The Playlist, where we are highlighting artists who celebrate their uniqueness. An indie frontman connecting to his roots, a crooning duo spending decades on the road playing for a loyal fan base. But first, a singer-songwriter with soul. This is Ray's moment for sure. The British-born artist is selling out shows all across the world. And at first, her voice was the soundtrack to some of the biggest dance hits on the charts. Now, she's on her own. And it's the honesty in her songwriting and the vulnerability in her performances. I spent some time with Ray to talk about her journey to stardom and her fight for creative freedom. Ray has been running towards stardom her whole life. And teasing, I'm sitting on him. Her 2022 release, Escapism, streamed more than half a billion times. That success, and perhaps more important to the 25-year-old, her artistic freedom, did not come overnight. When I signed my record deal when I was 17, in my mind, I was going to be like, but here's my album. And they were like, yeah, OK, great. And they were like, OK, so you could go and do some sessions mm. with these people. Go and work right with them. She says her label ignored what she wanted to create. Instead, put her together with some of the biggest DJs and producers to make dance hits like You Don't Know Me. The Jax Jones 2016 release featuring Ray climbed to number three on the UK charts. After that, Secrets. What a way to drop a bombshell, baby. You really didn't think I'd find out. And then, Bed. 
Another top 10 hit with her friend and DJ legend, David Guetta. Her voice becoming synonymous with the genre, but only that genre. I was there for seven years and in my mind, I had written many, many different albums worth of stuff that were that would have made sense in it. You know, like, it's like hundreds of songs. She even wrote hits for other artists, like Bigger for Beyonce. Can you hear it? Call it Finally, after seven years in 2021, Ray says she had had enough and took to social media claiming that her label was preventing her from releasing her own album instead of just single after single. Shortly after that, she was let out of her contract. Suddenly, untethered, independent and ready to be Ray. Ultimately, it forces you as an artist to focus on the only thing you can control, and that is the quality of your art. And the idea is that if it gets into one person's eardrums, you're like, you know, they're, they're listening and they're like, wow. You said, um, I don't want to create music for the purpose solely to sell. That doesn't give me joy. I, when, I heard you, when, I, when I heard you say that, I wrote it down immediately. I had to get to a place where I was like, I don't care how this music performs. I don't care what it does. What I care about is the fact that I love it. That love for music began when Ray, or Rachel Agatha Keene, was a child in Yorkshire, England. I sang at church, and my parents are definitely musical, but were never professionally musical. At seven years old, I turned around to my dad, and I was like, Dad, I'm going to be a songwriter. My granddad used to write songs. Um, it's just in the blood, the passion's in the blood. It's an interesting thing for a seven-year-old to say. I wrote and recorded my first song when I was about eight. Um, I still have the recordings, but you are not allowed to hear them because I what, sound what was terrible. The, what was the name of the song? The song was called Change My World, and I wrote this song about a homeless man that I'd seen, and I was really upset. One line. Um, Cold and tired and hungry, life is just so hard for me. Um, yeah, all I want is a peaceful world, something like that. The writing was on the wall. In her teens, her passion for music grew, inspired by legends like Nina Simone. Ray seen here singing Feeling Good. All these years later, opening for stars like SZA and Caliuchis, seen at fashion shows with Ice Spice and Lil Nas X, now headlining her own tour, and Ray fans around the world finally have her first full-length solo album, My 21st Century Blues, and it begins like this. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm heartbreak welcome to the wonderful Ray. A 13-song journey pop mixed with jazz, R&B, and a little dance, with lyrics to match the highs and lows of the life she's lived. There's Oscar-winning Tears. She performed in August on Good Morning America's concert series. Cry those Oscar and deeply personal songs like Ice Cream Man. Coming like the ice cream man Till I felt his ice cold written about being sexually assaulted. Whenever you go to that place, I think a lot of people who experience some of these things experience PTSD and experience the aftermath of trauma that was dealt to you that you didn't deserve. Like, you know, having to figure out how to pick your life up after you've been completely broken and, and abused. And, and um, that's a song that I made to just remind myself how strong I am. She makes that very clear in the chorus. Cause I'm a woman, I'm a very big, brave, strong woman. And I'll be damned if I let a man ruin. How, what, how, talk, how, do it. Do you sing it every night you play? No, not every night. That would be difficult. Yeah, I really try, I really try to as much as I can because I know every time I sing it, I know there's at least one little girl in the audience who is like, thank you for singing this song. One of the many new benefits of having creative control. Here's another one. <laughs> thank you. Escapism, her first single as an independent artist shot to number one in the UK. Oh, wow. <laughs> Equally as thrilled to show us her platinum album hanging on the wall. And now, a live album recording at the famed Royal Albert Hall in London. The announcement came this spring on Instagram. 
What's it going to be like? It's going to be amazing. I definitely, it's definitely not cheap, like just so people know, okay? Remind me that you are, you in are independent. Artistry. Independent artist. Independent artistry. No, it's, it's going to be a dream come true. That's exactly what it's going to be. I think escapism is going to be insane with dun, 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 you know, them chords. <laughs> the song is upbeat, but for us, Ray played it like this. Sleezing and teasing, I'm sitting on him. All of my diamonds are dripping on him. I met him at the bar, it was 12 or something. I would do more wines, cause tonight I want him. Cause I don't wanna feel how I did last night. I don't wanna feel how I did last night. Da, 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 da. Have mercy on me, take this pain away. You're asking me my symptoms, doctor. In the middle of her longest tour yet, 133 shows. When I come out the other side of that, um, we'll see. Yeah. But I do have some things in the vibe, so we'll just, there's no rules. I don't know. And I'm also a very spontaneous person. I could wake up tomorrow and be like, guys. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna drop uh, an EP full of this, this, and that. Like, I just, you just don't know with me. So there's nothing to regret other than this 4 4 kick drum pounding in my head. Hmm. One thing is for sure, though, there is a lot of good music ahead coming out from Ray. After decades on the scene with a body of work cementing them as an indie music staple, Young the Giant is still finding ways to innovate and connect to a deeper meaning. On their fifth and latest studio album, American Bollywood, lead singer Samir Gadia taps into his family history as inspiration to write and produce songs about identity and roots. I sat down with Samir to talk about his career and the importance of representation as one of the only Indian frontmen in American music. Young the Giant's self-titled album released in 2011 to critical acclaim. Their first huge hit, My Body. And of course, there was also Cough Syrup. The band formed in 2004 under another name, The Jakes. But some members go back further than that, a teenage talent show. I was in middle school with, with two of them, but at the time they were doing their own thing. It was a couple other guys I roped into doing it with me. We sat down with lead singer Samir Gadia in Houston at 713 Music Hall. Some of my favorite shows of this tour are not necessarily the most noteworthy venues or the most iconic. Oftentimes it's just the place you wouldn't even expect. That must be like a euphoric feeling. It's amazing. A feeling Samir almost left behind at a crossroads in college when he was pre-med at Stanford. I think my parents wanted me to be successful, an avenue that there was a lot of representation in. So obviously it's the stereotypical ones or, you know, the doctor, the lawyer. But when Samir thought about being a professional musician, he could only name one other Indian rock star. Queen's Freddie Mercury, born Farouk Bulsara to British Indian parents. But Farouk changed his name to Freddy. You know, it blows my mind how many uh, Indian people or brown people still don't know that he's Indian. I knew from a very young age, and I didn't think about that, but maybe it, it made these decisions in me that, okay, maybe I have to change some things a little bit for it to be accepted by a larger group of people. And I think those are very, like, small but insidious things that I've, like, picked apart over the course of time and made that intention not to do that. Samir chose not to change his name and has been out front for more than 20 years. My goal also is to be able to not necessarily just be a role model, but to be just an example of representation and success and show that there are other ways to be successful. Um, there are other ways to do it. And if, if I'd seen that when I was younger, maybe I would have embraced it sooner. And he says he wishes musicians weren't separated by genre. You say it segregates the artists who make it. So tell yeah. me what you mean by that. Like urban music, 
you know, the, the way you describe an urban population. It's very similar music and like any art form responds or ripples to the secret codes that we have in our culture. Mm -hmm. And so there are ways outwardly, objectively, that people classify music nowadays. Maybe I think there was a certain point of time where music maybe did classify the style of music. But I think now more than ever in, a, in an era where there's kind of, we're kind of post genre in terms of the way stuff is sounding, like there's influence coming from all over the place um, and we're all melding stuff together. Young the Giant has certainly done that over the years, like with Mind Over Matter, the title track off their 2014 release. In 2018, Superposition off Mirror Master. And for their fifth studio album released in 2022, an homage to his roots. It was an empowerment of the sound of the South Asian diaspora of music and its stronghold on Western music over the decades. And so, you know, at the beginning, we are start, we're using more traditional Indian elements that people can pick apart and be like, oh, okay, this is a tabla, this is a sitar. The lyrics in Wake Up, the first line, as you were talking about, is walking through the desert of the Indus Valley. I was going backwards and I swear I saw me. I love that line. Yeah, I mean, it sets the tones. The, the record is um, loosely inspired by the act structure of the Mahabharata, which is part of the Bhagavad Gita, which is a, you know, larger... Indian Hindu text. Now that you're here with American Bollywood, where you are musically, what kind of feedback have you gotten from your family? You know, American Bollywood, that song in particular, is the story of my parents and the story of my father. You know, tw 24, he touches down in Michigan. That's the first time he ever saw snow. American dreams were hard to conjure without a bed to sleep in. And I think um, it was validating for them, you know, for all the stuff that they've endured over the course of their life. Samir is now a father of two boys who don't have to look far at all to see themselves represented in music. Young the Giant is still selling out shows, always grateful for their hardcore fan base. And on this night in Houston, a special pre-show performance. I was the one to And just before taking the stage, kind enough to indulge a longtime fan with a verse from Cough Syrup. If I could find a way to see this straight out of rainbow way, to some fortune that my heart should have found by And after almost two decades, Samir's favorite part of the music business is still the live show. You know, I am open and ready, and I don't ever want to be closed off to inspiration. The second I think that, I don't know, I forget who said this, but I think the second that an artist thinks that they're the ones who are writing their songs, it's when it's done. Because you really are just channeling something. You're channeling some creativity. And again, want to thank Samir for indulging me. Love cough syrup. It's still to come, for more than 40 years, this duo has been serenading lovers with some of your favorite ballads from the 80s. I sat down with love song legends Air Supply to talk about how their hits have stood the test of time. We've also considered ourselves always a touring rock and roll band because we don't sit home for any length of time. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this town. From Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. From the scene of that deadly missile strike. ABC News Live everywhere. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah! On the 2024 campaign trail. Here at 10 Downing Street. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. You're
Hotel. Your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. Okay, it's time to start the countdown. Say. So, what will the year 2024 bring? 2024? 2024. Ooh, good question. What will Elon Musk be doing in 2024? In 2023, the only thing we could agree on is Taylor Swift. You know what we're going to be able to agree on in 2024? Taylor Swift again. <laughs> <laughs> Counting down to the year 2024 with Robin Roberts. Right before New Year's Rockin' Eve. What do you say we get this party started? Sunday night on ABC. Hollywood. This was the craziest story. Amanda Lemmick, Hollywood movie producer. Lola Kent, reality star, Vanderpump Rules. Hollywood. Vanderpump Rules, it's about these young, hot 20-somethings. This is the juiciest time in reality show history. How could I not have been smarter? How is my daughter having to pay for my stupidity and me not wanting to see red flags? <laughs> Who is Randall Lemmick, really? over 30 lawsuits. It was awful to everyone. My first interaction with Randall was him in his underwear. A bag of cocaine. Totally naked. The N-word being used is where I draw the line. Randall and Lala's relationship started to fall apart. To have your daughter living her life that way made me feel very sad. I hate Randall Lemon. I have to put up a big fight. I do hope he gets what he deserves. The Randall Scandal. Love, Loathing, and Vanderpump. Only on Hulu. From Fulton County Court in Atlanta, I'm Aaron Katursky. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. They are a staple of the 80s who put out some of our favorite love ballads. And the hits Air Supply is known for have stood the test of time for sure. The Australian duo still spending most of their time, like decade after decade after decade, touring. The legendary pair sharing the secret to longevity. Big, bold, beautiful love songs that stand the test of time. Few groups have done it better than Air Supply. From their hits, All Out of Love, and Lost in Love, to every love song in between. Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock have been recording huge hits and touring the world for almost 50 years. We've toured every year except COVID year for, for since 1976. That's without, amazing. Without a stop. On this night in Red Bank, New Jersey, we watched as the audience sang every word. Then we sat down with the legendary duo. Thank you both for doing this. We started with how they met in 1975, both in the same production of Jesus Christ Superstar in Australia. Neither of us had any musical background or any training of any kind. But when we met, we knew something was going on because we'd sing between shows in Superstar and people would come by and go, wow, you guys sound amazing. We went on tour the next day after Superstar closed. We had a number one record in Australia. Their self-titled debut album. It happened that fast, and just a year later, they were on a whirlwind tour opening for Rod Stewart. But when the tour ended... We got back to Australia, we couldn't get arrested, you know. We, uh, we had seven in the band, I think. We were getting offered $200 a night to play. After touring with Rod Stewart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were, we were no, no, nowhere, nothing. I went and stayed with my sister in Melbourne and, and got work doing jingles here and there. Um, then Graham said he'd written some songs, why don't you come to Adelaide? And one of those songs was Lost in Love. And I went, that's a monster mm, right yeah. there. And it was. Their 1980 release, Lost in Love, changed everything for the British-Australian rock group, certified double platinum in the U.S. From the title track, 
to All Out of Love and Every Woman in the World. After that, there was no looking back. The next year, they dropped The One That You Love with hits like Here I Am. Here I Am. Three more albums in the 80s, another four in the 90s, and three releases so far in the 2000s. There are bands that last, if, if they have 15 or 20 years, that's a successful career. Yeah, yeah. You guys are now on 47, you're mm. selling out shows, you're mm. doing two a week, mm. all year long, mm. still. We're valid in 2023, just mm. as much as we were in 1976. Making love out of nothing at all, even the nights mm. are better, yeah, yeah. every woman in the world, mm. the list goes on and on. They cross decades because as you were writing love mm. songs mm. On, on a guitar with piano and your voices yeah. that are as valid as you say today, as relevant yeah. today as they, as they would be then. Mm. Was there, was that conscious? Was that a conscious decision or was that just what, how you were writing and singing? It's just the, the way I, I wrote songs and still do. Uh, we, uh, to have a conscious decision for us is very rare. When we made our first record, uh, which was Love Another Bruises, Love Another Bruises. we didn't have a plan. We, well, we really didn't know what we were doing. We just knew that we both loved this song. And when Russell went in to sing it, uh, everything changed because suddenly it was, you know, beautiful song. Then Russell just popped it out at the end and he just happened to jump up the octave and sing it higher, because he could do that. And, and in the studio, everyone did, whoa, that's mm. it. So suddenly, our sound was created. And when you write the kind of moving lyrics that Graham does, and sing them the way Russell does, the songs become a part of fans' lives, especially during deeply personal moments. We had a young guy at at a show and he said, I just came out to my dad and he's disowned me. And uh, I was actually thinking about killing myself. Mm. And I got put on one of your records or something. And I thought, whoa, you know, this is not worth any of this. You go, whoa, this is, this is far beyond somebody paying 20 bucks for a concert and going home with somebody saying, oh, that was great. Mm. You know, actually changed somebody's lives. Saved. Saved. In there that you case, go. Yeah, saved yeah. somebody's yeah. life. So we don't take that for granted. And that is at the core of air supply, taking nothing for granted and reaching as many fans as possible. Helping them do that on tour, an amazing group of musicians building on those gigantic love songs. With guitar solos. Hard hitting drums. A solid bass line and a charismatic pianist keeping it all together. We just love to play and, you know, we love stepping on stage and seeing people's face, faces light up. I mean, you can't buy that. You also can't buy the kind of support they get from their wives. Russell married to his wife, Carrie. Graham first met Jody on the set of their music video for making love out of nothing at all. She was cast as his love interest. They later married. Even the nights are better Now that we're here together now in their 70s, the legends are not slowing down in the middle of yet another world tour. You guys are rock stars. Yeah, we've also considered ourselves always a touring rock and roll band because we don't sit home for any length of time. We've done over 5,300 shows in our career. And no slowing down, you're doing 100 plus shows no, a year. Yeah. No, we're doing 120. I mean, think about that. 120 shows a year, you're touring most of the year. For 50 years, and these guys are 80. Amazing. That's our show. You can watch full episodes of the playlist right here on ABC News Live, also streaming on Hulu. I'm Phil Lipoff. Until next time, the music never stops. Thanks for watching. This is ABC News Live.
with the crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Give it to me. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Reporting from Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Alex Perche. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. star immediately and it never stopped from there you couldn't go to a grocery store without seeing a tabloid about every twist and turn of her life well the economy of Brittany made a lot of people a lot of money particularly when she was spiraling down this is a woman who was lonely who was manipulated she held out her flip phone, and I saw this text from her boyfriend, Justin Timberlake. Brittany describes in excruciating great detail having a secret abortion that not even her family knew about. The closer you were to Brittany, the more at risk you were of disappearing overnight. The conservatorship saga of Britney Spears raises a lot of questions as to how a person can get so much control over another person's life. I just believe that if my sister wanted to be out of the conservatorship, then that conversation should be had. I hesitate to ask this, but I feel like I need to. Do you ever feel guilty? Everything that you're about to hear has been exciting, heart-wrenching, and emotional, to say the least. like to be able to share my story with the world and what they did to me instead of it being a hush-hush secret to benefit all of them. That plea from Britney Spears to a judge ruling on her conservatorship in June 2021, now a reality. The 41-year-old sharing her truth in her new memoir, The Woman in Me, saying in her author's note, Reliving everything that you're about to hear has been exciting, heart-wrenching, and emotional, to say the least. <laughs> Her life, defined by global fame and extreme scrutiny, now laying bare her heartaches and traumas, including new details about the 13 years a conservatorship ruled her life. What struck you 
as you read the book about what she was going through that you might not have seen as you were standing next to her? The reality is I saw it. So I, what she describes is what she was feeling and it's what I observed. This book is an emotional experience. I mean, every page there is a revelation. In many ways, her carefully crafted pop princess image began to crack when her first love broke her heart. I walk into her trailer, and Brittany's not dressed for the next scene. She's not ready. Her hair and makeup isn't ready. That's Brittany right there. Uh, she looks amazing. Director Chris Applebaum witnessed the breakup firsthand while on set filming her music video, Overprotected. In fact, she's in tears. She's crying. She's still in like a, like a juicy, you know, couture sweatsuit. And I could immediately tell something was wrong. I asked her if everything was okay. And she said, no, not, things are not okay. Because look, and she held out her flip phone and I saw this text which said, it's over. Which was from her boyfriend at the time, Justin Timberlake. With time running out in their shoot day, Applebaum had to make a decision. It seemed like that was the end of the video shoot. And I acknowledged that with everybody and said, you know, I completely understand. But on the other hand, if you feel like you want to get out there and show him that he just lost the best thing that he ever had, let's do it. 10 or 15 minutes later, she came out and she was on fire. This was the Britney that everybody knows and loves. Applebaum says in true Britney form, she pushed away her pain and nailed it. But despite the strength she showed that day, she reveals now in the book for the first time the depths of the heartbreak she hid from the world. I could barely speak for months. Whenever anyone asked me about him, all I could do was cry. I barely left the house. I was that messed up. I lay in my bed and stared at the ceiling. The two soon-to-be superstars first met when they were cast in the Mickey Mouse Club remake from Disney, ABC's parent company. The TV show that brought 11-year-old Britney Spears of Kentwood, Louisiana, her first real taste of fame. She beats out thousands of kids to join the Mickey Mouse Club. She's working with future superstars like Christina Aguilera, Ryan Gosling, and of course, Justin Timberlake. She snagged her first record deal at age 15. Her first two studio albums among the best selling of all time, with hits like Give me a song. Baby One More Time. Oops, I did it again. And crazy. Cementing her status as the princess of pop, a teenager seeming to own her own sexuality. From steamy magazine covers to MTV appearances and provocative performances at the Video Music Awards. <laughs> She was immediately a star, immediately. It was really stunning, and it never stopped from there. The first time I met Britney Spears was at the rehearsal for the first music video I directed for her. I have to admit, I was a little nervous because she was the biggest star in the world at that time. Back in the day, I would have, you know, there were these wardrobe fittings, and I had these, like, cool, Polaroids of Britney <laughs> that uh, we took. And this is from Overprotected. Some of her fans think that this is like some of the best, you know, that she's ever looked in terms of wardrobe. And the child star turned pop superstar, Applebaum says, was surprisingly down to earth. The moment Britney opened her mouth, she was like disarmingly pleasant, so like kind and like was really caring about like wanting to make me feel comfortable. There were couches and chairs in the room, but Brittany chose to sit on the floor. And um, so I sat on the floor with her. Her work ethic, he says, unparalleled. She was probably one of the hardest working people I've ever met. 
I don't know if there's anybody else that I've seen that's like that, that just has this drive to um, uh, perfect uh, every performance. Brittany on a video set was empowered and her ideas were good ones. And she got what her audience wanted to see in her. Applebaum says he found her talent mesmerizing as he directed her for a pop homage to I Love Rock and Roll. I love rock and roll so put another dime in the toolbox, baby. She didn't have a lot of time to rehearse, so um, she was learning steps and trying things out essentially on set. I was watching the monitor. Her performance was so incredible. I got so lost that I forgot to yell cut at the very end. Applebaum says Britney was comfortable wielding her sexuality, but her management objected. Applebaum saw that tug of war over Britney's image play out on the set. In this one sequence, like what if, you know, things get so crazy that the amps start to overheat and start, you know, like we, instead of like fizzling, we see this like black goop dripping from it, like as if it were like motor oil. And we see Brittany crawling like a cat across the ground until she gets to it and then she licks it up like a cat. Maybe it was off brand, maybe it was too sexy, maybe it was too provocative, but, um, we shot it, she loved it. And it's a good thing that she only needed one take because as soon as her manager saw it, he came over and he put his hand in front of the camera and said, that's it, the shoot is over, that's it, we're done. Ultimately, a more sanitized version of the video was released. She says in her book, no one could seem to think of me as both sexy and capable or talented and hot. If I was sexy, they seemed to think I must be stupid. If I was hot, I couldn't possibly be talented. She says she began noticing a sexist double standard in her personal life too, especially when it came to her relationship with Timberlake. At this point, the front man in boy band, InSync. Brittany says that she kind of envied how carefree Justin got to be. You know, she noticed that the questions that talk show hosts and journalists were asking him were wildly different from the questions that she got asked. When did you know that you wanted to do a solo album? Um, honestly, it's always been in the back of my head. I'm just wondering uh, how you feel about all the constant speculation about your virginity and whether you are a virgin or not. Yeah. Have there been any changes on that front? <laughs> <laughs> That's a personal question. At the turn of the century, the pair were teen pop royalty. Their now iconic matching denim outfits at the 2001 American Music Awards plastered everywhere. She remembers it as a blissful time. Two people who totally understood each other, two people who uniquely kind of got what the challenges of each other's lives were. One of the revelations that comes out in this book is that they had a home that they shared in Orlando, Florida. I think at the time, the world perhaps was really intent on painting this picture of virginity of Britney Spears. And I think discovering that she and Justin lived together really lets you know that this was an adult, fully realized, fully formed relationship that the two of them had. Britney says she hoped it would last forever, but after three years, it was over. And she now says she was hiding a painful secret. Brittany describes in excruciating great detail having a secret abortion that not even her family knew about. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine, Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live.
ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. We have Billy Congratulations, I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. Reporting from the FBI, I'm Pierre Thomas. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Brittany claims that Justin said he wasn't ready to be a father. They were just too young. I do, 20 years later, remember the pain of it and the fear. After that, I was messed up for a while, especially because I still did love Justin so much. It was insane how much I loved him. And for me, it was unfortunate. In light of this revelation, some fans are now taking another look with a new lens at the music video of her 2003 hit, Every Time. essentially about a woman who looks as if she might be on the verge of ending her life, but then there is a birth and, and all of a sudden she is renewed, you know, and kind of born again in a way. Was she perhaps telling her fans in a really subtle way that she was pregnant? In the book, she says her relationship with Justin was troubled in other ways. She writes that he cheated on her multiple times and that she cheated too. But the difference, she says, is that Justin used her infidelity to further his career, playing it out in his Crimea a River video, where a Britney lookalike steps out on him. In a 2003 interview with Rolling Stone, Justin implies it's Britney's fault they broke up. I mean, she has a beautiful heart, but if I've lost my trust in someone, I don't think it's right for me to be with them. The way he brought everyone into their lives, the way he characterized her in that song, that makes this a topic that she gets to address at length. Because it did, more than anything else, kind of shatter the image that she had at that point. Crimea River did very well. Everyone felt very sorry for him, and it shamed me. I felt there was no way at the time to tell my side of the story. I couldn't explain because I knew no one would take my side once Justin had convinced the world of his version. I don't think Justin realized the power he had in shaming me. I don't think he understands to this day. Brittany says throughout her career, media interviews amplified a distorted image of her, adding to her pain. The media kind of made it seem like Britney was the evildoer, and Justin used his pain to create a really beautiful project. If any of the things that she writes about are real, everybody was wrong. I think it also says something really disillusioning about our perception of men. We expect men to cheat, so we're not surprised when we hear about their indiscretions, because boys will be boys. And after almost 20 years in 2021, as old interviews resurfaced online, Justin apologized. I am deeply sorry for the times in my life where my actions contributed to the problem, where I spoke out of turn or did not speak up for what was right. I specifically want to apologize to Britney Spears and Janet Jackson, both individually, because I care for and respect these women, and I know I failed. Two years after the breakup with Justin, Kevin Federline would enter her life. So she meets Kevin, and Kevin gives her the thing that no one else is able to give her, which is a sense of comfort and partnership at the time. After a whirlwind romance, they married and quickly started building a family, having two sons within two years. First, Sean Preston in 2005, then Jaden James. But she says Kevin was hardly around, trying to make it as a rapper. This is that hip-hop flavor mixed with a little bit of rock and roll. And within two months of Jaden's birth, Brittany filed for divorce. <laughs> Newly single and struggling with what she now recognizes was postpartum depression, the microscope under which she lived was magnified even further. Uh, what's your 20, guys? Nightline embedded with the online tabloid Hollywood TV and their team of paparazzi in 2008 as they followed Britney Spears through Los Angeles. 
We all make money. Like, the gym makes money because the paparazzi join. The paparazzi join so they can use the parking lot. Right, so they can use the parking lot, which is kind of a smooth move. Yeah. And then the apartment building over here makes money from Brittany because they rent up the apartment. Uh huh. So those guys are, rent, are yeah. paying rent up there to look down on the right. dance so studio. See next all those door. guys that kind of look down. Brittany economy. Thank you, Brittany. The economy of Brittany made a lot of people a lot of money, particularly when she was spiraling down. And so she was, in some cases, provoked because provoking her would get you a response, and that would make for a picture that made more money. Brittany and Kevin were locked in a bitter custody battle over their sons. She says he kept them away from her for weeks at a time. At the same time, she was also grieving the death of her beloved aunt. All this anguish and turmoil once again exploding into the public eye, she says leading her to do something that would make headlines for days. Britney Spears is back in the headlines in a big way this morning. Video of Britney Spears with a shaved head circulates over the internet. Britney explains that moment in the audiobook narrated by actress Michelle Williams. Shaving my head was a way of saying to the world, F you. You want me to be pretty for you? F you. You want me to be good for you? F you. You want me to be your dream girl? F you. I'd been the good girl for years, and I was tired of it. And when you look at it from that point of view, it's not really a psychotic break anymore. It's this symbolic gesture from someone who's in pain, who's rebelling and essentially saying, I don't want to be what all of you are defining or telling me to be. While she says she was never an alcoholic, she does admit for the first time she was abusing prescription amphetamines. At one point in the book, she describes herself as being hell on will. She was taking a lot of Adderall, and she apologizes and says she probably was horrible to people at that time. In early 2008, she says her fears of losing her sons led to a dramatic standoff with Kevin when she was supposed to hand the boys back. She wound up hospitalized against her will. Before I knew what was happening, a SWAT team in black suits burst through the bathroom door as if I'd hurt someone. The only thing I was guilty of was feeling desperate to keep my own children for a few more hours and to get some assurance that I wasn't gonna lose them for good. It was that incident and two involuntary psych holds that would lead to a decision that altered Brittany's life for more than a decade. First, she loses custody of her kids. Now, she essentially loses custody of herself. Britney Spears' very public tailspin took another turn after an L.A. judge named her father conservator of the 26-year-old pop star's estate. Britney was placed into a conservatorship run by her father, giving Jamie Spears full control of her career, finances, and health decisions. Conservatorship, whether it be for personal reasons or for your estate, is handing over the responsibility of another person to take care of someone because they can't take care of themselves for very either specific reasons, like you can't enter contracts, you can't bathe yourself, you can't make financial decisions, or general reasons where we're just going to do a, a holistic wraparound taking care of you. Something that's particularly distressing when we look at the history of conservatorships is that there is a lot of discretion that's given to the evaluation team. Because of that discretion, there is a huge vulnerability for exploitation. And shortly after, she began one of the biggest tours of her career. Dan George was one of the managers on that tour. People who saw the circus tour describe it as one of the most memorable concerts of Britney's career. The 2008, 2009 was my time with her. The conservatorship was established in February 2008. George says the lead up to Circus was grueling, hitting different cities each night to promote the tour. On her 27th birthday, she gave an over the top performance for Good Morning America. What do you remember of that performance? What was really fun for her about it was her kids were in the audience that day. What she's saying is the hypocrisy of the conservatorship is that on the one hand, I'm too sick to make any personal decisions for myself, but I'm not sick enough to go out and perform, as she says, like a wind-up doll. Yeah, a wind-up doll or the goose who lays the golden egg. You know, protect the goose, don't let it die because we need the golden eggs. But take the eggs. 
Despite her internal conflict, George says Britney still brought her A-game every day. It was one of the biggest tours in 2009. Was the circus tour seen as sort of a redemption tour or a comeback tour? Well, we didn't like to say comeback because she never really went away, but there was a period of turmoil that was very public. She was under a lot of scrutiny. You must have asked yourself that same question everybody did, which is, was she OK? Yeah. How did you assess that? Was she OK? Uh, it, was a hard, it was a hard time. I saw her frustration. I saw her shouting into her phone. Sometimes she had a phone, sometimes she didn't. She was in the hallway of the rehearsal and talking to someone saying she felt like she didn't have a voice. This was unprecedented. The idea of a conservatorship had not been done in this context. But it didn't seem menacing to you at the time. It seemed like a reorganization, like a company going into bankruptcy and coming out anew. And when I left the organization, we left her in a very good place. So it looked more like guardrails than it did like something oppressive. Yeah, I thought that the guardrails would be taken off, you know, within a year or two of that. You know, I never expected that it would last 13 years. And I was surprised to hear that it did. I'm still scratching my head as to how did you evaluate this conservatorship? We know it's supposed to be temporary to begin with and then extended to days, to weeks, to months, to 13 years. Was no one checking in on her? What was it about her that we needed to go this far? As a lawyer, I can say, yeah, these could make sense for some people. I don't see why it makes sense for Britney Spears. As the tour progressed, George recalls that the controlling grip around Britney seemed to get tighter. He says her inner circle of friends disappeared. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. The closer you were to Britney, the more at risk you were of disappearing overnight. I think that it was the people who had Britney's trust were the most targeted. <laughs> Through it all, she says her father stole her womanhood and that those 13 years under conservatorship were soul-crushing. I became a robot, but not just a robot, a sort of child robot. I had been so infantilized that I was losing pieces of what made me feel like myself. You think, how could she put up with this for so long? And as she says in the book, I did it for one reason only. I did it for my kids. I did it for my boys. Do you ever feel guilty? That oh, yeah. Well, I wish I could do more. And it was so hard to know. It was incredibly difficult to know. Britney says the circus tour grossed $130 million. After circus, she'd go on to a landmark four-year Vegas residency. I'm so Brittany, Piece of Me, helped draw a younger generation to Sin City. I now feel like to have celebrated the residency 
is like congratulating a prisoner on how well she made the license plates. You feel sort of complicit, you know, in thinking that like someone who was essentially a prisoner was being made to do that. If there is any good to come out of such a horrible event for Britney Spears, I think it's society's viewing of conservatorships in a different light and that they should be examined in a much more thorough and effective way. Britney says her father became a multimillionaire under conservatorship, with court documents showing he made $6.3 million throughout his tenure as conservator. Jamie Spears defended the conservatorship in a 2022 interview, telling the Daily Mail, for protecting her and also protecting the kids, conservatorship was a great tool. Without it, I don't think she would have got the kids back. Her father is cast as a business failure, an alcoholic, a verbally abusive father who she tried to avoid as much as possible. One could even argue that her father was Britney's first heartbreak. The saddest part to me is that what I always wanted was a dad who would love me as I was, somebody who would say, I just love you. You could do anything right now. I'd still love you with unconditional love. My dad was reckless, cold, and mean with me. She says his alcoholism made him unpredictable and volatile. Brittany's younger sister, Jamie Lynn, shared her memories about their dad when I spoke with her last year. You are very candid and vivid about your dad's drinking. How did his drinking shape your lives, both you and your sisters? For me, it was um, created a lot of anxiety of the not knowing what I was going to get and also feeling like I didn't have anybody there to to just cut it out until it could be consistent. So for me, I think it contributed a lot to my later on, my anxiety or my OCD. Do you agree with her assessment that your father was out of line? I just believe that if my sister wanted to be out of the conservatorship, then there should, you know, that conversation should be had and she should be able to facilitate that. And I would tried many times to do that for her. Brittany believes Jamie Lynn did not try to help her in her time of need, but her little sister claims she tried. So you didn't always agree with the conservatorship? Everyone has a voice and it should be heard. So if she wanted to talk to other people, then I did. I set that up, yes. I would put, I put her in contact with several people who could have helped this situation. How many times can I take the steps without, you know, she has to walk through the door. What was your reaction when the conservatorship was dissolved? I mean, I was happy. I was. First off, I don't understand when it was put into place, nor was I focused on that. I was focused on the fact that I was a 17-year-old about to have a baby. I understand just as little about it then as I do now. But the conservatorship left Brittany feeling betrayed by her whole family. As I was fighting the conservatorship and receiving a lot of press attention, she was writing a book, capitalizing on it. She rushed out salacious stories about me, many of them hurtful and outrageous. I was really let down. Shouldn't sisters be able to confess their fear or vulnerability to each other without that later being used as evidence of instability? Tell me about just how close you were. I felt like she was another mama. It was like, a, it was safe, you know? It was more than love. It's like I adored her. I just, she felt like everything to me, you know? What happened to that love? What has caused this rift between you? Oh, nothing has happened to that love. That love is still there, 100%. Um, I love, I love my sister. And Brittany still clearly has a soft spot for her little sister as well. She will always be my sister, and I love her and her beautiful family. I wish the absolute best for them. While Brittany says she felt wronged by her family, an unlikely savior appeared. Her devoted fans launching the Free Britney movement and they prevailed. Today, effective immediately, the conservatorship has been terminated as to both the person and the estate. This is a monumental day for Britney Spears. After 13 years, Britney was finally free. Posting on social media. I've been on the conservatorship for 13 years. 
It's a really long time to be in a situation you don't want to be in. Um, so I'm just grateful, honestly, for each day and being able to have um, the keys to my car and being able to be independent and feel like a woman and um, owning an ATM card, seeing cash for the first time, being able to buy candles. It's the little things for us women, but it makes a huge difference. The end of her conservatorship, in essence, a breakup with her father. I felt relief sweep over me, the man who had scared me as a child and ruled over me as an adult, who had done more than anyone to undermine my self-confidence, was no longer in control of my life. One of the few bright spots of the conservatorship was her love affair with actor and model Sam Asghari. She says she was instantly smitten when they met on the set of the music video for Slumber Party. After six years of romance with her new freedom, she got married again at their secluded home in Thousand Oaks. Camera A and C. ABC News' Will Reeve caught up with the groom right after the wedding, asking him about his relationship with Britney. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. Personal life is gonna be really, really beautiful. We got married, we moved, we're gonna go to a honeymoon, and we're just happy. Brittany writes about those same hopes for their life together, but the newlywedded bliss lasted just over a year. After finishing the memoir, turmoil bubbled to the surface as Gari filed for divorce and is now seeking spousal support. Writing on Instagram, after six years of love and commitment to each other, my wife and I decided to end our journey together. We will hold on to the love and respect we have for each other, and I wish her the best always. In the nearly two years since Brittany became a free woman, she's communicated with her fans on her terms, her images, her dancing, her worldview, all on her Instagram. Nobody makes a dime off of her when she posts those pictures except her. And for all the people who made jillions of dollars off of her pictures, and so many of them did, you do you, Britney Spears. Britney explaining, I love playing dress up on Instagram. I know that a lot of people don't understand why I love taking pictures of myself naked or in new dresses. But I think if they'd been photographed by other people thousands of times, prodded and posed for other people's approval, they'd understand that I get a lot of joy from posing the way I feel sexy and taking my own picture, doing whatever I want with it. I think for someone like Britney Spears, who came of age at a time where she had virtually no control over her public persona, social media is really transformative. And it's a way for her to recapture her voice and to share what she wants to share. But some posts have raised concerns, including this one where she is dancing with knives. The police were called to do a wellness check. People can make welfare check calls. It's absolutely within their right and their ability. However, they need to be truthful, they need to be verified, they need to be investigated, because welfare checks can be extremely detrimental to a person's life if they are not properly verified. Brittany quickly posted that the knives were fake. Police told ABC News they didn't check to see if the knives were real or not, but were assured of her safety. If we are to take anything away from the book that she has written, 
It's that this is a woman who was lonely, who was manipulated, and who was suffering from postpartum depression. So if that is the case, then we have to erase whatever we have conjured up over the last decade and a half about our thoughts of Britney Spears. <laughs> Despite a major collab with Elton John on Hold Me Closer, Britney says music is not her priority right now. She says she's focusing on her spiritual life, slowing down and finding herself. Every celebrity memoir, rock memoir, I read them all, it seems like, ends in, and now finally I am in a better place. She's not writing that. She's come out of a nightmare, but I don't think anyone would say she's there yet. And that's just fine with her fans, still drawn to her power. She's being forced to don a lot against her will as well. And if she now decides to, I don't want to do this right now, I want to wait, I want to give my own time, it's OK. Brittany has always meant the freedom of self-expression. I think that she's always been really scrutinized for just being herself. I hope that she can just find happiness in whatever it is that she decides to do. So if that at some point turns out to be new music, great. If not, she's given us a lot of great stuff that we can enjoy. These fans flocking to Times Square to celebrate the re-release of Crossroads, a movie Britney made at the tender age of 19. Now, none of us has any idea where life's going to take us, because what we have is now. And right now, we have each other. One of the film's songs, I'm Not a Girl, Not Yet a Woman, inspiring the memoir's title, and perhaps this moment for Britney, nearly two decades later. I'm not That woman is strong. She survived a lot that would break most of us, quite frankly, um, in, in front of millions and millions of people, the world watching. Britney Spears is a strong, badass woman, and I hope she knows that about herself. One of the reasons why I wanted to sit here and tell some of you know these great stories about her is that I want people to refocus on like the fact that there was a real person there. She was this incredibly genuine, sweet, kind, thoughtful girl who just happened to be like an absolutely unbelievable performer and artist, unlike anything that people had ever seen. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television.
Give it to me. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Reporting from the Supreme Court, I'm Rachel Scott. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. We are going to find Natalie. Yaron Vandersloot is no longer the suspect in my daughter's murder. He is the killer. She tells me no, uh, I insist. I get up uh, on the beach and I kick her ex extremely hard. Are you guilty? He also enjoyed the attention. He seemed to relish in it. He wanted the $250,000 reward if he would tell me what happened to Natalie. Did you kill Natalie Holloway? No. What did you make of him as a person? Just a liar, a murderer, and a psychopath. There's absolutely no reason to believe him. Lauren Vandersloot, the subject of an international manhunt. This was astonishing. And it's not fair for the world that we have Yoron alive and we have Natalie dead. We start kissing each other and then she tells me no, uh, I insist and uh, she knees me, uh, she ends up kneeing me in the crotch. I get up uh, on the beach and I kick her ex extremely hard in, in the face. The chilling words of a killer, finally admitting to one of the most infamous crimes in recent memory. I see a huge cinder block laying on the, on the beach. Uh, I take this and uh, yeah, I, I, I smash her head in with it completely. The murder of teen Natalie Holloway. Natalie was such a, a bright star. And then you have this dark, evil place of a person. And it's not fair for the world that we have Yoron alive and, and we have Natalie dead. It, it should be the opposite. Uh, unconscious, possibly even dead. These are words no family should ever have to hear. I grab her. But for Natalie's younger brother, Matt, it's the confession from Yoron Vandersloat uh, up to about my knees into the ocean and I push her off into the sea. He has waited nearly two decades to hear. What was that like for you to hear that? It angers me. It makes me just want to return the favor to him. I think anybody in my position would feel the same way. So I have no regret saying that. I would love to return the favor to him. Is, is this related to the when the 18-year-old from Alabama went missing in 2005, it set off an international firestorm. Terry, tomorrow marks one week since 18-year-old Natalie Holloway vanished. In Aruba, the search for... New details in the case of Natalie Holloway. Natalie Alabama. Holloway's mother. Alabama teenager Natalie Holloway. A story of a missing teen that consumed a family. A small island nation. Early on, the government let every government employee off work. Could you imagine a whole country was out searching for her? And quickly, the world. Natalie's killer playing a years-long game of cat and mouse with the family and authorities, contributing to the seemingly endless coverage. Did you kill Natalie Holloway? No. Did you harm Natalie Holloway? No. Nearly two decades later, the Alabama teen's disappearance still casting a long shadow. Everybody knew that Joran Vandersloot had something to do with it, if not everything to do with it, but they just could not get there. For the Holloway family, it's been a global search for the truth. From Aruba... I said you get a real creepy feeling being here at night. 
to the Netherlands, to Peru, and finally to a courthouse in Alabama. Nellie would be 36 years old today. I still miss her every day. It's been a very long and painful journey, but we finally got the answers we've been searching for for all these years. Well, it's very freeing now to be able to say now he's no longer the suspect in Nellie's disappearance. He is her killer. The string of lies and unanswered questions pushing the family on a seemingly impossible quest for justice. It's been 18 years since you lost your sister. What has been the hardest part for you? It's, it's, it's always there for 18 years. It's always there. Mark? It's funny looking at these photos of you, too. You look like you're thick as thieves. Oh, all the time. So she was always. She was always so caring. Matt Holloway cherishes his memories of his older sister. You got the bunny ears. After their parents divorced, the two grew up in a suburb of Birmingham, Alabama with their mother, seeing their father Dave on the weekends. We were just, I mean, such a tight knit, the three of us together. Her friends had a nickname for her. Uh, they called her Hootie, Hootie Who Holloway. Yes. Who's our special guest today? It's Hootie. Hootie Who Holloway. Hi, friend. Was she the classic big sister? Did she push you around? Oh yeah. oh, yeah, absolutely. She could lay it on me when time came. Two years younger, Matt was 16 when his sister left for that fateful high school graduation trip to Aruba. How excited was she about what was coming up? She just couldn't wait to go. They went shopping, um, oh, for like a whole month in, in advance where they were just getting the outfits, the swimsuits, really preparing. We didn't go to a lot of exotic places like that. Uh, so hearing them getting ready to go to Aruba was, uh, that was a trip of a lifetime. Do you remember when they took off? Yeah, they left early that morning. I just remember just kind of being being in the background, like, hey, have a good time. I, you know, I'll see you next week, so. In May 2005, Natalie and her friends were staying at this Holiday Inn for a five-day celebration. The drinking age in Aruba, just 18. Before heading home, she and her friends are out for a final night. They go to a bar. Carlos and Charlie's was like any other club that you can go in there, you can dance, and you have shots, they have shows. You see everybody in Carlos and Charlie's. That was the club. The night that Natalie disappeared, I was at Carlos and Charlie's with a group, a group of friends. And these kids were all like 16, 17, 18 years old, and they were just jumping and singing. At some point, Natalie meets 17-year-old Joran van der Sloot, a Dutch national and son of a prominent lawyer on the island. Joran was a, a loose cannon, could never be controlled by his parents. He was just known to be, you know, a gambler and a, a drinker. The last anybody remembers, Natalie was seen driving off in a, in a vehicle with a young man. He seemed like a tourist. He seemed harmless. Everybody assumed that she was going to make it back to the Holiday Inn fine that night, and she just never showed up again. So everybody is getting ready to come back to the U.S. Natalie's roommate realizes she's not here. I don't see her. So they go back up to the room, and her bags are still there. Her passport. Her passport is still there. She's nowhere to be found. So they notify a chaperone. Natalie's not with us. And who then notifies Beth, Natalie's mother, that nobody knows where she is. Home in Alabama, Natalie's mother, Beth, got the call every parent dreads. Her daughter didn't show up for her flight home. I knew something was terribly wrong. This was not Natalie. Beth immediately flew to Aruba, retracing her daughter's last steps. What I saw on the footage from the Excelsior Casino was Natalie was seated at this blackjack table, just kind of her own little space. There was surveillance video from a casino where she's seen with Yoram. And so immediately that leads the authorities to him. He's the last known person to have been with her. Once I saw him, I was like, we've got it, let's go. It's time to go to the police now. She sprung into action, convincing police to accompany her to the Vandersloot home. When they arrived, Joran told authorities he and Natalie fooled around a little, and then he and two friends dropped her off at the hotel. Police had the security tapes ready from the 
lobby entrance where Yaron said that he dropped Natalie off. And as we watched the tape and the night turned into daylight on the screen, Natalie never appeared. Beth realized the story Yoren told police was not true, the first in what would become an endless string of lies. So I thought now, OK, this is it. They can go get these men and arrest them. It didn't happen. Instead, the police suggested Natalie ran off. The police tell me to, you know, this happens a lot. So don't really worry about her too much. She'll show back up. Don't worry about it. Desperate to find their daughter, Natalie's parents, Beth and Dave, along with their friends, organized search parties. Everybody kind of split up. Someone get over there and then someone go down that road. Me and my dad, we, we got on ATVs. I mean, there were times where I would drive off down into like over like a hilltop and I, I, would, I would shout out Natalie's name just as loud as I could, hoping I would hear something back. I mean, I did that for about two days straight. Part of Beth's plan to keep the pressure on and Natalie's name in the headlines was media exposure. Please help bring her home. She agreed to sit down with me in an exclusive interview just days after Natalie disappeared. Missing in paradise, the Alabama teen at the heart of a massive search. Will you even let your mind entertain the possibility that you might not find her? The, no, the, there again, that's not an option. Is, is any parent's worst nightmare, Deborah? There, there is no other worst nightmare. Thanks, everyone, thank you everybody okay? for their help. Please keep looking for Please, her, thank okay? You. I appreciate it so much. I also spoke to Natalie's father, Dave. Why do you still feel that every day you've got to go out there? You know, I just can't sit in a hotel room. It's, you'll, you'll drive yourself crazy pacing the floor, and I just feel like I have to be out there looking. Natalie's friends home in Alabama made prayer bracelets, hoping for her safe return. She's smart. She's, she's going to be fine. She's coming home. Were you holding on to hope at that point? Oh, yeah. I never, I, I held on to hope for a long time. We were all determined that we were going to find her. But the search for Natalie quickly turning into an investigation. Nearly two weeks later, Yoren and two of his friends were arrested. Are you guilty? Those friends released after nearly a month of detention. In Aruba, two of three young men held in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway are now free. Back in the States, parents began keeping a closer eye on their teen daughters. Tori and Tyrella were around Natalie's age at the time. They now run a popular true crime podcast called Killer Queens. We have had so many requests for this case. Mm -hmm. I was not 18 yet, but I was like, my parents are never going to let me go anywhere outside of the country, probably let alone outside of the state after something like this has happened. I was like, OK, so I'm going to be homebound for forever. More than two months after Natalie had disappeared, the reward for information was up to $250,000, with a million-dollar reward for her safe return. Every twist and turn in the case fed nonstop media coverage over the summer. And you have never wavered in saying, you will be there. You will be there until your daughter is found. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Only when Hurricane Katrina hit in late August 2005 did Natalie Holloway's name disappear from the headlines. Hurricane Katrina is now a Category 5. While the country's attention focused on an American city underwater, in early September, Yoren was released from jail, the police saying they didn't have enough evidence. And as soon as that happened, it was over. Joran moved to the Netherlands to go to college, but didn't stay out of the spotlight for long. In 2006, he came to New York for an exclusive interview with ABC News. I understand if uh, Natalie's family is mad at me, and she, they point their attention towards me. Did you kill Natalie Holloway? No. Did you harm Natalie Holloway? No. And why should you be believed after all the lying that you've done in this situation? There's absolutely no reason to believe me. He also enjoyed the attention. He um, seemed to relish in it. He's not the type of person that is going to be upset about bad publicity. Anything is good publicity to Joran Vandersloot. What did you make of him as a, as a person, as a character? Yeah, just a complete disgusting person. Um, a liar, a murderer, and a psychopath. 
For five years, Natalie's case goes cold. Then, in 2010, Beth's longtime attorney, John Q. Kelly, received something completely unexpected, an offer from Joran Vandersloot. We have really good news. <laughs> oh I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. I'm Rebecca Jarvis reporting from the New York Stock Exchange. And wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. You know, everything does look very different here, especially at night. It's gonna be on the left. It's creepy, it's deserted. I would not have wanted to have been Natalie with someone like Neuron. This is the place where Natalie Holloway is believed to have taken her last breath. I think the story Starts here and ends here. Not far from Aruba's bright lights and tourist traps, the story ends at a dark, desolate beach, a place few would ever venture over to find. And we only know this because Joran Vandersloot said so. It's here where he has admitted multiple times that he was walking with Natalie on May 30th, 2005. Just out of the blue, I get an email that says, John, this is your aunt. I want to talk, you know, about certain things. It's now 2010, five years since Natalie Holloway went missing. Five years since the world learned Joran's name. And now, seemingly out of nowhere, Joran says he has a story to tell, and he wants to tell it to Beth's longtime attorney, John Q. Kelly. He wanted the $250,000 reward if he would tell me what happened to Natalie and where she could be found. And I said, let me check with the client. You know, she's desperate to find out where her daughter is or what happened to her. So Yoron agrees to disclose what he knows about the death of Natalie Holloway, his involvement in killing her in exchange for $250,000. They pay him $25,000 up front. Working with the FBI and other U.S. authorities, they orchestrated a sting operation in Aruba. They were in the next room, you know, had all their equipment set up, told me they had, uh, you know, audio tape, uh, microphones in the next room where I was going to meet with Euron. Rented a car with video cameras in it. It was time to call Euron and see if he was going to come over. He did and took Kelly down to this very spot on Aruba's coastline 
where he said he and Natalie were fooling around the night she disappeared. He is very obviously trying to take advantage of somebody who may be in a vulnerable state. He does everything he can to get them isolated and away from other people. He sets that up very strategically. And then when he doesn't get the response that he wants, he snaps. But that was just the beginning of the tale. He told Kelly where Natalie's body was buried in the foundation of this house. I dropped him off at, I think, one of the casinos again. And that was it. The FBI was all high-fiving and telling me what a great job I did. It's that they had everything on videotape. Went back to New York and was waiting for one of those uh, banner headlines coming across that, you know, you weren't being a sleuth and been arrested in Aruba for extortion wire fraud. And didn't come, didn't come. A week, two weeks, three weeks, nothing from the FBI. You gotta remember, we're still aghast in a foreign country. You know, it's a sovereign country. We have no jurisdiction. And yes, would the FBI have liked to have gotten their hands on him right then? Of course. And to add insult to injury, Yoren emailed again, this time saying he'd made up the entire story. And then he quickly retracted everything. It was like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, I remember my mom saying he got the money and disappeared and said, um, I lied about everything. You shouldn't be so naive. Sickening. That had to be a punch to your oh, mother, your family. It was, but we knew we got him. At that point, he was ours. And the next I heard, someone told me to flip on the TV. Joran van der Slut, once suspected in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway in Aruba, is being sought as a suspect in the death of a woman in Peru. Police say he murdered a young woman he took to his hotel room. Tonight, he's the subject of an international manhunt. Just one month after taking the money and before U.S. authorities could indict him, Joran fled to Peru, where Five years to the day of Natalie Holloway's disappearance in Aruba on May 30th, 2010, he murders 21-year-old Stephanie Flores. This was astonishing. The idea that the chief suspect in the death of Natalie Holloway has now been charged with another murder of a young woman, and the evidence seemed overwhelming. I think anyone who had covered this case almost couldn't believe it. You later learn that he is charged with murder in Peru in the death of Stephanie Flores. What did you think when you heard that? I had mixed emotions. I was devastated, and I was also not surprised. So I just had a feeling that, that he was going to resurface with another victim. At the same time in the US, that sting operation into Natalie's death well, it was beginning to bear fruit. This morning, my office obtained an arrest warrant for Joran von der Sloot based upon a complaint charging him with extortion and wire fraud. Extortion and wire fraud charges in the U.S., murder charges in Peru. Joran's house of cards came crashing down. He's all over camera footage with Stephanie in the hotel. She's found in his hotel room. There's not really a lot that you can do to distance yourself from that in the way that he was able to distance himself from the Natalie Holloway case. And at this point, he's pretty much caught red-handed. His fingerprints are everywhere. There are cigarette butts. There are soda bottles, coffee cups, all presumably containing DNA. Still, the reality of catching Yorin was bittersweet. I had to deal with the fact, as did Beth, that your aunt was given the $25,000 that he used to get over to Peru and eventually killed another girl on Natalie's anniversary. I felt really badly then, and I still feel badly now. Not that it was my fault, but I in some way enabled it. This time, Joran pleads guilty. Culpable or innocent? There's no... Primero momento siempre, siempre has dado un confesión sincero. The Stephanie Flores case confirmed for many people what they believed in the Natalie Holloway case, which is that Joran Vandersloot was a murderer. 
Did that in your mind validate your feelings and your thoughts that he had killed your sister to learn that he was charged with murder in yes. her death? When he officially, their court system, found him guilty of murder, then I knew that for a fact he did the same thing to Natalie. So that was, that in was your it. mind, that, that was, was it. it. That was it. That was it. Yorn sentenced to 28 years to be served at a remote prison in the Andes Mountains. But justice for Natalie Holloway in America would elude the family for years to come. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. We have really good news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. I've been described this way, dry and mighty. <laughs> Let's talk dirty. When you got number two. You do do. Excuse me. <laughs> Sex always ends this way. Let me guess, these are things that end with crying? <laughs> Michael Strahan hosts The $100,000 Pyramid, Wednesdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. <laughs> Reporting from Bedminster, New Jersey, I'm Mary Bruce. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Thirteen years after Joran van der Sloot's guilty plea to murder in Peru, in June of this year, he was extradited to Alabama, finally facing those charges from 2010 of extortion and wire fraud from when he demanded money from Natalie's mom in exchange for details about her daughter's death. They were expecting a plea to the extortion charges, and to everyone's surprise, he ends up confessing to Natalie Holloway's murder. A stunning revelation. The details of what happened to Natalie, and this time taking a polygraph while doing it. Joran van der Sloot is a serial liar. And so the authorities here wanted to do everything they could to verify his account. It seems that admitting to the murder and providing accurate information was the only way that prosecutors were going to agree to this plea deal for Joran, and the only way that Beth Holloway was going to sign off on it. 
This is from the tape of that admission. We'll warn you, it's graphic and disturbing. I see a huge cinder block laying on the, on the beach. Uh, I take this and uh, yeah, I, I, I smash her head in with it completely. Joran's confession was pretty brutal. What was that like for you to hear that from him and to hear his voice in court? I was ready to hear it. And I think I needed to hear it at the same time. And, and as difficult as it was? Yeah, as difficult and as graphic, I needed to hear it. Finally, what Joran said, he did with Natalie's body. So I grab her and I I half, uh, half pull and half walk with her into the ocean. I push her off. Uh, I walk up uh, up to about my knees into the ocean and I push her off into, into, the, into the sea. And when he talks about putting her in the ocean, that he disposed of her body, putting her in the ocean, was that a surprise to you? Was that shocking to you? I believe that, that that's that's why we can't find her body, um, that he walked her knee deep and, and pushed her off into the water. I mean, it's just what a cowardly way to, to do things. Matt Holloway was there in the courtroom when Joran pleaded guilty. Finally, face to face with his sister's killer for the first time. What was that like for you to see, for you to see your and Vandersloot in court. I loved every minute of it. I hate the guy. And then at the same time, I was feeling happy that he's finally having to answer to, to something he did, something that he did wrong. He was so powerful to me at the night of May 31st of 2005. It's just he and I. We're outside at the Holiday Inn Hotel. I'm in the rental car seated, but the door is open and he is right here leaning above me. You know, Yaron's a big guy, you know. He's a big guy. He's like 6'5". And um, so he had all that power over me. Yet now, swing it to today, I was able to turn around now, and I had the power over him. Yorin was sentenced to 20 years in prison for wire fraud and extortion in the U.S. to be served concurrently with his 28-year sentence for Stephanie Flores' murder in Peru. <laughs> After pleading guilty in the U.S., he's flown back to Peru. Where he'll serve the remainder of his sentence. As for the killing of Natalie Holloway... Aruba has a 12-year statute of limitations for murder. So Joran Vandersloot knows that he can come clean about this get the benefit of a deal on the wire fraud and extortion and know that he won't be charged in connection with her murder. He's eligible for release now in Peru around 2045. If he had not made this deal, he would have had to serve his time in Peru and still potentially face the possibility of extradition to the United States after the fact. If he indeed gets out of prison in just over 20 years, will be able to go on with his life. How does that hit you, knowing that Natalie never had that opportunity? Oh, that's terrible. Uh, that's 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 what gets me. Uh, he took that away from her. I mean, he took away nieces from me. He took away nephews. That's what breaks my heart. She always wanted to be a doctor. That's all she ever talked about. Natalie would have been caring and so kind and. I couldn't even imagine how many lives that, that she would she would have have saved. Still, all these years later, finally having answers to what Yorin did to Natalie gives some long overdue closure the Holloway family had been missing. I was glad to remind him that you are a murderer now. And that's when I told him that every time that jail cell door slams shut, you are a killer. And that you didn't get what you wanted from Natalie. And now, he will spend the rest of his days in Peru in his little rat hole. After 18 years, your mom said that she was finally able to sleep a little bit peacefully after hearing this confession. What about you? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I slept great too. It was that that uh, night uh, we went we went back to her house and it was a celebration for us. A celebration. It was such a relief because that was our first victory that we've had. That was our first true win. It was a small one, but we were just we're so thankful for it. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. All right, here we go, you ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime.
We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now wherever you stream your news. It would be a slow night for a threesome. The show itself, huge. I was probably a good six Percocet 30s deep while on live TV. Eventually, that type of behavior Mike, Mike, Mike. is like a domino. I had smuggled in hundreds of prescription pills to Italy through my, bought up my shoe in an Altoid case. I was actually going through withdrawals on camera, and America didn't even know that. I had the mindset of whatever happens, happens, and what happened was they sent me to prison. In the moment when you knocked on the door, and did you know what was about to happen? I had no idea. My wife saved my life. Let the fist pumping begin. Well, here we are. People think they know about the situation. You have no idea. The world came to know him as the situation. All right, we got a situation. My abs are so ripped up, it's called the situation. From MTV's hit show, Jersey Shore, spanning six seasons. Reality TV's self-proclaimed original Guido. A Guido is a good-looking, smooth, well-dressed Italian. The cocky, shirtless club rat everyone loved to hate. when he walked in for a casting, they were like, oh yeah, this is our guy. I mean, he was TV gold. Synonymous with fist pumping, bottle popping, God, ripped abs, and this, lots and lots of it. The success of the show, it skyrocketed everything. It was like gasoline on a fire. Talk about being a lottery winner. You go to a house and party for the summer, and the next thing you know, we're now in it 15 years later. And Mike the Situation, and all of his excesses, was at the center of it all. You kind of wanted to root for him because you felt like he was trying, but then you also were like, wait, now you know better. But behind his on-screen persona, which triggered and charmed fans, Mike was struggling with his own painful reality, a brutal battle with addiction. I never told anybody that story before. Um, it's a very dark story, you know, um, and it could have cost me my life. It's incredible, like, just everything that you went through to be here healthy, sober, with a family. At any point, did you think, I should be dead right now? Oh, God, there's, there's many moments that could have led to um, my demise or death, and I'm very lucky to be here um, sharing my story with you today. Mike now sharing how he flipped his narrative from multiple trips to rehab, federal prison lockup, hitting rock bottom, but ultimately reclaiming his life. I believe that, um, or I hoped that my life story one day would be someone else's survival guide. Jersey Shore was just the latest MTV show that signaled the network's shift. It's a live blowout with performances from the Beastie Boys. From music videos. I want my MTV. To reality TV. This is the true story. MTV's The Real World was the start of it all, premiering in 1992. The Real World. When The Real World premiered, we couldn't get enough. It was literally an insatiable appetite. Crazy. In the years that followed, viewers would fall in love with the Osbournes, giving them front row seats to the beloved dysfunction of Ozzy Osbourne's home life. Rock and roll! Sharon! Sharon! Ozzy! 
luck to the window. What's up, y'all? Big Snoop Deal Double G. I want to welcome y'all to my house. And Cribs, another spotlight on celebrity. But Jersey Shore took reality TV to a whole new level. This is their living room. Sally Ann Salsano, the executive producer and creator of Jersey Shore, has been running the show from day one. Oh, wakey, wakey. Oddly enough, the Jersey Shore was an incoming call. There was a network executive that wanted to do a show on a bunch of guidos. Jersey Shore focused on a group of eight roomies, all living, working, and partying together in this nondescript six-bedroom house, just steps away from the boardwalk of Seaside Heights, New Jersey. There's alcohol involved, and there's good times, and there's warm weather, not a lot of clothing. You never know what's gonna happen. In 2009, the cast went from anonymity to reality stars overnight. Snooki, the four foot eight flirt, famous for her poof and cheetah print. We're all real and we like to have a good time and you know, we say what other people are scared to say. Pauly D, the house DJ, always ready to hit the club with his perfectly coiffed hair. It's a 25 minute process, <laughs> but um, I take my pride in it. The fiery, fiercely loyal Wow. We really just relied on each other a lot. Drama prone Ronnie. Cameras definitely cameras? add a little bit of stress. Dina, Angelina, Sammy, and resident mama's boy, the baby-faced Vinny Guadagnino. Jim Tanny Laundry, you know, that's how they like make the guidos. And then of course, the situation. Jim Tan Laundry is a way of life. It's really just self-care. Everyone loved to hate Mike, but also everyone loved to love Mike. Because there was a lot about Mike where you agreed with half the stuff he was saying. With cameras filming their every move, the show captured raw, unbridled drama like never before. Hold my earrings, please. Great. 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 Oh, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> too, girl. Don't get snook. <laughs> The show definitely had an impact on pop culture. The scariest thing to me is that it had an impact on fashion. I would go out and be like, oh my God, this is bananas. Jersey Shore would revitalize an ailing MTV and become one of the most watched series in the network's history, reaching nearly 9 million viewers at its height. The show itself, oh, huge. Mega, mega show. Jersey Shore was definitely a ratings juggernaut. Like, people tuned in. Outside of the house would be anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 people, 24 hours a day. After just three weeks on the air, the show was parodied by SNL, a sign of the impending wave of Jersey Shore mania. Oh, no, it's like the situation. The show prompting a slew of international spin-offs, including in Mexico. Spain, Gandia Shore, muy pronto, and Poland. Warsaw Shore, equipa z Warszawy. And even years later, the infamous house becoming a tourist destination. For 3,500 a night, you can live out your Jersey Shore fantasy. Rent the Jersey Shore house for my sister's 25th birthday. Did you ever think that the show would be this popular? I'm a positive guy, but I don't think I could have foreseen this. You know, this is, you know, you turn 15 minutes of fame into 15 years, that's unheard of. Mike Sorrentino grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey and began modeling in his mid-20s, showing off those washboard abs. I ran into a casting sign for uh, the hottest guidos and guidettes in the tri-state area. I was like, well, I'm Italian, that kind of describes me, uh, I'm in amazing shape. And that's really where it started. In his upcoming raw and unfiltered memoir, Reality Check, Mike writes, There was no other career prospects on the horizon. I had no backup plan. I was the backup plan. At the time, all I had to my name was $7 and a six pack. Jersey Shore eventually calls you. What was your reaction when you got that call and they said, we want you to be on this show? I mean, they called me and I definitely had goosebumps. I was uh, couch hopping at the time. So by me getting that call, I had felt that it was a sign from, from above. Fast forward, the show was a wild success. Mike's lifestyle went from zero to 60. The millions are coming in. Your phone is off the hook from sponsors. Appearances, 
women, you're on a flight every single day, you're exhausted, and then if you start to make the decision that, hey, maybe if I take this substance and self-medicate, I'll feel better and I'll be able to perform better. He says he relied on prescription opioids, a habit he picked up even before the show's launch. I always had an obsessive personality. Everything was either zero or 100. It became clear to everyone but me that my addiction had reappeared with a vengeance, clenching me in a ferocious hold. I was high all the time, taking upwards of 20 pills a day. Meanwhile, Mike's star was continuing to rise meteorically. Dancing the Foxtrot, the situation. Even competing on Dancing with the Stars at the show's zenith. On Dancing with the Stars, they didn't know that I was probably a good six Percocet 30s deep while on live TV. He says he was high, even while on set for Jersey Shore. For every single season, um, would be like Mission Impossible for me to try to smuggle uh, various amounts of drugs into the house or a different state or a different country. We absolutely had a no drug policy on the show, no drugs on set. But I always say good people do bad things and if you want to do something, you can always find a way to get it done. Mike had a lot of struggles and a lot of issues that he was hiding from all of us. But Mike was a tough one to wrangle. Mike would go missing. Mike gave us a run for our money. Was there a moment when you realized, okay, this is it, I really need some help? There was many times in my life that I thought to myself, wow, I really need some help. And that first time probably was in 2012 when I was in the Italy season. I was actually going through withdrawals on camera and America didn't even know. They just saw me ram my head into a concrete wall. I remember uh, that. I had smuggled in hundreds of prescription pills to Italy through my uh, bottom of my shoe in an Altoid case. And eventually those hundreds of pills ran out. I was started to go through withdrawal and I couldn't believe, I'm like, how am I going through withdrawal on the biggest TV show in the country at the time? I mean, imagine going through withdrawals with uh, five big cameras pointing at your face. What were you feeling? What is that like? I mean, your skin is crawling. You are cold and you're hot at the same time. You're sweating, you have a headache your nose is running, you feel that you're going to uh, possibly even vomit. I tried to drink copious amounts of alcohol to sort of get away from some of those um, uh, withdrawal feelings. That didn't really work. And then one night, Ronnie sort of picked a fight with me at my weakest moment, and then you saw what I saw. Oh, look at me, you okay? I think almost like subconsciously, that act of almost like self-sabotage mm. caused me to go to a hospital. And guess what's gonna happen when that happens? They're gonna prescribe me an opiate because I have a concussion and a sprained neck. I don't think that that was what I planned to do, but maybe subconsciously, deep down, you know? Like a s scream for help. Yeah. For years, Mike says he was in and out of rehab. It was very important to me to hide my addiction from the world. I worried that if people knew the full story, if they realized how many times I'd failed at sobriety, they would think less of me. Eventually, that type of behavior is like a domino. We have really good news. Oh my God, <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. The 
destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7 straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Uh -oh. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> Generation Gap. Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. All I could see was their feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. We were definitely against the clock. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime, Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Partying, drugs, and drinking weren't the only things Mike says he did to extreme levels. There was also lots of sex with groupies and random hookups, as he bragged about to ABC in 2011. If these walls could talk, Mike, what would they say? Mike, you are a pimp. I was just a ladies' man. I was just really good with women. Was that the norm, that type of lifestyle for you? That was a time of excess in the heyday of the start of Jersey Shore, it would be a slow night for a threesome. A slow night? Slow night. There was upwards of 10 naked, beautiful women in my room at one particular time. And I thought to myself, is this my life? The show was vulgar, loud, and offensive, often objectifying women in ways that would not pass muster in 2023 like the coining of the term grenade to refer to women they didn't find attractive. I will extract the hot one and leave the grenade to blow up in Ronnie's room by herself. The terms that they came up with to describe women, all of it is very, very questionable. Jersey Shore set a record for MTV when its season finale aired last Thank week. You. It was the most watched show in the network's history. The cast, high on the show's success, commanded substantial raises for seasons two and three. We got like million dollar raises. I went straight to a, uh, a Ferrari dealership and I had uh, a pocket full of pills in my, in my pocket as well. I was just young and inexperienced and you think at that particular time period that you're invincible. And eventually years later, um, I would find out that that was not true. That success fueling and financing an unsustainable lifestyle, especially after the show wrapped in 2012. Mike says he was spiraling out of control. He even considered selling his own sex tape featuring him and a group of women. 
But I remember having a conversation with my mom and with my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, to say, hey, listen, times is dire. And there is a secret sex tape that I do possess that I had for emergency situations, mm. I guess pun intended. <laughs> He ultimately decided against trying to cash in on the tape. He had recently gotten back with his college sweetheart, Lauren, and he says the money wouldn't have been worth it. For years, he struggled to get a handle on his life, hitting a breaking point in 2015. I was in a really bad place. I was broke, I was unemployed, and I was depressed. Self-doubt was through the roof. I had lost the millions and the Ferraris, and I pretty much was in and at rock bottom. And I called up my friend who I used to party with. I was looking to just cop some prescription painkillers, you know, that's what I was looking to do. And he said, don't worry, Mike, I got you. He said, uh, come pick me up. Instead of the usual pills, this time Mike came home with something he vowed he would never do, heroin. I told myself, all right, you know what? Maybe I'll just try it. So. Um, I locked my door and I told Lauren that I was going to sleep for the night and that I wanted to be alone. So I just took a little key bump of it and I tried it. So then I went in for another key bump and at that very moment, my phone rings. It was my mother and my mom's like, are you okay? She had a feeling. She had a feeling. And I said, I'm fine, Mom, why? She goes, I feel like something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And this was a come to God moment. As she said that, I, I took that as a message from the Almighty, and I put it down, and as I hung up the phone, knock on the door, a second angel. Lauren. She was right there. Yeah, my wife. Yep, my wife was knocking at the door at the same time. So it is a, a definitely a very emotional moment for me. They, they saved me. This wasn't the first time Lauren had stood by his side through his struggles with addiction. In the moment when you knocked on the door and you stopped him, did you know what was about to happen? I had no idea. I knew that he was suffering. I knew that he was an addict. I didn't know his whole side of it. This experience led him to rehab for the final time. Before, I didn't take it seriously. I would just uh, get detoxed physically. And I, I didn't do the necessary work mentally and spiritually that was needed to have a full recovery. And the fourth time, with my back against the wall, my life was on the line. I had no other choice. Did you have those moments where you were just livid that this was still an ongoing problem? Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely had those moments. But I think the difference was that I had the history with Mike, and I had known him before his addiction. I had known him during his addiction, and I knew him after his first rehab. So I had seen the cycle, and I knew that he could do it, and I knew the man he was without drugs. And to me, that was a man worth fighting for. In 2018, now sober, Mike reunited with his squad for a reboot, Jersey Shore Family Vacation. The cast arguably all grown up with careers, spouses, and even children. We've partied hard before, yep. but I've never seen anybody party like a mom. They like funnel wine. <laughs> Some things never change including their friendship. This is a vacation from our real lives. Yeah. And we really took advantage of it. Every yeah. single day we talk. Oh, our group chat is amazing. <laughs> yeah. The day that we our left the house, we were texting each other. Yeah. Like, we have this just unbreakable bond. Get back, bitches! While much was the same, Mike says the situation had come a long way from his early days in Seaside Heights. People are surprised to hear you're sober in this. Yeah, 28 months. Mm -hmm. 28 months. I'm yeah. very proud of him. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. He took care of us. And they supported me every single night that we went out. And before I even got here uh, to do this show, I was already two years sober. He had already been about two years mm -hmm. sober when he got that offer. Had it come any earlier than that, I don't know that I'd have that confidence. Mm -hmm. 
but it truly came at the right time mm -hmm. where I was able to feel excitement that he was being rewarded for his work and what he's good at and given an opportunity to show the world who he actually is. But as he showed the world this new version of himself, parts of his past followed him. Okay, the left of the barrier. Eventually, years of overindulgence and financial recklessness caught up with him. How is the situation? No pun intended, bro. Uncle Sam came knocking at the door, you know? I thought things were amazing, you know? I was a, an amazing earner. Uh, everyone loved me on TV. Uh, but Uncle Sam was saying that uh, things were not done properly. And I had no idea. Mike, along with his brother Mark, was indicted in 2014 for tax evasion and fraud, having allegedly failed to pay taxes on $8.9 million of income. You go from, you know, not having to file a tax return because you didn't make enough money, and you're a young kid in his 20s, and this was partly my mistake, till the next year making millions. The indictment also mentions drawing from business accounts to pay for personal items, such as high-end luxury vehicles and clothing. I was careless, I was reckless. I had the mindset of whatever happens, happens. And what happened was, they sent me to prison. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. the globe the world will be celebrating the new year and you can see it as it happens live the global celebrations see the new year as it comes in live. streaming all day and night on abc news live abc news live prime winner of the gracie award for best news program in all of television stream abc news live prime with lindsey davis weeknights on abc news live I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <gasps> Welcome to Crux, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner, our Crux 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. The case dragged on for years until Mike ultimately pleaded guilty and in October of 2018 was sentenced to eight months in federal prison. The reality star known as The Situation pleaded guilty today. I felt like I'd been knocked down in a prize fight. At that moment, I went to one knee. I clenched my eyes tight and said a prayer to God before rising to my feet. It was in a very emotional time and I was in early sobriety at the time. I was uh, two or three years sober. I wanted to handle these mistakes in front of the world, uh, which I knew the world was watching, with grace and class and show an example of how a man should act. Just weeks after Mike was sentenced, he married his longtime on and off girlfriend, Lauren. Okay. Oh, honey, you did an amazing job picking oh, up I this album. I haven't seen this in a while. Ooh. 
Beautiful. Five years. Okay. Oh. This is the day. Look at you guys. I know, right? If you look through any of those photos, you're going to see a, a couple madly in love, mm -hmm. not a couple that is going through a dark time. Mm -hmm. And what was that like, being a newlywed and now alone? That was really hard. Mm -hmm. However, addiction was so much harder. Oh, yeah. So much harder. Mm -hmm. And the sentence and him turning himself in it was horrible but everyone saw it as like the worst part of the story but for us it was our light at the end of the tunnel after mike reported to prison in january of 2019 lauren would drive two and a half hours to upstate new york every friday to visit her new husband did you think lauren would be here after all these years she stood by your side yeah. through a lot she did she did my wife saved my life you know, my wife is the one that has propelled me through or inspired me through all of those tough times. Did this time change you at all? It definitely changed me. I mean, going into prison, you're away from your family. You're not able to provide for your family, pay bills. But I read the Bible. I, 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 I would spread that message of, of positivity to the other inmates. And I was very proud of how I used my stay in prison. I became a better man. The couple relied on faith to get them through these difficult months. God was with me when I didn't think I was with anyone, you know? I was never alone. God was with me the whole time. It's like the footprints. It's when there's two footprints in the sand. Yes. And then when there's yeah. just one, it's because he carried you. Yeah. So a lot of the times, I know, for myself, there were many moments where that was all I had, was to pray about things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what I did. <laughs> Mike was released from prison in September 2019. Where to? <sighs> Back to the Jersey Shore. <laughs> and began sharing his story, hoping to inspire others. All energy went into being my best self. The situation was morphing into the inspiration. If you look too far ahead, you're going to trip. So I take it one day at a time. I don't think that people realize that when you help other people, you help yourself. So me and my wife, to this day, we do appearances, we work at treatment centers, we share our message, and it's one of the most rewarding things we've done in life. Today, with a house and a yard in the suburbs of New Jersey, and a third kid on the way, his life is unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that the situation would also have no. a chicken coop in his backyard? Mm -mm. Nope, nope, not no. at all. But still, true to himself, decked in Versace, Mike shows me his latest project. Nine chicks, and guess what I named them after? Your castmates? Yes. So there's a Snooky in there. Yes, we have a Snooky in there, <laughs> a DJ Poly D. We have them all there. There's obviously a, a situation there as well. We and you said this was always kind of on your bucket list, right? To, yes. To have yes. chickens. Yes. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm really proud. I executed on my vision. I have chickens in the backyard. We're about to have eggs. More than a decade after the debut of Jersey Shore and in the midst of filming their seventh season of Family Vacation, Mike is back in Seaside Heights at the house where it all began. Wow. Well, here we are. Seemingly frozen in time. Nadella, it's your first time at the Shore House. Exactly. You've come a long way. You want to take a walk around? Yeah, let's yeah. show Nadella around. The house still smells the same. It looks the same. It's really special for me to come back here. I've had so many moments here and so many special Memories. Happy to go on the boardwalk. It's a beautiful day. The old stomping grounds on the boardwalk, more or less unchanged. Romeo, look, it's Daddy. Oh, there's Daddy. Wait, it's Aunt. That's Aunt Snooky. But the man standing here today, surrounded by his family, now finds himself in an entirely new situation. I'd have to say that my biggest flex is being a dad. 
you suburban know. Suburban dad. It, it, you know, I love being a sober dad. I love being a husband. The money and the cars, I've been done that. I've been on all the shows. What impresses me is the man that you are, okay? The dad that you are, the husband that you are. That impresses me. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? How <laughs> cute. <laughs> yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. This is going to be a phenomenon. There was this boom of reality show content. It's Game of Thrones. You're killing or you're being killed. You were good friends with Andy Cohen. He made you a star. He didn't make me a star. He made himself a star on the backs of all of these women. The reality TV reckoning. The new Bethany Clause. Do you think it's up to the producers to cut somebody off? I think that bars cut people off. 
So if you see someone who is drinking to the point where they are not making sense, start giving them water. Can you put maybe like two more shots of vodka? In no, these I'm your mother. You're living with the consequences of your actions while the whole world can watch them until the end of time. They are absolutely signing up for that. These people want to be on TV. They want to get a contract. They want to be on this show. The executives, the producers, they hold your edit in their hands. Chew you up and spit you up. Exactly. Once the money's been made, and they can't make any more money off of you. Are you biting the hand that fed you? That hand that did feed me deserves to be bitten. It's time. No barking oh, for you. That's no so barking. Well, do you want? All right, do you want to see where the, the magic happens? Absolutely. Okay. We're inside the palace with the once reigning queen of reality TV. This is the glam room. Oh my gosh! It's exactly as I would imagine Bethany's closet. Really? Yeah. Yay! It's perfectly organized. Thank you. It's it is perfectly perfect. curated. You like tell it like it is, unfiltered. That's always been your brand. I do, I do. But I, even to say it's a brand feels like it's not being honest. If somebody came to you and said, you know, Bethany, I'm thinking of signing up for a reality show, what would you say? They think it's going to be the fun next chapter. They don't realize that it could put them in a detrimental situation. Is that the price of fame? It might be the price of fame. You are the most unintelligent human being really? I've ever had the pleasure to be around. When it comes to the Real Housewives franchise, there's perhaps no one more famous than Bethany Frankel. After nearly two decades in the reality game, nearly 400 episodes across four networks, Bethany leveraged all that reality TV fame, or infamy, and launched an empire. One of her most famous products, Skinny Girl Margarita. Hi, I'm Bethany, creator of the Skinny Girl Margarita, the margarita you can trust. Bethany is essentially an elder statesman of the genre, and now she's trying to launch a revolution, the so-called reality reckoning. Reality television exploits affairs, bankruptcy, falling off the wagon, saying something inappropriate, risking cancellation every single time the camera goes on. You called it the reality reckoning. Yes. It was OK to do things that one day we all woke up and said, how is that OK? This isn't about you clawing for money. I don't, I haven't asked for one thing. I don't want one thing. I want to be respected, and I'm going to change the entertainment industry. I myself have generated millions and millions of dollars in advertising and online impressions being on reality TV and have never made a single residual. And now other reality stars are rallying too, arguing that when they joined the reality TV industry, they signed away more than they bargained for. From Netflix's smash hit Love is Blind. I think the connection that we built is so strong. In those contracts, there's language that says we can misrepresent you, we can defame you. To Bravo's juggernaut franchise, The Real Housewives. Can you put maybe like two more shots of vodka? In no, these I'm your mother. Not I'm that. glad that the shows bring people joy. I just think there is a way to make shows without ruining people's lives. The stars say the chaos that makes these shows so addictive comes at a high cost to their real lives. This group of talent is the most overworked, overexploited, and least compensated. There's no group that has a greater risk. They're clearly being exploited. Exploiting the reality TV star is, is the whole point of the show. But they are absolutely signing up for that. The benefit is that people who are on reality shows, it's become a reality show career for people. It's your life on display. Correct. And your mess ups on display. Yeah. It's a weird workplace, but it's a workplace. It's Game of Thrones. You're killing or you're being killed. There is no middle. There is no gray. Gray are women that become friends or women that become fired. Watching things like that normalizes bad behavior. You know, these shows normalize substance abuse. They normalize physical violence with the cat fights that break out. And it normalizes emotionally abusive behaviors. But some would argue that behavior is exactly the thrill of reality TV. And some fans wonder, would changing the industry kill the genre? You know, a lot of people think, well, are you biting the hand that fed you? 
That hand didn't feed me. We fed each other. And that hand that did feed me deserves to be bitten. It's time. This is all happening at a time that reality shows have been rocked by scandal after scandal. This season on Below Deck Down Under, a drunken crew night out took a horrifying turn on camera. Producers had to remove a naked cast member who'd been drinking from another unconscious cast member's bed. I gotta get you out of here because she wants to go to bed. Oh my god, ew, he was naked? Did you consent him being naked? No, I was asleep. A cast member from Love is Blind season five accused her partner of sexual assault and the producers of false imprisonment. Now she's suing her former partner and the production companies, which have all denied the allegations. Lay into you, take one. I would just like people that are in charge to treat the women on these shows with more dignity, because they deserve it. And I deserve it, we deserve it. Leah McSweeney says she knows what it feels like to be mistreated on a reality show. A fashion designer and New York City party girl of the early 2000s, she joined The Real Housewives of New York in 2019. I'm having more fun than I've had in a month and a half. Leah says she's not ashamed of being a recovering alcoholic. She'd been doing drugs and drinking since she was 13. I knew you're, you're a little out of control right now. Okay, no, 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 nobody's ever been out of control in this group. Are you kidding me? The same week that I got the call to audition was the same week that I relapsed after nine years. Leah says some of the moments that made her a fan favorite were actually some of her darkest. The hurricane Leah night. Oh, yeah. What was that night like for you when you think back to that, when you watch that? Horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. I need two shots in that because it's time. Drink that! Fine, I thought you were a recovering alcoholic. alcoholic. Ah! The next day when I'm done filming and I'm crying hysterically in my apartment, my stomach hurts so bad, I don't know what I did. I don't remember what I did. I don't know what I said. What you're describing, though, is the definition of blackout drunk. Oh, I was totally blackout drunk. And I was so nervous to see myself. And what are people going to say? They're going to say, you're a drunken disaster. You're a horrible mother. You were disgusting. You know, instead, they loved it, which was really messed with my brain, you know? Because I'm like, this isn't funny. Leah is far from alone. Bethany says she believes these reality shows harness personal pain for entertainment. If you see someone drinking 12 drinks, that's okay at work. That's encouraged at work. You see someone having a nervous breakdown or someone falling off the wagon, that's exciting. Let's bring the cameras in. Shed Media, the company that produces Housewives, told ABC News that cast members and cast members only make their own decisions about whether to consume alcohol, adding that medics are present on all international or large cast trips. When the product in particular is sort of dramatic television, what's the best way to get dramatic television? It's not to have like happy, well-adjusted people who have slept well at night. I'm a much less dramatic person when I've had eight full hours of sleep and when I have not been drinking till two in the morning. When Leah joined the cast of season 12, she says she got paid $3,000 an episode and thought she knew clearly what the downsides might be. The pros were maybe I'll be able to help my mom retire. I'll be able to live in a true two-bedroom apartment with my daughter, send her to private school. You were thinking financial success. Yes, and stability. She says she told producers about her lapsed sobriety and that they also knew about her mental health struggles. And so when you told the producers you'd, you'd started drinking again, but you sort of downplayed it. Yeah. Why not say this was a full-blown relapse that I was going through? So I think at that point, I was also in a lot of denial about my own relapse. And I was still holding on somewhere in the back of my head that maybe I could drink normally. But Leah says her drinking quickly spun out of control. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> The Tiki Torch the tiki torch night. Right. But is the yes. stuff of legend now. It, yeah, for sure. Oh my God, I hate these Tiki Torches. They suck. What was going through your mind? Not what? a lot. <laughs> and look, alcoholism, addiction, it's a complicated, complex thing. It's much more 
complicated than personal choice. Did I choose to drink that day? Yes. Was I an alcoholic in a, the middle of a relapse? Like, absolutely. I just know that I was really struggling. And that was actually the time where the production company ha had me speak to a doctor. The doctor did not even mention alcohol to me once. Give us a sense of how the producers might have had an influence on your behavior. I'm not gonna put that on them mm. for this because I made my own decisions. It's more about having an endless, you know, copious amounts of alcohol for multiple people. There is no, this isn't okay. There is get the cameras in her face more. She also says the producers knew she was struggling with bipolar disorder. In fact, she'd been outed on the show. You know, I found out she's bipolar and she's on medication and I know people who are bipolar okay. and you cannot mix alcohol with meds. From what we've heard, most, I won't say all, most of these shows, if it's not being actively encouraged, alcohol is just always available. I don't begrudge reality TV its bottom line. I understand that they need this to be dramatic. I think that is fine. I think it's a problem when they're willing to sacrifice people's mental health, their physical health, their relationships in order to do that. Dr. Isabel Morley is a clinical psychologist and couples therapist who studied the psychological effects of reality shows on cast members. She says it's understandable that they might sometimes reach for a little liquid courage. If everyone else is drinking, is having champagne, is having that mimosa, everybody wants to fit in. And it's very easy to start drinking too much and suddenly you're living with the consequences of your actions while the whole world can watch them and rewatch them until the end of time. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. news breaks. It's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there would be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. He hunts humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know which am. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild crime at Blood Mountain. 
Now streaming only on Hulu. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? How <laughs> cute. <laughs> yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. You're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Oh. Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of oh, Crooks 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Reporting in St. Petersburg, Florida, in the aftermath of Hurricane Adelia, I'm M. Wynn. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. It's almost like about a safe work environment. Yes, we're, I'm an adult and everyone on the show is an adult, but it becomes a dangerous working environment when people are extremely intoxicated. Do you think it's up to the producers to cut somebody off while they're drinking? Or? I do, actually. Yeah, I do. I think that bars cut people off. <laughs> I think that you would not put a gun in a suicidal person's hand. So if you see someone who is drinking to the point where they are not making sense when they're talking or they can't walk straight, 
start giving them water. And generally, I mean, alcoholism is a disease, right? It's not, it's not anybody's fault. So it would be difficult, I think, to attack producers as encouraging their alcoholism, enabling their alcoholism, or certainly causing their alcoholism. Shed Media says that producers work very closely with all cast members to ensure their boundaries are respected with regard to alcohol. After making a splash on season 12, Leah decided to return for another season, newly sober. Why did you go back to the show? Well, I think that financially I was very dependent on it. I was gonna actually leave. And then they offered me over three times more per episode. I haven't drank since March 31st. Yeah. But season 13, she says, proved to be even more painful, filming during a global pandemic while her beloved grandmother was dying. She says she told the producers she was having a mental health crisis. I told them numerous times that I was struggling. And it was just like as if I was a nuisance and just get it together, you know? Focus on work. Well, I thought this was a reality show. This is my reality right now. I'm not in a good place. Bravo disputes this claim. Impact has learned that a member of production at one point offered Leah some emotional support. Shed Media also told ABC News that the mental and psychological well-being of our series cast and crew is a top priority, adding that cast members complete an intro to psych session and that production provides additional mental health services during and after production at no cost. Leah says she tried to quit the franchise. First, she says she went to an executive from Shed Media, the company that produces the show. One of the executives from Shed said, I understand that you want to put your mental health first. Then she went to speak to Bravo. The network executive said, no, you cannot quit. I said, please let me out of my contract. She said, we have so much more storytelling to do from you. You haven't even reached your potential whatsoever. Wait, at least. Don't make the decision yet. Bravo disputes this claim. She didn't quit, but she did check herself into a mental health institution. I felt like I was never going to recover. I felt like I was never going to get better. I felt like I was... I thought my daughter would be better off if I wasn't here. That's hard to hear. Yeah. It's hard to say out loud. Yeah, it is. This is not like all because of one thing or one person. I just think that when someone says I'm struggling or I'm dealing with addiction issues, there just needs, there needs to be a seriousness. But a few months later, Bravo asked her back again for a one-week trip to Thailand for the Housewives spin-off, Ultimate Girls Trip. After all that you've been through, why go back? I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I just was like, nothing could be worse than season 13. That's what I thought. The cash incentives at that point, she says, proved irresistible. You were offered $250,000 for one week of filming? Yes. After getting to Thailand, Leah's sobriety quickly became a talking point on the show. Here comes Leah. Oh, let's get Leah this? drunk, you guys. Let's get Leah drunk. Do you have any Tylenol? Yeah, Leah doesn't drink. drink. That's the whole challenge, Porsche. It's not going to be I easy. I know, but is that rude? Like, if you drank this week, would that be a big deal? Is my, I guess my question. Um, it would ruin my life. Filming ended in July 2022, and Leah decided to not return for another season. And in March of the next year, she and her lawyers filed a complaint with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which covers workers like her. Why file through the EEOC? You're claiming discrimination. Discrimination, yes, yes. Yeah. Because alcoholism, mental health issues, substance abuse issues, you know, this is, this is protected by the ADA, which I really didn't even know until my lawyer told me. New York State's Division of Human Rights tells us that Leah's complaint has been dismissed. Sources tell us that Leah was offered a sober coach by the production team. 
and Impact has learned that at least once, a member of production offered to have her accommodations move closer to AA meetings. Leah's attorneys then reached out to Bravo. In April, through my attorneys, asked the network to please implement rules where if someone is blackout drunk and cannot consent to filming, that you do not film them. And what was the response? No. <laughs> and I also asked them to just have more protocol for like people having mental health issues. What was your reaction to the no? I mean, I wasn't surprised because they think it's good TV. I think that they can do better. This is a well-oiled machine that makes a lot of money and they are going to protect it at all costs. So I think we're kind of far away from things being changed. Sources tell Impact that McSweeney's request was rejected, citing already existing policies around alcoholism and substance abuse. You may not know what it's going to be like. You may sign up for this, but this what? You could never understand what it's like to actually do it. Bethany's trademark brashness that put her at the forefront of this fight also helped spark her television career in 2005 on the Martha Stewart spin-off of The Apprentice. You're looking for a star and someone who has total potential. She parlayed that into a role on the original cast of The Real Housewives of New York. I want to be a household name, like a modern, healthy Martha Stewart. Her unfiltered and unapologetic persona, a ratings bonanza for Bravo for years. Mention it all, mention it all. May my heart be your shelter and my arms be your home. Her wedding back in 2010 at the time was the highest rated event Bravo had ever broadcast. I went through a 10 year horrific divorce and that marriage is being exploited and monetized and sold to so many different entities. Early on, Bethany says she knew nothing about business. In her first contract, she agreed to a season-long salary of $7,250 and no residuals. I know that my content is all over the world that I did 15 years ago before I ever knew that there would be a Peacock streamer or any streamers or GIFs or memes or anything, YouTube clips, social media. So we signed our lives away not realizing where it would be distributed for decades to come. The idea of residuals is every time your episode plays again, you get a little tiny bit more money. And the more popular your show is, the more it's going to get played again. Rich Schoenstein has an expertise in entertainment contracts. He doesn't represent any of these reality stars, but says the old ways are outdated. A person who comes on a show in the first instance is not given residuals. And I bet at the start of reality television, nobody thought that was strange. The industry has changed. The technology has changed. So it does create a new landscape. Those original contracts will still be enforced according to their terms. They have to be renegotiated or amended by the parties if the parties want to change them. Bethany still managed to strike gold during her time on the show. I've never been great at contracts, but I'm, I've always been good at concepts. So I agreed to the money, but crossed out the part where they could take a percentage of my future business. Little did I know that I was the only one who crossed that part out. I mean, really cashed out big time. That savvy move allowed her to keep all of the reportedly $100 million payout from her sale of Skinny Girl in 2011 and triggered what's now known as the Bethany Clause. Every Bravo star since has had to promise to give Bravo a cut of any money they make on products they talk about on Bravo shows. So in the last several years, the companies that make these shows have realized that they can monetize a lot about who these people are in the world outside of the shows. At this year's BravoCon, Bravo celebrities were showcasing their personal brand and their product lines. BravoCon Day One. BravoCon is one example. It's this huge convention where fans flock, and it also helps to create this sense of Bravo as this cohesive interior universe. Bachelor universe works the same way. Netflix recently created a show called Perfect Match, where they all get to date each other and kiss and then go back to their other uh, home shows. We have really good news. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Uh -oh. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> Generation Gap. Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. Are you ready? Let's do that! Big box of whammies! And I'm feeling lucky. It's a life changing. This is a lot of money. I'm gonna press my luck and stop. Is that Elizabeth Banks? Players get a shot at one million dollars. <laughs> Let's go. Press your luck Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Bethany, the serial entrepreneur, is still growing her own profitable ideas. Isn't that Aww. elegant? That is elegant. You know, it's just beautiful and it's like a gorgeous bottle to keep. Trained as a chef, she even became a lucrative TikTok food critic and beauty influencer. And that's where you put your phone? So you put your phone here. Some beauty products that are at the level. With uh, 1.5 million followers. You really have the Midas touch. I push to make things successful that I like to do. It's the opposite of reality TV and truthfully in beauty, in my podcast, in my philanthropy, like everything is direct. The now 53 year old single mom was living her best life in her cozy suburban home when the writers and actors in Hollywood went on strike. What is it that makes labor issues so hot right now. There's a big thing going on in society about exploitation overall. People just are starting to open their eyes and realize what's okay and what's not okay. Reality television needs a systemic overhaul and a governor and possibly a union. I was just talking about the strike in general that was going on. You have to think about your work as work. You have to sort of think about the fact that like you are being exploited, that your conditions could be better and that somebody has the power to make your conditions better. You know, a lot of these entry-level reality show contracts, they don't pay very much at all. Surprisingly little. And I think the performers are saying that's not right. We should be paid more. And if it takes a union to get us that, then that's what we want to do. Page Six showed the moment at BravoCon this year when Andy Cohen, host and executive producer of the Real Housewives franchise, was asked about the reality reckoning. We need to talk about reality reckoning and yeah. beckoning. No, I don't want to talk about that. What I think is, I live in the joy that these shows bring people. 
And I think we all do. You were good friends with Andy Cohen. He literally made you a star. He didn't make me a star. He made himself a star on the backs of all of these women. I'm sure I've surprised and disappointed Andy Cohen. And he really was a big fan of mine as a housewife. Andy knows that I'm right on so many levels, otherwise he wouldn't all of a sudden be making this whole franchise about joy. Impact reached out to Andy Cohen. His team declined to comment. Bethany says it's not joy, but pathos that sells. The higher the drama, the higher the ratings. A case in point, Scandival. Unfortunately, I was the punching bag for a lot of that. That's Rachel I Levis, formerly known as Raquel, whose cheating scandal boosted Bravo's Vanderpump rules into stratospheric ratings. Nothing has happened between Raquel and I. Vanderpump rules this last year went on what I can only say is like a legend's run in the world of reality programming. The numbers were insane. It was the only thing anyone could talk about. Longtime cast member Tom Sandoval was caught cheating on Ariana Maddox, his girlfriend of 10 years. Me and Raquel became like really good friends. I don't give a about Raquel! Your friendship is bullshit. Here's what happens on reality TV is that the vulnerable person who seems a little bit like the Bambi or the weaker one often gets taken advantage of. This woman, Raquel, was raked over the coals in a way that was so disproportionate to what was going on. This girl was emotionally abused. You f***ing today. What the f*** do you I'm think you were doing okay. You are lower than the lowest of low people. You really are. You're a psychopath. You are terrifying to me as a person. The fact that you are capable of this shit, unbelievable. Hi. Hi. Rachel went on Bethany's okay. podcast, and Just Be, to talk about the hate she experienced off camera. Did you actually receive death threats and online bullying? And yes, yes. I shut off social media pretty early on, and um, thank God I didn't have my phone while I was in treatment. With all the vitriol online and um, hate that's been thrown at me, if I were to take that on as my own, I don't even know how I would survive. Shortly after filming the reunion show, Rachel says she admitted herself into a mental health treatment facility. Meanwhile, her fellow cast members got brand deals, like Uber One. I got this Uber One tip for ya. Hot membership, oh yeah. To save on rides and eats. That's it, pick them up three. Tom went on the reality show Special Forces. Dancing the tango. It's Ariana Maddox. And Ariana performed on Dancing with the Stars. No, I don't need anybody else. But Rachel says her reality was bleak by comparison, even though she felt the show profited from her pain. This woman whose edit and whose role on the show made her a target for a lot of intense public ire, tried to go back to them and say, I would like more money, please. And because there is nothing in her contract that says when the show does better, we pay you more, she had no power to then say, like, it's doing so great, and I'm the reason it's happening. They were able to say no. You signed the contract, that's the money you got. Bravo told ABC News that cast members on reality shows are compensated based on the number of years they're on the cast and are not given raises for ratings or performance. The network is running to the bank like laughing, running to the bank with this scandal. And I feel like I've been portrayed as the ultimate villain. Um, my mistakes that I made on camera live on forever. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. across the
the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <laughs> Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner, oh, Crufts 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. You hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. I've got to hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? What crime at Blood Mountain? Now streaming only on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> How cute. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> a big chance to win. Big money! Feels good! Million dollars. Oh my god! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. So we're rolling. But it's not just reality show villains who say they've been harmed. I can't believe that I fell in love with someone and then I didn't get to see them. Nick Thompson was supposed to be one of the biggest success stories on Netflix's mega hit, Love is Blind. 
I love you. I love you too. So the idea of Love is Blind is that people who are single and who want to get married go on this reality show where they date people that they cannot see. They sit in a sort of little pod. Welcome to my pod. <laughs> and they talk to somebody. They don't know who that person is. If you fall in love with someone, you propose. Yeah. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll marry you. <laughs> and you get to see each other. And then after that, the show follows couples who've decided to get engaged. Oh my God. It is an incredibly popular show. It is usually at the top of the Netflix top 10. It consumes popular culture discourse anytime a new season drops. Nick, you got married on national television. International television. <laughs> Very popular in Brazil. <laughs> I have no question whatsoever that you're the person I'm supposed to be with. I now declare you to be husband and wife. Nick, you may kiss your wife. At the time, or even looking back, do you think you were really in love? 100%, yeah. I came out of the experience thinking, well, okay, that wasn't ideal, but I fell in love and I got married. Nick and his then-wife, Danielle Rule, both say that they were extremely distressed by the experience. Just six months after their wedding episode aired, they separated. If you were to explain why you were divorced, what would you say? There's a giant pressure cooker from the moment you step in there. And I believe that if we were treated better, if we were supported better, things might have been different. Now he and one of his fellow castmates, Jeremy Hartwell, are pushing for change. So, I don't want to say naive. You can say it. <laughs> I can say that? Yeah. yeah. Why? There were things I was naive about, definitely. Everyone knows a little bit about how reality TV is produced, how it's edited, all of that. Where I was naive was I was thinking, if I'm just myself, I have a good value system, nothing bad could happen to me. Going into this experience with one perspective and a little bit of naivete, and then going through it and understanding it is nothing like you were told it was going to be. Nick says he felt blindsided after his then wife had a panic attack. He said the producers never told him about it or helped her with it. Danielle was instructed to spend the day alone, quarantining due to a stomach bug. On the show, it appears they're having a lover's quarrel. This stuff is going to cause You're big let issues. It. Yes. Why? Why does this cause an issue? Because I had three hours to sit here and not do anything but be in my head. I sat in the closet. I locked the door, I shut this, and I sat in the closet and cried. Months later, his now ex-wife, Danielle, shared what she says was really going on for Nick's podcast, Eyes Wide Open. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I have a panic attack in the closet. Like, I go into the closet because I'm like, I don't know if the rooms are bugs. I don't know if they're filming me. I was just out of my mind. No, I had, I had no idea any of this yeah. went on until you told me. They didn't tell so me. So I was like, I just had a panic attack. I'm not filming right now. There was no mental health support that came in to help her with tools to regulate and to send me in there, not knowing in this new relationship with my new fiance in this extreme circumstance is a complete disservice to me and even more so to her. There is no therapist on set or there's no covering of therapy afterwards to deal with whatever they went through for the drama that they're producing. I think that's the real problem. It made it seem like you were upset at each other. That's not really what happened. When you peel back the onion, the issue was that she was unregulated in that moment. It was scenes like this during Love is Blind that inspired Dr. Morley to start her research. A friend of mine said, you should watch Love is Blind. This is the most popular show right now, and there's a lot to write about. She published an article based on what she observed. Jeremy saw it and reached out to Dr. Morley. Both he and Nick offered to share their experiences while filming the show. As I went through with her in, in the course of several hours um, over two interviews, the way she was explaining to me that the circumstances you're put under, the lack of support, the timeline in which things are happening, the alcohol, the food, all of that stuff all works together to where you're, you're just constantly having ups and downs and angst and anxiety. And when someone's in that state, you're more likely and more susceptible to be conditioned to do certain things. Other cast members, if they aren't speaking up and saying, this is a problem, this is unacceptable, you can't treat us like this, then you're thinking, they think this is okay, so I guess this is okay. 
Even though Jeremy, a former management consultant, was only on the show for a few days, he says he saw other issues, multiple labor violations due to the cost-cutting, breakneck shooting schedule. I filed a class action lawsuit last year alleging California labor law violations. So we worked anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day on set, and we were paid a $1,000 a week stipend. It's like $7.14 an hour. When we would get our dinner break, the crew would be swapping out. And that's when I started to realize, because I know how unions work, uh oh, like they're working there 10, maybe 12 hours, depending on what their contract is. And we're just kind of like, get started here if we want to stay and do night dating. Hartwell's lawsuit also alleges the production company fostered inhumane working conditions and failed to provide uninterrupted rest periods. The focus is on how they handled you during that process, right? The focus is on not letting us sleep more than three or four hours a night, never getting enough food having to ask for water. The focus was on the gaslighting and the manipulation that we experienced that they get their storylines. Unless you want to make your career going on various reality TV shows, it's churn and burn in the way that they tell your story, they tell your season, and then it's on to the next. Why are former reality show cast members afraid to talk? They're afraid for several reasons, mostly related to that contract. In those contracts, there's language that says we can misrepresent you, we can defame you. People look at the NDA and they see the fines. You, you can be fined $50,000 if you leave without a producer's permission during. So then you're, you're forced to stay. And then there's a million dollar charge for every time you go against the edit once it comes out. There's, you can't unionize language in there. There's all this language that's designed to silence you for fear of massive amounts of damages and court fees, and it scares people. If you're putting a person on reality television, they are going to be disparaged. They are going to be defamed. They are going to be mocked and ridiculed and made fun of publicly. That's the whole point of reality television. That kind of clause, to me, is entirely appropriate for this sort of contract. Nick filed his own complaint with the National Labor Relations Board against the production company, Kinetic, and the casting company, Delirium. One of the ways that reality TV production has skirted labor laws is by classifying you in these contracts as a contractor. An employee is somebody who has a job, who works and goes to work every day. An independent contractor is somebody who does usually a temporary task there are a lot of companies that say workers are independent contractors, but actually exercise the amount of control over them that is more like an employee. So in television, the amount of control exercised over these reality TV performers is really intense. If they were treated as employees, the companies would have additional obligations. They would have to pay minimum wage. They would have to pay overtime. Netflix and the companies that produce Love is Blind have not responded to Impact's request for comment. Nick and Jeremy are doing more than just speaking out. They founded the unscripted Cast Advocacy Network, or UCAN, to provide outside support for cast members before, during, and after production. Their goal is to eventually join forces with production companies something the organization says the shows desperately need. Dr. Morley now works as a director with the organization. We're here to uh, support with legal and mental health services, cast members before, during, and after production, as well as advocating for change in the industry. At its most reductionist, again, it's flipping that equation so that it's no longer more profitable to produce things unethically. It's the systems we're going after. We're not going after a show. We're not going after a person. We're going after the systems. I think that if the people who make reality TV can be sued for what happens to the contestants out in the world, for how they're treated, how they're mentioned, whether they're disparaged. I, I don't see how you could produce a reality television show. But some systems are slowly changing. Bravo tells Impact that going forward, cast members will have even more access to show psychologists and that they're enacting stricter guidelines on alcohol consumption. Leah says she's pushing for systemic change as well. In a genre with legions of devoted fans, she's hoping audiences can take a step back and realize reality TV isn't always reality. I hope that people think a little more when they're watching these shows. I hope that people 
have a little bit more compassion for people who are struggling with alcoholism or substance abuse issues. That's really what I want. They're making a lot of changes, and not just Bravo. This is the, the entire entertainment industry. This is streamers, this is networks. They've awakened, and no matter what, a change has been made and will continue to be made. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Reporting from the Federal Reserve, I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. A killing that shocked a community inside a couple's home. Was it murder or was it self-defense? I'll take you inside the manhunt. 2020 begins right now. There had been a murder and the place was crawling with police. You can see the legs lying on the kitchen floor. So she's just shot in cold blood. She is gunned down in her own house. It was a sensational case because of who was involved. It happened with a gentleman who was high-powered, former Marine, former cop in New York City, an attorney, very successful. She was very successful. Who was Angela Bledsoe? And who was this mystery couple? Angela was done. She wanted out, period. He became more controlling. He was looking up hidden cameras, spy cameras. Surveillance, why? What did he find out? Turns out they both had secrets, and he was carrying his around in a sort of diary. Did you think James Ray was dangerous? There's two sides to every story. Do you see any indication that maybe she just lost it and decided to attack? When she moved in, that was the beginning of the end, literally. You're along for the ride with James Ray, a New Jersey lawyer and father who appears to be in the middle of a routine day, like picking up his daughter, Alana, from school. But there's nothing routine about what's happening here. In just a few short hours, the lives of dad and daughter will be changed forever. Whenever I was in his presence, 
with the children. He just was like a caring father, you know. That evening, six-year-old Alana and her dad are making their way to a New Jersey steakhouse to meet up with some family members. It's a meal that will be both brief and bizarre, beginning from the moment James Ray pulls into the parking lot. James Ray meets up with his brother, Robert Ray, in the back of the restaurant parking lot, where it is dark. His daughter and Robert's wife, at the time, go inside the restaurant. James is wearing sunglasses in the evening, and according to his brother, his demeanor is described as panicky. Before he became a lawyer, James Ray served as a Marine and a police officer, so he was familiar with stressful situations. But according to his brother, this felt very different. Once alone, James makes an unusual request of his brother. And it's interesting to point out that these two are not particularly close. But Ray asks his brother to watch his daughter Alana for 24 hours. Robert Ray agrees, and the two men transfer Alana's luggage from one car to the other. Then they go inside the restaurant. Everybody's beginning to order their meals, but things are pretty strange. Ray passes on food and sips his water, and it's clear that somebody is missing from this family gathering. Alana's mom, Angela. They're sitting in a booth, and he asks his brother to take a picture of him with his daughter. And after the picture, he slips out as if he's going to the bathroom. He excuses himself from the table, exits the restaurant, and begins to leave the parking lot. Robert tries to stop him, but James just keeps on driving. Robert Ray is so taken aback by what transpired, he drives over to his brother's home in Montclair, New Jersey. When he arrives, the home is dark, and the car he saw James leave the restaurant in is not in the driveway. With his niece now in the car, Robert decides that the best thing to do is to drive the nearly 70 miles back to his home in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and get six-year-old Alana settled in for the night. When they were getting the child ready for bed, meaning Robert Ray and his wife at the time, that's when they discovered in the suitcase the letter it's a one-page, typewritten letter telling his brother that something awful has happened. And based on the content of that letter, Robert Ray called 911. Montclair Police, Inspector Ritchie. Uh, hello, Inspector. Um, my name is Robert. I live in Pennsylvania. I just got word that uh, something horrible, I think, has happened at my brother's house there in, in Montclair. And what happened? I am not certain, but it sounds like there might be a murder victim there. What's the address? Uh, North Mountain Avenue. Uh, I received on the roof. Seven two units up there to meet me up there. Just confirm the address. Securing the scene and securing any evidence and safety of the people at the scene is my primary responsibility. As an investigative supervisor, I need to start thinking about what I have to do once I get to the scene and what needs to be done prior to my arrival. As far as the suspect goes, I didn't know where he was at this point. We had to assume that there's a potential threat inside the house and proceed accordingly. From the rear of the house, looking through the sliding door, you can see the legs lying on the kitchen floor. I can say I'm inside now. Yeah, yeah, they uh, confirmed it. It's one DOA inside the house. Uh, we're going to be putting it in yeah, the felony vehicle. You know, considered armed and dangerous. Use caution. Inside the home, investigators are beginning to collect the pieces of a puzzle. There was a handgun in the pool of blood. There was a handgun in the living room on a coffee table. There was a gun cleaning kit in the living room on the coffee table. And obviously, the projectile that was embedded in the couch. There's a blood trail leading from the living room couch to the kitchen. Also, there was another shell casing that was on the kitchen floor. The clock that had appeared to come off the wall was lying in the kitchen sink, and it had stopped. The victim is positively identified as 44-year-old Angela Bledsoe, James Ray's live-in girlfriend. The little girl picked up from school is the couple's daughter. That was a disturbing aspect of the case, a minor child six years old at the time, picked up by her father, and um, never went home. 
She never saw her mother again. She ended up going to Allentown, Pennsylvania with two people she barely knew. And then after her father walked out, she never saw him again either. Down in Maryland, Angela's parents get the devastating news that their youngest daughter is gone. Tell me about that day, Mr. Bledsoe. I think I yelled out and nothing came out. I cried. And then I said to myself, Bledsoe, you got to get yourself together. What did you think had happened? I didn't ask for details. I, I did not know what happened. I did not know what happened. What did you learn about this story and these two people? She was indeed a very successful woman. I believe her sister even said that she was making more money in her 20s than her parents had made their entire lives. But where exactly is James Ray? Developing story out of New Jersey where police are searching for a murder suspect. Well, at that point, we came up with a game plan. Public enemy number one was James Ray. Lawyer by day, tonight described as armed and dangerous. Something was off, something was wrong. You know, I started knocking on neighbors' doors, and nobody really seemed to know the victim or her boyfriend. Back in Allentown, Pennsylvania, investigators are headed to Robert Ray's home to find out what else was in that suitcase. And what they find will spark an international manhunt. They know who they're looking for. Now they just need to find him. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. Authorities believe he shot and killed his live-in girlfriend inside their Montclair home behind me. The crime itself occurred in Montclair, New Jersey, which is a quiet, suburban, affluent township. Montclair is a town of about 40,000 people, 12 miles west of Manhattan. A lot of people who reside in Montclair work in New York. Very family oriented. And you have a lot of New Yorkers, and even some celebrities now, moving to Montclair. Uh, mixed uh, socioeconomic statuses, uh, very diverse all around. 
It's beautiful. There are a lot of old stock Victorian homes. It's got a bustling downtown, a lot of great restaurants. Police were called to the upscale house here on the 300 block of North Mountain Avenue shortly before midnight. I was living in Montclair when this case happened, and everybody kept thinking, are we in danger? Is, is there something going on? Is it a spree? Because nobody's used to that kind of crime happening in that area. You expect a call from the city at some point, but uh, getting a call from Montclair was surprising. They found 44-year-old Angela Bledsoe had been shot. She was pronounced dead at the scene. News of a murder was shocking in this picturesque town of tree-lined streets. James Ray and Angela Bledsoe, like many here, were a professional couple, raising a six-year-old daughter. James was very accomplished. He had a MBA and he had a law degree. James looked great on paper. He has his own business. Uh, he was a Marine. He was a you know, former police officer. They met in Brooklyn. Angela was working as a financial advisor, and Ray offered to hire her at his insurance brokerage. And Angela, what she would do is she recruited people to sell life insurance. They had an agreement as far as the commission that she would get and the cut that he would get. So she didn't work for him, she worked alongside and helped his business. Exactly. They had a lot in common as it pertained to business, and I know that they had this like power couple dynamic between them, and I think she was attracted to that as well. Family and friends we spoke with said they were happy. Angela seemed to have found a good guy. The first time that I saw him was at my dad's surprise birthday celebration. And from afar, I could see them. And they seemed very happy together. I mean, they were dancing, and he twirled her around. She, you know, she was laughing and smiling and they seem happy. So I was like, oh, they, they look nice together. You could see that they had a connection. They had a spark amongst themselves. And she told my mom, well, mom, he's special. Initially, I thought he was a nice individual for her. I could tell he was a little older than her when I first met him. So I wasn't sure how serious it was. There was an 11-year age difference between Angela and James. He probably was extremely charming, which is, I'm sure, how he attracted Angela, um, because I know Angela. So he would have had to kind of bring his A game to get her to even want to look his way. I could see how James was charismatic, um, and he did have ways about him being funny, intelligent, and things like that. So I think she looked at him kind of like as a catch. Do you remember when she met James Ray and what she said about him? Well, she admired him, and then uh, the relationship kind of moved along pretty quickly. You talked a lot. Did she share much about her love life? Did she want to be married at some point? Did she talk about what she wanted for herself personally? She did. She wanted to be married, and we did talk about that. So for this couple, clearly something went tragically wrong on that October night. And for the detectives who began to investigate, their attention turned to James Ray, having left behind his daughter with his brother, Robert Ray, and those two suitcases. There were two suitcases that he packed for his daughter with a lot of clothing. He printed out and left for his brother a Disney cruise itinerary. There were certified checks. One was in the amount of $11,500 for his daughter. The other was in the amount just shy of $10,000 for Robert Ray to cash for the daughter. He also left a letter for his brother. This letter that Ray left for his brother is chock full of information for investigators. But first and foremost, it's a startling admission that Ray did in fact shoot his girlfriend, Angela. He says he has an explanation, but he also goes on to say, Quote, I am scared and don't want the long burden of a trial to prove my point. In the aftermath of the shooting, he felt he was in a no-win situation, so he had to flee. And he also didn't have his ducks in a row. He knew he was going to be arrested and that he would need bail money. So he had to figure that out before he turned himself in. On the news, it was saying that James Ray was on the run for killing Angela. Investigators are now looking for Bledsoe's boyfriend, 55-year-old James R. Ray III. We didn't know where he was. 
It was very dramatic. He is in the wind, as we like to say, uh, which is, you know, we don't know his whereabouts. And all we can do is gather enough information. It is quite a story, and there's more. In the letter, Ray drops several bombshells, including claims that Angela was becoming violent with him. After nine years of this long relationship, Angela was done. She was leaving James Ray. She wanted out, period. Some are even wondering if the relationship was doomed from the start when Angela discovered an explosive secret he'd been keeping from her. We have really good news. <laughs> you break it. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. <laughs> Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> Generation Gap. Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Developing story right now, Essex County, a suspect on the run following a murder in Montclair. A woman was found dead along North Mountain Avenue. Police are now looking for the boyfriend. I got a call early one morning indicating that there had been a murder in Montclair. Communities like Montclair, it is very, very rare. So that's a situation that's going to get a lot of media attention. I was calling everyone I knew in town on my connections. I wrote um, a, a deep dive about who was Angela Bledsoe and who was this mystery couple. Angela's family describes her as a gentle soul, quiet, soft-spoken. They say she'd been that way since childhood. Take me back to childhood growing up. Give me a sense of what that was like and how you all got along. We're pretty much a middle-income family, church-going folks. We went to church on Sunday, went to Sunday school. We got along very well. What were her interests as a child? And she was very active in school. She was an honor student. She was a part of the Student Government Association and also a fellow Rattler. Because we both attended Florida A&M University. 
Once she was in college and she majored in business. Yes, she was a part of the Student Government Association. She pledged um, Beta Alpha Chapter Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. After she graduated, she moved to New York. I believe she was very successful um, as a financial analyst. And I didn't know too many 27-year-olds who were able to buy their first home, let alone in New York, in Brooklyn, in a brownstone. And that brownstone was one of those stepping stones to get her to where she wanted to be. If I had to say she had a type, Angela would have a type of someone who was going to be as successful and driven as she is. And that's when Angela met James Ray. You could definitely tell that he was very into her and that she was very into him. The couple seemed to be happy and in love, but it turns out James Ray was harboring a deep secret. James was married. They had two grown adult children. I do not recall how she found out, but she was not pleased, as you can imagine. It's not in her character to date a married man, and it would never have been her first choice to become involved with a married man. I know what she told me was that she didn't know at first. So my only guess is that she was already smitten by this point and couldn't let go of the relationship. But once you find out, then you have a decision to make. Although Angela knew James was married, she stayed in the relationship. And I was surprised at her decision to continue to date him. So I don't know if she was already too deep in the relationship to stop it. Angie wore rose-colored glasses in a lot of cases. Love kind of blinds you to certain things and, and makes you more willing to overlook or give grace, as it should, right? When you're in love with someone, you want to operate from a place of grace. I was beginning not to like him, and I didn't like their dynamic together. And I was just hoping it was like a phase and it would go away. But then when she got pregnant with their daughter, I think that locked her in. If you look at some of the pictures that she took when she was pregnant, you could tell she was already in love with her baby. Angela and James's daughter, Alana, was born in 2012. I feel like Angela approached motherhood in the same way she approached, like, all the other things in life. Like, she was committed to making sure that her child has the best experiences, best opportunities. Was she happy as a mom? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. She loved being a mother. You would almost think she might have been the first mother. She was extremely protective of Alana. After she had the baby, Angela lived largely on her own in Brooklyn, while James lived comfortably with his wife in Upper Montclair. What about James Ray? Was he a good father? Was he an involved father? Early on, he was not. And even one time when she wanted to go to a meeting, he wasn't available, and she was really frustrated. And I, and I asked her, I said, well, you know, before you all had her, did you all discuss how you all were going to facilitate and handle things? And she said, no. So there was friction there. Eventually, after Ray's wife of more than 20 years, mom of his two grown children, moves out, Angela moves in to his Montclair home. When she moved in, was the hope that they would become more of a family, that they mm -hmm. would participate together? What were, the, yes. what were the expectations, do you think? I think the long-term expectation was that they were going to get married. That's what she hoped for initially. And they both were very close to their daughter. He took her golfing three times a week. I mean, he cooked, and they just loved her. And I think it started off in a positive light with hopes, you know, of a future marriage at one point. And then it just, it changed over time. When she lived with him is when you can see someone day in and day out of who they are. And I think that's when I first start, started to get a sense from her that she wasn't as happy as I thought. They weren't really communicating with one another. They were kind of past the, the honeymoon phase of the relationship and, and kind of into the reality. But it really became a co-parent existence in, in the household, and it was no longer a relationship. She complained about him to her family. She said he was controlling. He would criticize her in front of their daughter. After a while, I noticed 
Every time she called, she was complaining about him more and more and more. She would just text me little things he would say, little things he would do. He became a little paranoid, and he became more controlling after a while. We were at homecoming one time, and we were going to take a group picture. And there were some guys in the picture, friends, that we all went to school with. And she was like, just don't post that. I don't want to hear about that when I get back home. The more she would share, the more his actions worried me. It even got to a point one time, I was like, do you need to come stay with me until you figure out the situation? Because it doesn't sound like you're safe. It sounds like he's unraveling, and I even put that in text messages to her. So you wanted her to move on. Did she say why she hadn't moved out? Well, she, she needed to find a place. And she was wavering like, can I try and make this work? Should I stay? Should I leave? She wanted you know, her daughter to have a, a full family, a mom and a dad. And you wanted her at that point to move on and to claim her own life. I want her out of the house. But as the troubled relationship heads towards a violent end, more skeletons would come out. It turns out Angela had been keeping secrets of her own. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <gasps> Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. <laughs> Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. <gasps> Our winner of oh, Crufts 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Manhunt is for James Ray, who is suspected of fatally shooting his girlfriend. 24 hours after Angela Bledsoe's body is found, James Ray is on the run. And as with any fugitive considered armed and dangerous, the U.S. Marshals are called in. Meanwhile, police are still processing the crime scene and examining that stunning letter Ray wrote to his brother. Robert Ray immediately notified us of what was in the letter which basically indicated that he was cleaning his weapons and that Ms. Bledsoe came at him with another weapon. Right there in the second paragraph, Ray saying that he was cleaning his guns when Angela picked one up and was going to shoot him. He said that he shot her in self-defense, that she pulled a gun on him. 
he shot her and couldn't stop shooting her. It was a sensational case. It happened with a gentleman who was high-powered. She was very successful. It goes back to that whole thing of you never know what's going on behind closed doors. One of the first things investigators started to pour over was the couple's text messages. And a picture begins to emerge of a relationship on the brink. When she moved in, that was the beginning of the end, literally. At some point, James became controlling. James became jealous. James became a complainer. He called her names. He said she was lazy. It just seemed like he was in the right state of mind. He was very jealous and not trustworthy of Angela whatsoever. He was looking up hidden cameras, wall clock hidden cameras, spy cameras, GPS trackers. Surveillance, why? I can't answer that. He was asking her about her whereabouts all the time, according to the text messages that we had. At that point in time in their relationship, he was very well aware that Angela was looking to kind of move on. Because he was breaking into her phone, he did discover at some point that she could have been seeing someone named Bakari. He had a sense that something was going on because he was reading text messages and things like that. He thought she was leaving to go have this affair and continue on a relationship with another man in another state and take away their daughter. Bakari and Angela went to school together, FAMU. They were friends there, strictly friends, nothing romantic. And when they graduated, they kind of like, you know, separated. She went to a FAMU homecoming event and reconnected with Bakari. They saw each other at this homecoming, and that precipitated a sexual relationship that they had. Bakari Burns. Yes, Bakari Burns. And then they began an intimate relationship. Did you hear, or had she shared that she was seeing somebody else? Well, she had her friend, Bakari. I do feel that she had feelings for him, but as far as dating and all of that, she didn't say that they were dating. When I read the text James found out about Bakari, I called her. What did he find out? Who is Bakari? Because you never told me anything about Bakari. She just made it seem like he was jealous of an old college boyfriend. Two days before the murder happened, James Ray had called Bakari Burns, and he frightened him. Do you know that I exist? Do you know that Angela has a daughter? Do you know that Angela lives with me and sleeps in my bed with me every night? Are you aware of me? And before that conversation ended, James Ray says to him, I may be coming down to visit you in Florida. Things started to come to a head, apparently, between Angela Bledsoe and James Ray. Angela Bledsoe sent a text message to James Ray indicating that she was done. She was done with the relationship, she checked out, and then she gave him a list of reasons why she was done. Such as? That he just wasn't compassionate, he didn't respect her, that he was controlling. That he wasn't invested in the relationship. He wasn't invested in the relationship, and it became apparent to her that she can't change him. So their relationship was falling apart? It was not salvageable. One of the things that struck us was a prenuptial agreement that he had drawn up between the parties. But they weren't married. They were not married, and they had no intention of getting married. So why would there be a prenup? He knows she's leaving. He knows that she was interested in another man. And it was an act of desperation. What did he want in the prenup agreement? What was he going for? There was a clause in that prenuptial agreement that we coined the infidelity clause. And it basically said that if either party is cheating, the offending party shall pay a sum of $300,000 per act of infidelity. The date timeline that he referenced was from January 1st of 2018 up and until October. He was going back to the period that he knew that she was involved with another man. Exactly, exactly. But even though Angela was seeing another man, why and how would it come to this? with Ray's allegation that 
Angela grabbed the gun and tried to kill him. Angela was not a violent person. If anything, I felt like she felt sorry for him because she knew she was going to leave him. And I think she actually felt bad for him. So I can't imagine her threatening him or trying to hurt him. Did your sister have familiarity with guns? Did she shoot guns? No, she did not. So there was no doubt in your mind? No doubt about at all. Whether she it it didn't him. even make any sense. I did ask her one time if there was any abuse in the house, and she denied it. And so I was like, are you sure he's never shown any violent tendencies or like something you're not sharing with me? And she was like, there was one time where he tried to choke me, but that was it. I was just like, how can you not take that seriously? I would think that would trigger her to want to leave sooner. And I think once that erratic behavior started becoming more frequent, that's when she was like, OK, now I'm going to start looking for a place to live. She was looking to get a home in New Jersey. So she decided, if I'm going to do this, I'm moving out with my daughter, keep her in state, but I need to get out of this house. Back at that house on North Mountain Avenue, police are also making other discoveries. Clues left behind at the bloody crime scene are telling their own tale. When you saw this, you said this was significant. Why was that important to you? This is actually gold for us. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring them to justice. You hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know which him. That just scared everybody. That's got to hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Sent a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh, my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. <laughs> Police came to this home on a wellness check around midnight and made the horrifying discovery inside. 44-year-old Angela Bledsoe dead from gunshot wounds. I couldn't believe what I was hearing and what I was seeing on the news. Inside the house on Mountain Avenue, police are trying to piece together what happened to Angela Bledsoe. And the one person they can't question is her partner and killer, James Ray, who's banished after claiming self-defense. Now, he is a former military person, a former law enforcement 
officer, I had martial arts training. Did it make sense that he would run from her if she were even pointing a gun at him? When you look at his background, you know, what you know about police officers, what you know about military personnel, what you know about people trained in the martial arts, is that they're trained to defuse situations. But he chose deadly force. There is one person who's claiming that he could do nothing else but fire at her to save his own life. But there's much more to it, because there's two sides to every story. And forensic evidence often tells its own story. Howard Ryan is a crime scene expert who spent 25 years with the New Jersey State Police. We asked him to walk us through the evidence found at the scene. You begin looking at these crime scene photos. You're going to see something that we don't see. If you're in this field, you tend to key in on certain things. A lot of times in a shooting or any act of violence, the question that has to be answered is, how? How did it happen? Inside the couple's home, a number of things were found, including a cache of weapons. We recovered one Springfield 9 millimeter on the kitchen floor. There was one Springfield 9 millimeter on the coffee table, two 22 caliber revolvers, and then there was two 12-gauge shotguns that were recovered from the bedroom. There was also a, a gun cleaning kit and a couple gun cases. And detectives noticed something else, that fallen clock in the kitchen sink. The clock was displaying a time of 11.15, so it's a presumption that the clock fell off of the wall at the time of the shooting. They, together, dropped off their minor child at school that morning, so nobody else is there. Looking at the evidence, Ryan zeroes in on that 9 millimeter lying near Angela's body. You see the gun here with a lot of blood underneath it. What jumps out right away to you here? What it tells us, really, is that the gun was placed there after the blood. What about here, though? You do see blood on the gun right there. With the amount of blood, if this gun had moved through this blood, I would have an expectation of blood being all over the surface of the gun on that side, and it's just not there. So that immediately was a, an alarm bell for you? Yes, it was. At this point, investigators don't think that 9 millimeter was the gun used to kill Angela. Authorities are looking at Ray's claim of self-defense, and to them, the evidence at the scene suggests otherwise. There was no gun in Angela Bledsoe's hand. And there were also no fingerprints. If the gun was pointed by Angela Bledsoe at James Ray, there should have been some fingerprints. It was apparent that things had been moved. So this looked like a staged crime scene to you? Yes. Along with the gun at her side, then we see a stool, a stool which they say didn't belong there. There is a mobile phone seated perfectly centered on the top of the stool with a substantial amount of transfer blood stain. What does this blood tell you? What that tells us is this phone with the blood on its surface was placed in this position after the bloodshed. Investigators also have questions about four shell casings found at the scene, three of which they say appear to have been moved. There were four discharged 45 caliber shell casings that were recovered in that home. One was found on the kitchen floor. Three had been picked up and placed in a gun box that was on the glass coffee table where the other guns were placed. Detectives saw them right on the coffee table lined up next to each other. Highly unusual. Three shell casings right side up on the living room table. Something's not right here. Obviously, someone had placed them there. While much of the evidence is right there inside the kitchen, a picture is beginning to emerge for investigators of a deadly confrontation that started in the couple's living room. There were four shots fired at Angela Bledsoe. One missed, three went into her body, one to the chest, one to the back, and one to the head. So you were able to kind of map out what you think happened. Yes. We believe that the first shot was right here on the couch. The projectile is there. The blood is on the cushion of the sofa. We know that she moves. There is a transfer of blood on the armrest of the sofa that she ran around. We know that she's moving towards the kitchen because that's her final resting position. At that point, she receives a gunshot wound to the back. So I believe this is the second shot. 
She goes down, she's on the ground. As she ends up in this final resting position, there is a shot that ricochets and strikes the floor. And after that, we believe she shot through the head. What's important about that is that it shows that Angela Bledsoe was being fired upon from above. She was already on her back on the kitchen floor. So she's just shot in cold blood. She is gunned down in her own house. This is a couple that was in the midst of a lot of turmoil. Do you see any indication that maybe she just lost it and decided to attack? I don't think so. The gun that was placed next to her on the floor, there was no round in the chamber. Even if she were to grab the gun in defense, she would have loaded the weapon. I don't think she ever touched the weapon. But those who know James Ray say there's got to be another side to this story. Personally, I cannot imagine what really happened. I can't imagine. We don't know what really happened. It was only two persons in the house at the time. Angela, she cannot speak. Only other person knows God, and he's not talking. But James Ray is talking on the lam and on the phone as he flees the police. For about an hour, he was speaking to this woman. And he's got a lot to say. I had to call you. I had to speak with you. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. Reporting from the scene of a massive earthquake along the Turkey-Syria border, I'm James Longman. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. We're streaming ABC News Live. Essex County, a suspect on the run. Public enemy number one was James Ray. Authorities believe he shot and killed his living girlfriend inside their Montclair home. After the murder, he is on the run. He's getting out of town. Yes, he's immediately getting out of town. If you commit a crime in the state of New Jersey, we will not forget, we will not forgive, and we will find you. What did that say to you that he was on the run? If someone's acting in self-defense, why would they run? That's somebody looking to get out of town after they committed a brutal homicide. Tonight, we're taking you inside the mind of the man who pulled the trigger, his written ramblings on the road. While there was a manhunt for him, he was writing this kind of like an adventure story. His story was what? Angela was in a tirade. He feared for his life. He thought she was going to shoot. Did she tell you how much she hated James? How much she despised him? How she wanted to spit in his food? She was about to leave this relationship. No question. And he knew this? No question. He was not happy? No question. We didn't know where he was. He is just a ghost on the road.
34-year-old Angela Bledsoe, a devoted mom, has been found shot to death in her home here in upscale Montclair, New Jersey. The last person to see her alive is her live-in boyfriend, James Ray, who admits to killing her, he says, in self-defense. Now, there's a problem. James Ray has vanished. Police tonight are searching for a 55-year-old man, lawyer by day, tonight described as armed and dangerous. When the news was they're looking for help, he's on the run. And I said, well, he must have snapped if this really happened. We want to show you a photo of the man they are now wanting to arrest, 55-year-old James Ray III. Give me a sense of how you are coping. You've lost your daughter in a very tragic way. You're trying to take care of your granddaughter. And the man who's accused of killing your daughter is on the run. How are you coping with all of this? We did not know where he was. What was that like for you and the family? He, he could have come for us. There was a, a fear of what else he could do. But the Bledsoe family, in the midst of their grief, have to find a way to put their fears aside. You're planning a funeral for your daughter, and he is on the loose. Tell me about having to go through a funeral and bury your daughter, your youngest. You know, it, it hurt walking in there, but then, too, I saw an abundance of flowers. I said, my goodness. She has really touched a lot of lives. A lot of lives. It was a beautiful homegoing service for her. We had to have it at a mega church because of the number of people that were in attendance. Angela's family is waiting anxiously for news of Ray's whereabouts. And authorities are now beginning to build what they say is a timeline of Ray's actions after the deadly encounter. In those immediate hours, he doesn't leave the home. Angela is there, lifeless in the kitchen, bleeding out, and he gets everything in order. He was alone in the house from 11.30, uh, when Angela died, to 4.30, so he had a lot of time. He was planning his departure, and he was planning on getting out of town. He was also writing his last will and testament, he was doing a lot of banking. Remember, part of the trove of items Ray left behind in a suitcase with his brother were those two checks, one in the amount of $11,500 for his daughter, and another just shy of $10,000. Surveillance cameras capture Ray picking up his six-year-old daughter from school. After James picks up his daughter, he makes several more phone calls, including one to his adult daughter, Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea, how you doing? This is Dad. Love you. Just want to hear your voice. You take care of yourself. Daddy, love you very much. Listen, I'm going to ask you a big, big favor. Get to know your sister, Lana, please. Thank you for the present you gave me. Talk to you later, Chelsea. Love you. And then he called his adult son, Jay, and left him a voicemail as well. Hey, Jay, how you doing, buddy? This is Dad. Just call us that love you. Give me a buzz when you can. The longest call Ray makes is to an old friend. For about an hour, while he was on the road, he was speaking to this woman. Hello? As he's speaking to her, he's recording it. The phone call starts off with Mr. Ray discussing mundane issues such as the weather but eventually goes into um, Mr. Ray airing out his grievances about the situation with Miss Bledsoe. She's upset and annoyed because five years ago, I wasn't available to be there with her when she was pregnant. Huh? I said, I was, I was married, you know that. I did everything that I could possibly do. I was often so tired from staying out late at night visiting her and the baby 
When he started to discuss the relationship and things that he discovered on Angela's phone, you could hear his tone start to change and his demeanor start to change. I find out that she's planning to take Alana. She wrote her cousin, as soon as I get my house, I'm out. And she's gone. We're gone. It was clear based on that conversation that he had seen conversations Angela was having via text. Here's the next one. The brother-in-law has the audacity to say, Somebody ought to tell him, meaning me, that nobody in the family likes him. James Ray and his friend had this long conversation, but he left out one glaring omission, that he had just killed Angela. Ray also never mentions that he is a man on the run. So what exactly is going on in the mind of this killer? If I fly to Ethiopia and my brother and Alana need support, I need to be able to count on you, miss. You can. You can. We have really good news. Oh my God, <laughs> Lisa, you broke I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Are you ready? Let's do this! Big box of whammies! I'm feeling lucky. This is life changing. This is a lot of money. I'm going to press my luck and stop. Is that Elizabeth Banks? Players get a shot at $1 million. Let's go. Press your luck Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. Reporting from Hong Kong, I'm Britt Clenet. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. James Ray seems to have fallen off the face of the earth. Once a doting dad, he's now a wanted man, and he's been missing for nearly a week. The manhunt is for James Ray, who is suspected of fatally shooting his girlfriend inside the house they shared with their child. It was a long time that he was on the run. People were nervous. Ray had already killed his girlfriend, Angela. And now some are terrified about who could be next. Her lover in Florida had to go into a hotel into hiding. He had threatened the lover. We were fearful. We didn't know where he was. Could have came to Merlin. Authorities knew they were running out of time. This was a well-coordinated effort between federal, state, local, international efforts. We knew that if we did not move quickly, it would have the, the risk of having a cold case. Finally, after more than a week, there's a huge break in the case. We were able to put in motion a red notice. Red notice is basically an international warrant. We eventually received some information that he they traveled to Mexico. So once we, we finally found out where he was, we put out APB on him. 
including a notification should he get on a plane. And as it turned out, he did get on a plane. James Ray takes a flight to Mexico City. His passport hits. And authorities now know he has booked a flight to Havana, Cuba. Somebody reaches out to Cuban officials who take Ray into custody immediately. Now keep in mind, the United States does not have an extradition treaty with Cuba, making the extradition of American citizens from the country extremely rare. James Ray could have gone anywhere in the world, but he chooses Cuba. Seems he's trying to figure out where he can go and maybe not come back. But FBI agent Brandon Lackey flew to Cuba to do just that, bring James Ray back to the US. The supervisor yelled at me and said, Hey, Brandon, is your official passport good? And I said, yes, sir, it is. He said, OK, well, I need you to go to Cuba tomorrow. When I became an FBI agent, I never thought that I would be traveling down to Cuba to take a fugitive into custody. As we land at the airport in Havana and start taxiing towards the what we believe was the terminal, Captured on Cuban state television and obtained by NBC News is the arrest of James Ray. Seems Cuban officials wanted something in exchange for Ray. It was pretty obvious that they expected me to give some type of speech. And so they ushered me towards the podium. I spent a couple minutes just thanking the Cuban government. On behalf of the United States government, we are incredibly grateful for your assistance and your support in detaining him and getting him back to the United States. After Agent Lackey gives his speech, Cuban law enforcement officials turn Ray over to American federal agents. Mr. Ray looked healthy. I can best describe his demeanor as a mix between a little bit of surprise and a little bit of relief. When he ends up getting on the plane from Cuba back to America, escorted by federal agents, he blurts out he just went there to clear his head, that his intention was to come back in early December. Myself and Mr. Ray, we sat right beside each other for about three hours, so we talked. He did not describe any type of mistreatment by the Cuban officials, or he didn't have any altercation with any other inmates or anything like that. A murder suspect from New Jersey on the run from police, now in custody. Liz, he was on the run for nearly two weeks and finally captured some 1,300 miles away trying to escape into Cuba. Last night, the defendant, James Ray III was returned to Teterboro Airport and is now at the Essex County Correctional Facility here in Newark. Mr. Ray left New Jersey, traveled to the Southwest United States, and then crossed over the border into Mexico. From there, he took a plane to Cuba. When they finally said that they had apprehended him and that he had gotten all the way to Cuba it was just mind boggling. Nobody seems to remember any case where Cuba was involved, where there was an international flight, a uh, pursuit uh, out of the country, an apprehension, let alone the fact it was a homicide in one of the most affluent towns in New Jersey. I think he felt like, oh, America doesn't have an extradition treaty with Cuba, so I'm going to be here and forget about it. But that's not how it works, buddy. If you commit a crime in the state of New Jersey, we will not forget, we will not forgive, and we will find you. If someone's acting in self-defense, why would they run? That's not someone acting in self-defense. That's somebody looking to get out of town after they committed a brutal homicide. It was such a relief that I was very grateful that they uh, brought him back from Cuba. I wish they would have kept him there. With Ray now back on U.S. soil, police begin to search his small black duffel bag. And hidden in there is something completely unexpected. The very first page where he begins to speak about the actual incident does take us into the mind of a killer. Could this be the diary of a killer? With so much 
much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <gasps> Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner, oh, Crufts 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. I'm not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoon. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. All right, here we go, you ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live.
My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. I'm not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. <laughs> When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crooks, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner, oh, Crooks 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. When James Ray finds himself in custody back in the U.S., amongst his meager possessions are a wad of cash, a change of clothes, a road atlas, and most curiously, an 18-page handwritten journal. It's part memoir, part spy thriller. The former police officer and Marine detailing for the first time the full version of what he says happened the day he killed his live-in girlfriend, Angela Bledsoe. In his handwritten journal, he lays out a version of events after dropping his daughter off at school on the morning of October 22nd, 2018. His story was what? His story was that they together dropped off their child at school that morning. And on their way home, they began to talk about their relationship. And in his words, Angela was in a tirade. She began to get emotional and started talking about how no one in her family likes me then reflecting on what she called the worst years of her life because I called her lazy. Miss Bledsoe indicated that she was going to run errands. Thinking that he was alone in the house, he decided that it would be a good time for him to clean his guns. He took his guns out of his safe, went downstairs, placed them on the coffee table, and then went to the bathroom. He heard Angela call out to him. Upon entering the living room, he saw her sitting there with a gun in her hand. And he said she went on a tirade, complaining about everything that was wrong with her relationship and wrong with him. The very first page where he begins to speak about the actual incident. He asked Catherine Ramsland, a forensic psychologist, to analyze Ray's journal. Leaving behind a narrative that they killed someone and spending the time, it's stunning. There's no sense of being disturbed by what he's done. It's very calculated. There's a definite urge to control how exactly how people are going to understand this. James Ray's narrative does take us into the mind of a killer. As she continued to rant about all the dysfunctional things in our relationship, with a weapon pointed at me and not hearing the words coming from my mouth, put the gun down, we can talk about it. I remember feeling nervous and scared and out of options. He said he very carefully kept eye contact with her, but tried to reach for a gun to protect himself. He said he shot once in her direction. He thought he missed. He then ran back to the bathroom where he remained for several minutes, or what he describes as what felt like an eternity. Mr. Ray then exits the bathroom and follows the trail of blood leading from the living room to the kitchen. 
She was initially sitting up with the gun towards her side. Her head turned towards me as I took a step from the stove in her direction. She lifted her arm and pointed at me again. Out of reaction, I fired in her direction, and it seemed like I couldn't stop firing. He then fired multiple shots in her direction, ultimately killing her. Ray goes on to write that his intention after realizing that Angela's gone was to take his own life as well, except he had other things to do first. Left the house only with plans to return to the house, lay next to Angela and pull the trigger. However, I wanted to get Alana to a safe place and place her in the custody of my brother. He was gonna lie down and shoot himself in the head. And he kept being distracted from this idea that he was gonna kill himself too. After the murder, he is on the run. He's getting out of town. Yes, he's immediately getting out of town and getting out of the state. After the tragic course of events, a six-day road trip was underway to arrive at my planned destination of obscurity. He got a taxi to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he paid cash for that cab ride. He knows to lose his car because he knows police will be looking for that car. Remember, this is an ex-cop. He's a lawyer. He knows how the criminal investigation works. So he's being very methodical about what he's doing. Describing what he says he does after he leaves New Jersey, Ray's writings become even more bizarre, almost as if he's narrating a novel. While there was a manhunt for him, he was writing this kind of like an adventure story. He writes that this should be published and half of the proceeds can go to my daughter. In the journal, names are changed. Ray calls himself Jack, Angela Mousy, and his young daughter, Snookums. The Chronicle even has an apt title, On the Move. The taxi from Newark Airport dropped Jack off in Philadelphia Chinatown at 2 a.m. As he passed the block where homeless undertook shelter, Jack sought cover of police by blending in with the homeless to get some sleep. And he had the murder weapon, and he dislodged various pieces and left them in different restrooms along the way. And then he went to a truck stop and started hitching rides. James, calling himself Jack, hitchhikes through multiple states into Mexico before ultimately making that ill-fated trip to Cuba. The once successful attorney at law now running from it with just the clothes on his back. With little money available, Jack had to adopt a survivor's mentality, only focus on shelter, money, and food. I don't think James Ray ever thought he was coming back to face a court and a jury in Essex County, New Jersey. He chronicled so much of his escape in this story in a journal. How important was this journal to you in your case? It was extremely important. You compare it to the evidence that you have, and you're able to corroborate or contradict what he is claiming. Now charged with murder, James Ray is about to stand trial, and his words wouldn't be the only ones coming back to haunt him. I enjoy going to the conference with my sister. It reminds me of what life that I could have had had I listened to her when I was in my 20s. Angela Bledsoe was dead, but in some way she was almost able to speak to you. Absolutely. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. We hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know which am. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. 
All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. I'm not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. <laughs> Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war. For nonstop live coverage, stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is Secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Uh -oh. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this Mr.? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> 
Generation Gap, Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. Are you ready? Let's do this! Big box of whammies! And stop! It's life changing. This is a lot of money. I'm going to press my lap and stop! Is that Elizabeth Bank? Players get a shot at one million dollars. Your luck Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Reporting from LaGuardia Airport, I'm Gio Benitez. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. There's a saying, the wheels of justice turn slowly. But in the case of James Ray, that was an understatement. It would take four and a half years before his high profile case, delayed by the pandemic, would finally make it to this New Jersey courthouse. Weeks turn into months, turn into years. You are dealing with your grief and your broken heart. And now you've got this trial that's facing you. How important was that to you to stay the course for the trial? Very important for our daughter until the trial came. Four years after Angela Bledsoe was shot and killed in her Montclair home, her boyfriend is now standing trial for murder. Every day, Angela's grief-stricken parents sit side by side in the New Jersey courtroom. Other family and friends of hers wear pins adorned with her picture to show their support. We were gonna show up on a regular to make sure that they understood that we loved her, we're gonna be here for her. We knew that this is going to be one of the biggest trials that happened in the state of New Jersey in a very, very long time. The prosecution's challenge is to demonstrate that he did not act in self-defense, that it was intentional. What was really interesting to me is that the jury is 14 with alternates, and 10 of them are men. There's only four women on the jury. And that was pretty striking to me, especially since the victim is female. She was brutally gunned down by James Ray, the defendant seated here before you, in the home that they shared with their six-year-old daughter. Michelle Miller, she is a pit bull. She stays on a case like a pit bull on a pork chop. She really sunk her teeth into it. And while her body was bleeding out and getting cold from death, this attorney and former United States Marine was preparing for a life of obscurity in the hope of taking refuge in a non-extraditing country of Cuba. Pitted against the prosecution is hard-nosed, brash New Jersey native, defense attorney Brooke Barnett. Brooke Barnett is a very successful lawyer. She's won many cases. She does a lot of these high-profile cases. When confronted by Angela <laughs> with a gun pointing directly at him, that he had no choice but to shoot. She's really fiery, and Brooke made some really, like, big bombshell accusations. It was theater, really. Ms. Miller, your next witness. Uh, this is called Robert Ray. Naturally, one of the first people prosecutors called to the stand, James Ray's brother, Robert. Testified against his own brother. He did. He did. Why did you feel you had to call the police? I didn't think anyone else had. If the contents of the letter were what were written in it, then um, the police needed to be called. It was riveting. People were like, oh my god. So I, I, I feel like there was a, I'm doing the right thing, but that's my brother. I think that first it was Robert Ray, set the tone for the entire trial. Angela Bledsoe was dead 
but in some way she was almost able to speak to you. Absolutely. Through text messages. Absolutely. Angelo would complain that he was controlling and demeaning. He was sending her Bible verses on how a woman should be submissive to her man. Angela's sister, Lisa Labou, took the stand to read some of the text messages they exchanged in the months leading up to the shooting. What did she text you on uh, October 12th, 2018 at 5.37 a.m.? She says, he's been up all night. I think, wonder if he went through my phone. When you were on the stand at one point, you read a text that your sister had sent you mm -hmm. that had alarmed you. Mm -hmm. What did it say? Pretty much, I'm going to beat you up if I find that you're cheating. That's pretty scary stuff. Lisa Labou was asked to read excerpts from Angela's diary. She saw entries about how James Ray treated her. She literally broke down in tears. I enjoyed going to the conference with my sister. It reminds me of what the life, of what life that I could have had had I listened to her when I was in my 20s. I would have moved to Florida, purchased a very nice house, and built a practice. Wait a minute, Judge, close. You became so emotional, at some point they had to pause the court. What were you feeling at that moment? That just tore me apart. She was about to leave this relationship. No question. And he knew this. No question. He was not happy. No question. So there was your motive right there. One of our motives. It became very clear that there was not only motive evidence that would present a reason why Mr. Ray would want to kill Angela. There was also evidence that would directly refute his claim of self-defense that had been put forth in his handwritten journal. It really put together a, um, a very clear picture of what occurred. We hired an expert a blood stain pattern analysis expert, and he was critical to the case as well. Howard Ryan, who walked us through the crime scene analysis, testified for the prosecution. Is there any evidence that you could see from this crime scene that would support that handgun uh, in the kitchen ever being in Angela Bledsoe's hand? No, I don't think it was ever in her hand. Based on the evidence, she was trying to get away, and he gunned her down from behind. That's not exactly self-defense. It's not self-defense. I think when the jury heard this forensics analysis, that said to them, there's no disputing the science here. We were all very curious to see how is this gentleman going to defend himself. That's when Brooke Barnett takes center stage. Angela had grown to hate, even despise, disdain for James. She was finding flaws, and it was working. So I believe at that point, the tides shifted. Angela was not controlled. Where does it show that James is controlling? If anything, she's the one who's on his heels. Where are you? When are you coming back? How long are you going to be? No evidence of that. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Trump. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. news breaks. It's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. 
We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. He hunts humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know which animal. That just scared everybody. I've got to hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. Send a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights. America's most honored streaming news program. Only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now wherever you stream your news. the globe the world will be celebrating the new year and you can see it as it happens live the global celebrations see the new year as it comes in live. streaming all day and night on abc news live abc news live prime winner of the gracie award for best news program in all of television stream abc news live prime with lindsey davis weeknights on abc news live why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day. On the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is a place to sing to magic. Our winner of Crufts 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs. Now streaming on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. 
I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. If you had a wish, I wish. Would you wish to go to the most magical place on Earth, Disneyland Paris? What if your wish could come true? Tell us why you deserve to go to Disneyland Paris. Scan this QR code right now to find out how to enter. And just maybe, your wish will come true. Wishes opening in theaters. Tickets are on sale now. For weeks, the prosecution has presented a parade of witnesses and strong, incriminating evidence against James Ray. Now, it's the defense's turn, and Ray's fiery theatrical lawyer, Brooke Barnett, goes on the offensive. This idea that he's there to try to control her, prove it. So in the end, that really shows a lot about his character, ladies and gentlemen. Angela had grown to hate, even despise. She had disdain for James. Brooke Barnett didn't hold back, and it was shocking to everybody involved. You could hear gasps at times. She went right at those jurors, trying to gain some kind of sympathy for her client and portraying Angela in a very negative light. While prosecutors framed Ray as controlling and jealous, asking about passwords to her phone, that my brother was frustrated because Angela wanted to move. Barnett paints Angela Bledsoe as an opportunist, a woman involved with two men of means. Ray and Bakari Burns. She wanted to go to Florida to get her shot with Bakari Burns. I learned kind of like with everyone else, like that Bakari was actually a person that she was involved with. 49-year-old Burns, an Orlando, Florida city commissioner, and the man with whom Angela was having that affair is called to the stand as a prosecution witness. Good morning, Angela, baby. I wish I was rolling over to give you a good morning kiss and some good morning what did that mean, Bakari? It's self-explanatory. Oh, educate me. The defense was trying to show James Ray as a sympathetic figure, and that's what they were doing here. Bakari Burns was having these exchanges with Angela Bledsoe. When Brooke Barnett was trying to paint the picture that Angela Bledsoe was this homewrecker, I'm looking around the room, and every single day, her parents sat on the left-hand side of the courtroom in the gallery, and they're crying. One day, it got so bad. It, it was their emotion. It, it doesn't was have their emotion. emotion. I didn't have to make a motion. The father fainted. He had to be taken out of the court. How difficult was that for you, to hear unsavory things about your daughter? It was very, very difficult. It seemed like you were victimized over a game, o over lies. And I used to sit there, is this how the law acts? Do people who are sitting here suffering? Our family. For us to have to sit there and listen to that and to be treated like we were, that really bothered us. Then you were cross-examined. Right. Meaning nobody, not you nor anyone else, you don't, you don't live with a couple. You don't really know what happens behind closed doors, correct? I wouldn't say nobody, so I don't agree to that. Well, did Angela know the ins and outs of your marital issues or problems between you and your husband? What problems? Oh, you have a perfect marriage? Objection argumentative, Judge. Objection as to argumentative sustained. I've never been in a courtroom like that before. And it was grueling, and I had no idea it was going to be over a two-day period. Did she tell you how much she hated James, how much she despised him, how she wanted to spit in his food? She did say that she wanted to spit in his food. She couldn't stand it. You couldn't stand him. She couldn't stand him, right? I didn't like his behavior, no. Absolutely not. The defense strategy appears to be twofold. Paint Angela in an unflattering light and put their own witness, a firearms expert, on the stand to rebut the state's crime scene analyst's testimony. The defense has to put somebody on the stand who will corroborate what James Ray is saying. I came to a conclusion that his account was consistent with physical evidence that I looked at and with scientific things I know about shooting and shooting scenes and ballistics. I think from the start, Brooke Barnett and the defense took the tack that this was somewhat of a lackadaisical investigation by detectives. I didn't see it as fully until Marat Muhammad got on the stand. 
Detective Murad Muhammad was the lead investigator on the case. Barnett accused him of willful blindness for failing to speak to people Ray called on the day of the murder and failing to send Angela's cell phone for extraction. So in this case, you did not obtain the telephone evidence from any of these witnesses because you did not feel that it was going to be valuable to your investigation. Is that your testimony, Detective? No. No, you didn't feel important? Everything's important. Okay. But you didn't obtain any telephone evidence or complete telephone evidence in this case, correct? Yes. She was finding flaws, and it was working. So I believe at that point, the tides shifted. As the trial went on, were you worried that he might be acquitted? There were concerns because all you need is reasonable doubt by one person. So yeah, that's kind of scary. And if you keep saying certain things enough, they're going to believe it. I'll stand for the entrance of the jurors. I submit that if we are to consider the only available account of what happened in the moments, the hours, and the days prior to James Ray being confronted with deadly force, then you must find James Ray not guilty. Uh, the evidence would show that this was a knowing and purposeful murder. I think Ms. Miller did an excellent job in her summation. If Frank said to you yesterday that I had the last word, well, that's not true. You had the last word here. And the state submits after all the evidence they presented. That last word should be guilty. The jury finally gets the case. How worried were you about whether you were actually going to prevail? I felt very confident in the evidence that we presented to the jury. But there's always a risk in a domestic violence homicide such as this, again, where there are no witnesses. But However, when the jury went out. Yeah, when the jury goes out, it's out of your control. Predominantly male jury, you don't know what they're going to decide. And after a seven-week trial, the jury took all of three hours to come back with the verdict, which is extraordinarily fast. How do you find on the charge of murder? On the charge of murder, we find the defendant's duty of murder. The verdict is in, and the verdict is guilty. A jury decides James Ray killed Angela Bledsoe. There was proof beyond a reasonable doubt in every uh, sense of the word. The jurors having returned a verdict of guilty on all counts. As soon as that foreman said guilty, we looked at James Ray, and there was no change. This was a stoic man through and through, emotionless to the end. You hear that guilty verdict. What goes through your mind and your heart? I felt relieved. I felt hurt. I kind of asked myself, who really won? Who won after what we have gone through? It's like, thank you, we're getting justice. But she's still not here. Like, it's like you're back to reality. That she's, she's not here. Like, and it gives you a moment of satisfaction. But that feeling just comes back. Like, you're, you're sad again. James Ray stood up. He said one or two words, which he whispered in the ear of his attorneys. And he was led away in handcuffs by the sheriff's officers back to his jail cell. But two days before Ray's sentencing, when it seems the Bledsoe family is about to find the justice they've been seeking, a bombshell. Does the murder conviction stand? I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. 
the crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. <laughs> Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> Generation Gap. Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. Are you ready? Let's do this! Big box of whammies! It's life-changing. This is a lot of money. I'm going to press my luck and stop. Is that Elizabeth Banks? Players get a shot at $1 million. Let's go. Press your luck Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. You're watching America's number one streaming news. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Reporting from the war in Ukraine, I'm Ian Panel. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. It took only three hours of deliberations for this jury to come back with a verdict of guilty against James Ray. After nearly five long years, when it seems the Bledsoe family is finally about to see the justice they've been praying for, a shocking turn. On of all days, Father's Day. In New Jersey, a man who murdered his girlfriend was found dead in his jail cell. The Essex County prosecutor says James Ray was discovered overnight not breathing. He was due to be sentenced later this week and faced the possibility of a life sentence. According to a statement released by the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, the cause and manner of Ray's death are unknown, and an autopsy is pending. And in a stunning twist, Ray's death has a dramatic and unexpected impact on his conviction. If someone dies in custody before they've had a chance to be sentenced, it's not uncommon across the country for those charges to be dropped. Does the murder conviction stand? No, it doesn't. Actually, uh... What happens is uh, the case is likely to be dismissed. Dismissed? Yeah. After uh, all of that? Technically, you're not convicted in the state of New Jersey until you're sentenced. So while the jury found him guilty, it's not concluded until a judgment of conviction is rendered by the court. This adds insult to injury for the Bledsoes, who feel cheated out of justice. There's not a day that goes by, not a one day. That Angie is the our mind. Every yeah. day we think about that girl. I still hurt. I still hurt. As a father, I wasn't there to protect her. One day I told my husband, I said, you know, I could just go to sleep and not wake up because the pain and the sorrow, it's like you're just drowning, you know? But in the midst of all of this tragedy, 
a glimmer of hope. Their daughter is living her best fun preteen life down in Florida um, with her Aunt Lisa. And I'm going to make sure she has everything that she needs. And she's like a daughter to me. She's super smart, just like Angela was. She says she's doing extremely well in school, straight A student, coping well. Do you like the kids at school? Yeah, they're nice. Yeah? I had a chance to spend some time with Alana in New York City recently. She told me about her life as a cheerleader. She's now in seventh grade. In spite of all of that loss, remarkably, she's thriving. Angela loved her so much. Angela and I used to talk about cardinals, like red birds all the time. And whenever I think of her, one always appears outside of my kitchen window. Do you find yourself talking to Angie in your thoughts, in your prayers? Mm -hmm. In my dreams, I do. I had a dream that uh, she grabbed my hand, I grabbed her hand. And I said, Angie, Angie, don't go. And she said, she said, I got to go, I can't stay. And she floated on away. As I sat there with that family, there was so much emotion, but there could be a bit of closure coming for them, David. I know the prosecutor has told you that she hopes the judge will still hear the victim impact statements, and of course, we'll stay on this. That is our program for tonight. I'm David Muir. And I'm Deborah Roberts. From all of us here at 2020 and ABC News, good night. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. All across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year. And you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. I'm Matt Cuffin reporting along the front lines of the war with Israel. Wherever the new king will take you there, they're streaming ABC News Live. A serial killer on the loose. And a town in panic. 2020 starts right now. Ready? Everybody was scared that you were showing up to Laredo. Somebody needed to put it out there, you know? Something was wrong and bodies were being found all over the place. It was along this dusty road that a rancher found a woman's body face down in that brush. So it is a female in her mid-30s. It seemed like, a, like an actual execution. How can someone just be thrown on the side of the road? What kind of person would do this? A monster. These back streets became a killer's hunting ground. There was concern out there, could we be next? And then another victim was found. And I've got a, a female in the grass laying. Come on, y'all, y'all gotta hurry. And I think 
my whole neighborhood heard me scream. Just to know that she was like left there to die. I'm, I'm sorry. I've, nobody deserves that, nobody. We may have a serial killer on our hands. I told the chief, you need to find him because there's gonna be more. Me quería, me sacó la pistola y me quería subir y me empecé a gritar, help me, help me. And that's just the beginning of our nightmare. That's just the beginning. Hey, 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 hey! It's a border town, but it's also one of the biggest border towns in the United States. So we are in the back streets of San Bernardo Avenue in downtown Laredo, commonly known as La Samber. This is personal to me because this is often where my mother worked and walked around. She stayed around this area. There would be times where I would have to come down here to look for her. Claudine Luetta was a mother. She loved her five children, and her family loved her. Let's talk about your mom. What was she like? My mom, she was perfect. She was beautiful. She was funny. She was the best cook ever. You know, very thoughtful, very lovable. Oh, always reminding me like how much she loved me. We were, I think, well grounded by my family. And, you know, we didn't have much, but we had what we needed. We were known as the Wedditas, the little white girls, because my mother was originally from Glasgow, Scotland. And my father, he was born and raised here in Laredo, Texas. Family was very important for her. She wanted us to have a better life and felt like she couldn't provide that for us. So then she resorted to the streets. She started going into a depression and she didn't know there would be a way out. And we started noticing more habits. She had her own demons, but at the end of the day, she loved us. Did you worry about her safety? Every day. I would, you know, cry, pray to God because she was on the streets, you know. I always had that worry in the back of my head. Claudine was a woman who worked on San Bernardo Avenue. San Bernardo has a unique kind of character on its own. It's known as having those little mom and pop shops. It's also known for its dark side, the drug use, the drug exchanges. It's always been really known as that sort of red light district. I was born and raised right here in South Texas. So I know the good people of Laredo are humble, warm, welcoming, and grounded in their Mexican-American heritage. You're gonna see so much of the Mexican culture here in Laredo. Laredo's known for the Jalapeño Festival. Go! Laredo! This town is called the Gateway City. And because it's right here on the border, there's a heavy law enforcement presence here. This is not a place where people fear for their safety. And that's why the murder of a young woman on the outskirts of town in 2018 shook this community to its very core. I'm here driving by Jeffrey's Road. I believe I found a dead body there. Hay un cuerpo. Sí. I'll go ahead and send somebody. Okay, thank you. She was found in Webb County in a colonia area. There's nothing after. Once you get outside of the city limits, it's rural Texas. It's, you know, it's just farmland. It's very flat land, dirt roads. Not an area that city folks will visit unless they have a purpose to be there. 
It was along this dusty road that a rancher found a woman's body face down in that brush. She had been shot at close range several times. To investigators, this wasn't just a murder. It would have happened about right here. Right here. It seemed like an actual execution. Back of the head and shot her here. Captain Federico Calderon of the Webb County Sheriff's Office and Texas Ranger E.J. Salinas led the investigation, and they brought us to the crime scene. And she was found out in the open where anyone could have seen this. Right here, half on the road, half on the berm there, but yeah, completely out in the open. How long has she been out here? Hours. It could have happened that night before. What leads you to believe that she was killed here and not somewhere else and then her body dumped here? The... The evidence that the, was the evidence the, behind, the body. Yeah. I mean, the shell casings were right there next to the body. I mean. The eagle-eyed detectives find 40 caliber shell casings, as well as distinct tire tread marks that appear to be from a pickup truck. And yeah. where were the tire marks found? Show me back here. So the tire marks would have been here from where he turned around. And then he just left her here. He just left mm -hmm. her here. What kind of person would do this? A monster. We have new information regarding the body of a woman found in northwest Webb County. Authorities have not yet released the name of the victim. I was extremely worried that that could have been my mother. That was a fear, you know, I had every night growing up. Later that day, the medical examiner was able to identify the victim. But it wasn't Claudine Luetta, as her daughter, Sierra, had feared. Authorities confirmed tonight that the victim in this case is 29-year-old Melissa Ramirez from right here in Laredo. As soon as law enforcement identified the victim as Melissa Ramirez, investigators notified her mother, Maria Cristina Benavides. Two detectives go to your front door. What do they say? Encontramos a su hija fallecida en un rancho en el norte. Yo sentí que se me fue la sangre, sentí helado y me derrumbé. Me derrumbé, no no podía hablar, solo estaba llorando, estaba gritando. I grew up with Melissa since we were little. We were best friends, so I know her since she was a baby. Everybody just loved being around her because she was always joking around, singing and dancing. And she was a human being, a beautiful human being. I spoke to my mother, and you know, I was very relieved that it wasn't her. And she did share with me that somebody from Samber had been murdered. The community itself in San Bernardo, everybody knew each other and they would watch out for each other. What was their relationship like with Melissa? They were very close. And they would protect each other in the streets. No one knew what happened, how it happened. It was just a waiting game. But it wasn't long before investigators get a break in the case. A vehicle had been seen leaving the scene of the crime in a suspicious manner. Witnesses at the scene had spotted a dark truck along Jeffrey's Road near the victim's body. Before the vehicle left the scene, witnesses were able to get a license plate. Who was that person? That person ended up being a police officer. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there will be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice hunt humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. 
sent a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We are back for another season of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah! With big stars and big laughs. <laughs> and a big chance to win. Big money feels good. Million dollars. Oh my God! With these stars, you never know what's going to happen. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. I'm not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. And the magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war. For nonstop live coverage, stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wiener Mobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. When the announcer calls 
My name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <laughs> Welcome to Crufts, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner of Crufts 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. Welcome to Generation Gap. Thursdays. What is secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? <laughs> Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Uh -oh. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this mister? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. <laughs> Generation Gap. Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. Are you ready? Let's do that! Big box of whammies! And stop! It's just life changing. This is a lot of money. I'm going to press my life and stop. Is that Elizabeth Banks? Players get a shot at one million dollars. Let's go. Press your luck Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Esta foto aquí yo se la tomé. Esta también. Esta también yo se la tomé. Uh, that's with her little boy? Sí. Uh, when you remember your daughter, what do you think? Que me hace mucha falta. When do you think of her? Todos los días. Todos los días pienso en ella, todos los días la extraño. En las noches lloro. Todos los días. You're lucky you took sí. these pictures. Good afternoon, I'm Brenna Camacho. It's a story that shook the Laredo community. Melissa Ramirez's body was found on US 83 North near Camino Columbia Road. On the day that we found out who the victim was, our reporters started going out in the field. We had learned that she was a sex worker that was picked up on San Bernardo. San Bernardo Avenue is known in Laredo. It's definitely a place at night where the sex workers walk along. You know, there's probably drugs being sold along the roadway as well. According to investigators, Melissa Ramirez had been on the streets for years using money from sexual encounters to buy drugs, but her family says she kept this lifestyle a secret from them. How did she start working at San Bernardo Avenue? Ella nunca me andaba diciendo que que iba a ir a la calle a hacer esto, lo otro. She never told yo no sabía, yo no sabía nada. Yo a ella nunca la vi, nunca la vi que tomara, nunca la vi que hiciera drogas. Whatever she did, she did, and who was we to judge? What if she was going to already leave that life? We don't know. She was private. She was very, very private. We do have to think about why people choose to do sex work. Often it's addiction or the need to feed our children. And once that cycle begins, it's very difficult. Claudine Luetta's daughter, Sierra, watched her mother struggle with those problems. She never wanted to tell me, like, oh, I'm a sex worker. She was ashamed, but addicted, right? And she was, like, severely addicted to heroin. And she would need to go back to San Bernardo to get that fix. When Melissa did go on, did you worry? Sí, sí me preocupaba porque a veces se iba dos o tres días. So yo le decía, háblame, háblame porque yo me quedo con el pendiente. In fact, two weeks before her daughter's murder, Christina says Melissa came to her with a chilling premonition. Me dijo, me van a matar así de repente, me van a quebrar con un cohete así. Como que miraba algo del futuro. We were trying to find out who did it. At that point, we didn't know who it was, because anybody can be a suspect. And while Melissa Ramirez's family questioned who might want her dead, investigators were chasing down that lead about a black pickup truck seen near her body. There was a vehicle on that specific ranch road where her body was found. 
and the homeowners that were at a adjacent property saw the vehicle. They see that it was parked there for some amount of time that caught their attention. And when they saw it drive away, they noticed that there was a body next to the truck. So they naturally came to the conclusion that truck was involved with that body somehow. I'm the district attorney. My communication to the deputies who are working the scene is, we need to find this man who did this. We had to find that truck. Police use any sort of resource they can pool to get that license plate and figure out all of the information attached to it. At some point, they enlist the help of Border Patrol to track down whose license plate is this. At the time, I was assigned to an intel center that's housed there with Border Patrol. And every time we run across a name, a number, I usually call up there to get research done. And they had cameras out there. They monitor cameras that's mainly along the river in some brush areas. That can be helpful. That can be beneficial. So that was one of my first calls. Law enforcement is able to identify the driver. Who was that person? That person ended up being a police officer. It was surprising to hear that a police officer was in that truck and could have potentially been the suspect. We're making sure that cross your T's, dot your I's. But yes, they're thinking, hopefully, we have the person. The sheriff's office and the rangers confronted him, brought him in for questioning, and they got a search warrant to go to his house and recover weapons and trying to check his alibis, check his history. This individual cooperated with investigators and told his side of the story. According to the officer, he was out with his kids looking at properties for sale. He never saw the body on the side of the road. At the end, it ended up being a case of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. All of that was corroborated, and he was cleared as a suspect. The victim in this case is 29-year-old Melissa Ramirez. So far, no arrests have been made. Once police already ruled out the police officer as the suspect, they go back to the drawing board. It was important to try to get information on any of the Johns or boyfriends that may have been visiting with her leading up to the murder. We didn't know if we were dealing with a person who was in the drug or prostitution world or human trafficking. We were trying to find what happened that night, who she was with. Melissa's mother, Christina, had provided investigators with the name of a man she says spent time with her daughter just days before her murder. He was a regular, a regular, I guess, customer. He was driving a vehicle similar to a vehicle that was in the area early on. And he had picked her up. And he had picked her up. When investigators ran a background check on the suspect, they learned he owned a gun similar to the one used to kill Melissa. With that information in hand, law enforcement sets up surveillance at his home. Anything could have happened in that situation. He could be armed and dangerous. Investigators were prepared for a confrontation. This is ABC News Live. The crushing of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. news breaks. It's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. 
We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. There's something wrong here. All I could see was the torso and the feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. At some point, there would be more victims. We were against the clock. Find that evidence and bring it to justice. He hunts humans as prey. I've never saw that kind of evil before. Just the devil incarnate. It's like a cat and mouse game. I know it's him. That just scared everybody. You guys gotta hurry. Once you've taken someone, you either kill them or you get caught. I'm sending a few cold chills down my spine. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime at Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. If you had a wish, I wish. Would you wish to go to the most magical place on Earth, Disneyland Paris? What if your wish could come true? Tell us why you deserve to go to Disneyland Paris. Scan this QR code right now to find out how to enter. And just maybe, your wish will come true. It's a wish. Wishes opening in theaters. Tickets are on sale now. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. across the globe, the world will be celebrating the new year, and you can see it as it happens live. The global celebrations. See the new year as it comes in live. Streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. <gasps> Welcome to Crux, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. <gasps> Our winner of Crux 2023. <laughs> the Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. 
I totally believe in you. Are you ready? Let's do that! Big box of whammies! And stop! It's just life changing. This is a lot of money. I'm gonna press my luck and stop! Is that Elizabeth Banks? Players get a shot at one million. Your luck Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. I'm Matt Gutman reporting in the Janine refugee camp in the West Bank. Wherever the news is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Initially, you thought you yes. had a suspect. Right? Yes. We had several leads. Of course, uh, being in the business, you tend to pick up different people. Investigators had set their sights on a suspect who, according to Melissa's family, had seen her days before the murder. And so they placed his home under surveillance. Their concern is, what is the situation going to be like once we confront him? They have to be careful with this situation because you don't know, is this guy going to pull out a gun? Is he armed and dangerous? Law enforcement had a clock that was ticking. So on September the 6th of 2018, when they were conducting surveillance, was the first time they, they got a look at him. Sure enough, they're able to intercept him as he's walking out of his home. Once they approach him, uh, they identify themselves as to what their purpose is. He cooperates and agrees to go to the station and question him as to when the last time he saw Melissa. He relates that uh, it would have been two to three days before her murder and that he picked her up on, on San Bernardo Avenue. He's with her uh, that evening. And at the end of the night, he drops her off at the Pan American Motel. And that is the last time that he saw her. He handed over his cell phone and was eventually cleared as a suspect after cell tower data placed him elsewhere on the day of the murder. At the end, his story checked out. And at this point, you have some names of Ramirez's associates. Correct. Correct. In fact, you followed up on three leads of three men who had known Melissa. Correct. And none of them turned out to be the killer. They all seemed like good leads at the time, and uh, we we did our investigation, and we, we followed up, interviewed, and we did what we had to, but at the end of the day, they weren't panning out as, as, as viable suspects. Were you praying for that the killer be found? Sí, yo tenía sus cenizas en la casa, y yo agarraba la urna, La abrazaba así conmigo y le decía, dime quién fue, quién, quién te quitó la vida. Le pedía mucho a Dios que tenían que encontrar a la persona que, que la mató. I know that they were working tirelessly, the investigators in this case. We weren't sleeping. Uh, me and Fred were tied up the hip for those next couple of days. They're trying to, you know, hone in on who could have picked up Melissa, who was this person. They were literally working nonstop trying to find the killer. We were out there every day talking to people, visiting different, you know, residences and businesses, driving up and down San Bernardo and uh, areas around that area and, and talking to people on the streets, talking to people in their front yards and uh, hoping somebody could give us some information. Old fashioned police work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We had been able to piece together the days leading up mm -hmm. and who she had been with and who she had frequented with, but that critical time before she died was what we were missing. Mm -hmm. I think the number one thing that we wanted to know was to find peace and to make sure that that person didn't hurt someone else or hurt our family. With a killer on the loose, the city of Laredo remained on high alert, and so did the women of La Samber. 
I think their friends mm -hmm. that worked in the same industry probably pieced it together first. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going around killing our friends. Though Melissa Ramirez's case confounded investigators, they suspected that these back streets had become a killer's hunting ground. I'm walking down San Bernardo Avenue, better known as La Sandra. It's Laredo's red light district. And although things have changed a little bit since 2018, it's still business as usual here. What brings you out here? Um, I don't know exactly how to say. I don't really know how to explain myself. I guess necessities. You heard what happened. How scary was that to you? Uh, very. I actually was asleep that night. I was going to be out here, you know, and thankfully I was asleep. You were going to be out here that night? Yeah. You know, because I'm always around here. So, yeah. How dangerous is it? Very. <laughs> you never know whose car you're getting into. Yeah. Why do you do it? I really don't know. And even after what happened, you're still out here. It's dangerous. You think you'll ever leave the streets? Yes. All right. You be careful, OK? One of the names that had come up is Claudine Luera. It's a friend of, of Melissa's who would have been also working on the San Bernardo. But law enforcement felt that perhaps she could have provided information on the last time that Melissa was picked up. How did your mom react to Melissa's murder? She was afraid. She was worried. <laughs> My mother had asked me to get her a taxi and to pay for it, for her to get taken to my apartment. And she asked if she could stay there then, because she just didn't feel safe. She just, you know, I could tell there was fear. Police are still not releasing much information in connection to the case of a woman found dead in a rural part of Webb County. In the days following Melissa's murder, there have been no arrests. No arrests. Are you feeling pressure from the community? There's always pressure when somebody's been killed, especially uh, in this in this manner. People cared because how can someone just be thrown on the side of the road and nothing's done about it? She's just as important as every other person, so the community wanted answers and they wanted to prevent it from happening again. One of the biggest challenges we have in law enforcement is time. Right, so time is the biggest enemy that we, we have when I say that, because only the criminal can decide when, where, and how to commit the crimes. There was concern out there, could we be next? 10 days later, there were reports of a second victim. The victim was found about a mile away from Laredo's previous homicide victim. And that's just the beginning of our nightmare. That's just the beginning. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is OK. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. 
the generation gap. Thursdays. What is secretariat? A secretary? That's a woman? Kelly Ripa hosts the comedy game show where nobody acts their age. Juniors and seniors work together to flex their pop culture knowledge for big prizes and bigger fun. Who is this Mr.? Mr. Rockstar? Mr. T is going to be very upset with all of us. Generation Gap, Thursdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. Are you ready? Let's do that! Big box on Whammy's hand! It's life-changing. A shot at one million dollars. Let's go. Press your luck Tuesday, 10, 9 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. ABC News, America's number one news source. Who did you think would have been responsible for this crime? It was a whodunit at that time. And law enforcement's trying to catch up. Ten days into the investigation, we still didn't have much. We still didn't have much. And then another victim was found. Correct. On the morning of September 13, 2018, a truck driver spots the body of a young woman in a ditch about a mile up the road from where Melissa Ramirez was killed. Left County 911. Hey, I'm at uh, I'm on Highway 255. Okay. And I've okay. got a, a female in the grass laying. Uh, he initially thought that she probably got hit by a car. Uh, but then, close inspection, uh, you know, she was shot. The victim had been shot in the back of the head, but was still clinging to life. And I don't know if she's unconscious, but she is breathing right now. But there is oh. blood all over the grass, okay? So y'all better send a paramedic and the police yes. first. She was probably there laying for hours before law enforcement found her. I can't believe nobody else stopped her for this freaking lady. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to hurry. She's still breathing, though. Y'all got to hurry. Was she able to give you a description of her assailant? No, she really couldn't process much information other than the, the amount of pain that she was feeling. The victim was found this morning after a concerned citizen reported the discovery to the Webb County Sheriff's Office. She was alive when deputies arrived, but later died at the hospital, and an investigation is now underway. There were a lot of personal belongings, and even her shoes were there. There was two casings recovered from this crime scene, but the victim had only one impact to the back of her head, which was indicative to me that the victim was trying to run away at the time that she was shot. My husband told me I saw it on the news. It said, second victim found. I didn't know anything. Nobody knew anything. It was a similar circumstance to a Melissa. We had no idea who the victim was yet, but based off of how she was found and the similarities in the case, it was natural to assume could it possibly be another sex worker? News travels fast in Laredo, and Claudine's sisters were soon hearing rumors that she may have been killed. People are saying that the person they found was Claudine. That's the word in the street. And I call my sister, and I'm shaking, and I'm like, you need to call the police. We have to find her. We have to find her. The last time I spoke with her was on Tuesday. I believe it was the 11th. And what happens? You get a phone call? Yeah, and um, I get a phone call. I answer, we talk for a bit, and then I get some messages just telling me how much she loves me. And she tells me the most beautiful things, like, chula, hermosa, preciosa, like, that I love more than anything in this world, to infinity and beyond. 
It was like the most beautiful message she had sent. I called an investigator friend to see what was going on, and I gave my sister's description of all the tattoos, all her scars that I can recall, and she immediately said, this case belongs to the Texas Rangers. Uh, Captain Calderon responded, and I responded as well. After surveying the scene, collecting some of the stuff that she had, we learned her name. I ended up calling the coroner's office, but for some reason, they didn't want to release any information. Well, her kids are about to come home from school. I go, what am I supposed to tell them? I go, she's not answering her phone. And I guess, you know, the lady felt sorry for me, and she said, we can't confirm that it is Claudine Luet. And at that point, I just lost it. I think my whole neighborhood heard me scream. Colette then had to break the devastating news to her niece, Sierra. The images that I saw, you know, of the blood on the ground and how much blood, it looked almost like she dragged her body and she fought, and she fought very hard. That, just to know that she was, like, left there to die. I mean, Sorry. Nobody deserves that. Nobody. But she had such a good heart. And she was just the sweetest lady. And she tried, you know, she had her vices, she had her addiction. But she still fought. She still tried. She still was, you know, trying to be present for us. What really went through my mind was that she was still alive. And she was on the side of the road, and he threw her like trash. I said, who does that, you know? Did you wind up asking yourself who might have been responsible? Yes. I thought it would have been one of her ex-boyfriends, because she was always in toxic relationships. I was just thinking, who else could it have been? And while Claudine's family questioned who was responsible, investigators had a theory. You said that Claudine Luetta might have been a possible witness to Melissa's murder. That's correct. We were looking for her as one of the last possible witnesses that had seen Melissa with the unknown person who ended up later killing her. Do you think that's why Luetta was killed? You know... He was trying to tie up loose ends? We can speculate, but that's too much of a coincidence. You can start seeing that the suspect has created a form of M.O., that this is the group that he's targeting because the similarities are just uncanny. I've always felt very safe here, and this was probably the first time where I thought, goodness, this is, this is real. I told the chief deputy of the sheriff's office, we may have a serial killer on our hands. You need to get this guy. You need to find him because there's gonna be more. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television.
streaming all day and night on ABC News Live. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. When the announcer calls my name, the world almost fades away. It's the biggest, it's the most famous dog event there is. Welcome to Crux, the world's greatest dog show. The competition in dog dancing is very stiff. Here, every dog has its day on the dance floor. Dancing with my dog is the closest thing to magic. Our winner, all oh, Crux 2023. The Secret Life of Dancing Dogs, now streaming on Hulu. It just takes one great idea to change your life. I love being a businesswoman. I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. We're not built to give up, and I'm not going to. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. I totally believe in you. <laughs> Love your dog? Do you love to dance? Okay then, it's time for you and your dog to get dancing together. So many people are dancing with their dogs and posting their videos, and now we want to see yours. So post a video of you dancing with your dog with the hashtag Dancing Dogs on ABC. And who knows, it may end up right here on GMA for the whole country to see. How's that sound? I'm Mola Lange on the border of Lebanon and Israel. Wherever the story goes, we'll take you there. You're watching ABC News Live. The information that was relayed to me was, Mr. DA, we have another one. We have a female who works in prostitution, shot execution style. Very similar. Very similar. These were among the darkest days Laredo had ever faced. A possible serial killer was on the loose, targeting vulnerable women on the streets of La San Bur. The women on San Bernardo were more hidden because they're coming after our own. Some serial killers choose sex workers because they presume no one will care. But in Laredo, they cared. Law enforcement took this seriously. It was so callous. The locations where they were found on the outskirts, it appeared to me that these people were brought to their final resting pace. The same thing. Same thing. Almost showing it off. Almost showing it off, you know? And that's the challenge. There's the body. Good luck finding the killer. It had become a deadly game of cat and mouse. And in the wake of the murders, clues left behind that could help investigators catch a killer. They were able to recover a very good, readable cast of the tire tread, which matched the tire tread in the first area. Crime scene two, crime scene one, matched. But that's not all. The shell cases recovered from Claudine's murder appear to match the gun used to kill Melissa. We are at the Arena Gun Club in Laredo, Texas. So we're going to demonstrate a, a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun. The right. killer had used caliber. that type of gun. Yes, sir. Captain, that was a pretty good shot. What's happening to the shell cases when you're firing? The blowback from the discharge of the bullet itself pushes the slide back, ejects the casing. So the firing pin, when it strikes the back of the case, it leaves a very specific indentation. Right here? Yes, and through forensics, we can analyze that, and we're able to link the different shell casings at the different crime scenes. And whoever killed these women, why did he leave these all over the ground? Being reckless which is good for us. 
Police are still not releasing much information. We knew of the coverage of these murders, um, but police weren't saying much. You must have tried to keep the facts of the case out of the media initially. That's hard to do, obviously. Now, what we do know is that the case is being treated as a homicide. Uh, Laredo's a small community. Crime is always on the front page. So people start to get nervous, people start to get scared, and rightfully so. The thought of a serial killer in a community like ours was unfathomable. And now that it was real, it brought along real fears. In the aftermath of the murders, the 